Hello, Kakira. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are Very you? Very glad that you're good. Um, I'm better. Um, I think the uh, word balloon on the uh, drawing expresses how I uh, felt for the uh, last 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if you notice it. You probably do. Yes. But uh, I probably redrew this like three times yes. after we finished uh, the video. Yeah. And I don't only... I mean, it's not that I can see it. I mean, I can see it, but yeah. I can also remember all the time you were here working on it. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just... I, I, I'm just not happy with it. Um, we were talking about that yesterday, and it's... um. I think it has to do with, you know, I've I've kind of let go of my drawing and it's been something that's like super liberating and it has opened a ton of doors that I'm very grateful that have opened for me. But it's like everything in life, I guess, you know, when you choose a path, it doesn't mean that the other ones are closed, you know, eternally for you, but it means that, you know, you're probably going to favor one over the other. Like you're going to enjoy walking down one path and maybe sometimes you want to go back home and you take like the old path you would take and um, and it seems nice, but you realize, yeah, but maybe the road I travel is a different one now. And I think I'm kind of stuck in one of those moments where I, I'm just not happy with how careless sometimes I can be with my drawing. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that when I stick with it, I eventually can come close to what I want to do, which is fine, right? Like, this is not a race. Like, it doesn't matter how long it takes you as long as you're really kind of working towards something that you want to do. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to convince myself of that. Like, hey, this is, there's no rush in this. Like, if you're not happy, keep working until you're happier. Mm -hmm. Not until everything's perfect. I don't think everything's going to be quite perfect. Oh, because then you wouldn't stop working Right, ever. right. And I know that it has nothing to do with, like, just being accurate. Because if that was the case, like, I would just, like, do a block-in and then print, like, Fed's picture here to size, put some paint behind it and trace it on top. And then I'll have, like, the most, quote-unquote, accurate drawing I can have. And then I can paint from that and it's going to be fine. And I don't know, I don't think that that's what I need. Like my body's telling me like, no, the answer is not there. Like that's kind of ridiculous. So since last night I, I was, uh, and this morning, because I worked last night and then I saw it this morning. I was like, I can't, like this can't be it. Mm -hmm. So last night I did the red lines. Mm -hmm. And then this morning I went with the umber lines on uh -huh. top of the red ones. So it's like tiny little changes, but they're enormous. Like these eyes have shifted. Yeah. They've, like what has happened is that they have grown and they have shifted a ton. Yeah. They were closer together. And I think I think I figured what it was, like where the, the problem was lying. In. Also the shape of the head. Right. right. So this, like the proportions of the head. Exactly. So um, so I, you know, I was loving. So let's let's start with the things that are simpler. And then we can move to the things that are like smaller, but make it like super complex. So some of the simpler things was like, I love this shape. I usually love like pyramid compositions. That's a very, very, very classical composition. It's like hierarchical. You'll see it throughout all, like all of art history, even in like um, contemporary works, you can see um, these weirdly hierarchical compositions where there's, you know, the apex of that, mountain of that pyramid is always something that you you know you strive to get to when you're like reading from the base upwards um so they've used it you know ever since um, middle ages with like icons madonnas um to to today you know it, it's something that's very pleasing to the eye we understand i guess we always you know, as human beings, we understand what a peak means, mm -hmm. like the summit of something mm -hmm. and what it means to travel through like a larger mass and yeah. slowly, you know, 
almost like yearn to get to the peak of something. I think it's very instinctual. It's mm -hmm. like looking at a mountain and saying, I'm going to climb that. Um, I love those compositions. They're super, super simple, but I've, I've always liked them. I think they're, they're effective and proven. And it could be, this could be like an altar piece. You know, this could be like tons of figures here and then a Madonna here, you know, Virgin Mary, or this could be um, Christ here. Um, but it always works. It doesn't matter if it's just hair and shoulders or if it's just like a, a multitude of people and then, you know, something that they are um, gazing towards. Uh, so I've always loved that, but I was trying to, I think I was trying to push that. So I was loving the uh, length of the hair and how it kind of curls inward. And I realized, oh, if I could make the neck kind of longer, kind of sergeanty neck, Mm -hmm. I, and if I could drop the shoulders so that you feel that that neck is like way longer than it, than it actually is. Mm -hmm. um, because if you drop the shoulders, you realize, oh, my God, the neck has to travel so much to connect to the, um, you know, to, to the, uh, como se dice en la, um, ¿Qué, mi amor? Esto, el, eh, estos huesos. Es no, 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 los de acá. Es que se me fue la palabra. ¿Cuál? Estos, estos. No, se te fue. <laughs> bueno, I forgot the name of these bones. This is crazy. My brain is like crazy. It, uh, um... No, it's okay. Whatever. These bones, you know, the neck connects to these bones. Whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Like, honestly, I don't care. Uh, no, and... espérate. No, 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 I know, but I forgot. I mean, I taught no. anatomy. J Jesus Christ. Anyways. Clavicula? Yeah, the clavicle. clavicle. Thank you. Clavicle. Sí. Jesus Christ. This is what painting does to me. Um, so if the clavicle is like lower, shoulders are lower, which is all connected, clavicle, shoulder, scapula. If those are lower, then you have to travel, you know, this enormous distance with the neck and you're going to be like, oh, that's super cool. That's really nice. Very, you know, elegant. Let's call it elegant. Um, but then I was like, no, I don't really need that. So instead of the shoulders being down here, I was like, let's, you know, let's bring it up, let's bring it up, which already makes like her, her face feel rounder. And because I was pushing that, you know, um, sort of elongation, I pushed it also with the uh, top of the forehead. And I shouldn't have done that. And I, I liked it for this gesture or like this gesture, just kind of like peeking at, at the top. But I shouldn't have done that because it's not super effective when you're looking slightly up at Fed. You know, we're seeing the underplane of the nose. Uh, we're seeing slightly some, some underplanes of the, um, you know, lower lip where the lower lip kind of tucks in um, before you get to the chin. Uh, we're seeing like a fuller upper lip. So um, I don't think I should have done that because... If you start stretching the the uh, the forehead up, it kind of negates the uh, effort that you're trying to do with like the features in trying to convey that you're you know that this head is tipped and it's kind of tilted, so you're looking up at her a little bit. Um, so that was ruining this. So my my hairline eventually I moved it down here, yeah. but it was like way up here, mm -hmm. way way up here, and maybe that doesn't. Oh. Maybe those little things don't feel like much. Oh my God, trust me. Like when you start start adding those things up, it's a lot. It's a whole lot. So yesterday I had already like uh, made the uh, lips smaller with the hopes of making them fit into this, this longer proportion. I didn't want like these fuller uh, features in this long proportion because it just didn't feel right for that long proportion. But I realized that it just wasn't working. And it took me, I mean, when I say I realized, this wasn't like I sat down and it's like, oh, okay, that's what's happening. Oh, no. This was me like really thinking, what the hell is, like, what is going on here? Like, what is not working here? And I think that the reason for me dropping the shoulders making her slightly longer, slightly more elongated, giving her like a um, a longer neck. That's almost like my, um, 
that's me seeing her as this older being. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's me sort of feeling like, oh no, Fed is just old now, mm -hmm. you know? It's even hard. It's getting harder to see her like a girl. So mm -hmm. I think that that's, if I have to think of, of reasons for, for trying to shift those proportions because she is rounder, she is fuller. Mm -hmm. Like she has a really nice round head. Mm -hmm. And I think I was just, the features are still kind of big on her. Like she still has like bigger eyes, like a bigger, like a wider, bigger nose, bigger, fuller lips in this rounder um, face, which m makes sense for somebody who's still a child. Um, but I think I was seeing her and I was just, you know, thinking, no, this is, this is the, you know, the struggle trying to like say, what am I painting? Am I just like photographing her and painting the photograph or am I, really thinking about how I feel about her. So mm -hmm. so it was a lot of work. I mean, not work as in, oh my God, I have to paint like a, a checkered checkered board floor that is, you know, two miles wide. It no, not that type of work, you know. It's like, oh, I have to paint a a <laughs> a, a uh, bowl of lintels. Like, no, that's not not that sort of work. But just work in trying to figure things out, which fries your brain, hmm. especially when you don't really know why you're doing some things and why those things that you're doing maybe are not working. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy that I think I think I'm closer because mm -hmm. I, I do look at this and I say, OK, that's better. Mm -hmm. But I do think that it's also better because it's like a thousand lines here. I mean. I can barely tell what I have to, you know, where my drawing is. Mm -hmm. So it's always, you know, whenever you have like this, this um, web of, of like mark making, um, I mean, you're bound to think that you're, you know, you're hitting your drawing because, I mean, eventually, I guess in those tons of lines that you do, one of them has to be right. So it just feels like everything is right. But, um, but we'll see if it's, good enough to serve as a structure for for today when we are going to begin to paint and i'm gonna i'm saying begin to paint because from the beginning and i wasn't like conditioning myself i just knew that this was going to be hard to paint so i don't think it's going to feel super easy today and maybe i lose my drawing again which is going to be very frustrating if it happens like if the if the shifts that i have done when i start modeling form I look at them and I'm like, oh, this doesn't work. What am I, what was I thinking? If I get that feeling, oh, it's going to be so frustrating. But, but we'll see. I think I know myself and I think we're getting closer. Mm -hmm. And maybe today while we are uh, modeling, hopefully the uh, painting gods are shining down upon us. And, um, and the, the tiny little decisions I made, you know, are going to contribute to to a clearer idea of this of, of this thing that I want to paint. But and you I, know, oh, yes. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no go no, ahead. No. Oh, no. That I was going to say that even if, uh, I mean, I think that there's things that in the process you've made. Yeah. It's not like you can just uh, erase them and forget them because I think the fact that you were able to acknowledge the things that were bothering you. Yeah that's for sure going to help because you're going to have that in mind because before it was there's something i don't like i i can't point out what it is yeah I have but a, now you have that right so it's like you have it on your mind and every decision you're going to take you know you don't want to go back to that thing that you thought was yes yes the thing you were struggling with yeah so. there was there was a moment you you never saw alita battle angel But um, no. she has like very anime eyes. Mm -hmm. She's got like these huge eyes. It's actually kind of cool. The movie is not great, but visually they do like a, a bunch of cool stuff in that movie. And they gave her like, you know, bigger eyes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I should like anime the crap out of Fed. I should give her like super big eyes, um, like uh, Mark Ryden eyes. Is it Mark Ryden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and no. I didn't go for that, but I had, I had this, you know, kind of, 
I don't know, this urge to say, just make them bigger, make them bigger. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what's going to work. Because also, I mean, you found the way where you're happier with it. Yes. And it goes with the initial intent you had. But I, as we've been saying it, sometimes the path you take is not the path you thought you were going to take when you started the painting. Oh, for sure not. And you can say, like, I'm going to make, like, huge eyes. And maybe that's what's going to work. Maybe it's like, oh, yes, this is what I was missing. Yeah. So I think it's also interesting to, now I'm again, to see like all the decisions. Now I'm pissed off because the uh, ground that we put in, it's like, it's like a really close value to the thing that I want, to the massive light that I have to paint. Uh -huh. And that can be so jarring when you're doing that because you put paint down and you don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, this painting. <laughs> Well, but sometimes uh, you yeah. hit a home, home run. Okay. Sometimes you, you walk. Uh, fall in the first base. <laughs> okay, that's clearly clearly shows that uh, we don't know much about baseball. No, we, uh, Danny. No, no, no. I was gonna yeah. say like you trip with the thing in the first, like with in the base, base with the base. But I don't know how to call that, like the mud in the first base. So I was gonna say sometimes Perfect. you can hit. A I love, I run. love, I love sometimes when you don't you know a just... word, and you just, you know, you just kind of like finesse other words. I into... just try to describe it and go ahead. I love it because I, I hate it. to be like stuck. Oh, like I was stuck I with want clavicle. To... No, but I and me too. I mean, you asked me, and my brain was like no nah, brain. Brain is off. Yeah, brain is off. But no, but I was gonna say that. I've acknowledged that I would rather like describe things and maybe people can feel it's weird because I don't use the words that are supposed to be used. used, but I just like go in circles, but I just don't want to stop what I want to say right, right. because of a word no, I, I don't you. remember. No, that happens to me all the time. So it's like, I'm just going to describe it. I'm sure people would get what I'm talking about. Yeah, but it was a perfect uh, baseball analogy. Thank you. Doesn't work, but it was it was Why not? Well, because if you you can trip over first base, but let's say if you hit a single, which you know, single meaning that you you get to first base. Yes. You only have to get to first base. No, but I'm not at, I'm not saying first. I'm saying the one the, the Oh, home plate? Yeah. Oh. Like when you trip with that one, that's what I was trying oh, okay. to say. Well, home like plate you is trip flat. That's a good thing. But yes, I guess it Or would be you trip there. very dramatic if I mean, you, trip you trip over trip home there. plate. So Yeah, yeah. Imagine home plate being like a base. You would like, I've played th there would be baseball. a lot of accidents, I feel. Uh, I've played uh softball and baseball. Okay, yeah, it shows in my yeah. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like not in an actual baseball court. Court. <laughs> Uh, Nicola. No, no, How this do you is call wonderful. It? Baseball field. Field. field I'm yeah. sorry. No, this was this was good. No, no, I'm not laugh. I'm just. Well, I you wasn't were actually. Laughing. I wasn't expecting court. I wasn't expecting baseball court. Okay. I'm sorry, but I apologize. You're because I, I love you because you. I know that you know what you're saying. It's just that sometimes in English, both of us we struggle with finding our words. So Julia was saying hello, hello. And Julia was saying, is this the first comment? And I said, it is. And Julia was celebrating because Julia was today's first comment. Oh, she just wanted the... So, she probably knew she was the first and she was, oh, I'm sorry. Is this the first comment? No. I didn't notice. Ay, Nicolás. I didn't notice. Julian Caudera was saying, hi, everyone. Hey, Julian, how are you? Felipe Andrade mm -hmm. was saying, hello, beautiful people. Oh, hey, nice. Felipe, Thank how you. are you? Thank you for that. Uh, Briley Moreno was saying hello. Glad to be here live. Briley, awesome I have a to few questions that oh, I dude. wrote down in advance, oh, but dude. I'll pace myself. What uh -huh. homework? Please, please, uh, Jesus, hit us Briley. with the questions. What the hell, dude? Please, please go ahead, Briley. Okay, let's not sound too desperate for questions. No, no, no. But like, feel free to go ahead. I mean, it's not I like mean, how we don't really know how much Briley wrote. So she, he's probably you can writing, go ahead. He's probably writing a paper. So. Margo Delgado dice hola. Hola Margo, ¿qué tal? Margo, buenas tardes. Margo, ¿y cómo ha estado el clima? 
eh, un poco menos caliente. Sí, creo que mejoró en el mundo, creo que esa ola de calor ya... Sí, pero quiero saber de Margo. Ah, qué pena, sí señora. No, 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 no sí. No, sí señora. Sí mejoró la ola de calor, sí he visto, afortunadamente. Afortunadamente. Fue muy difícil para mucha gente y en muchos lados. Es verdad, fue trágico para sí, mucha sí, gente. Sí, sí, sí. Undines dice, hola, saludos Nico y Dani. Hola Undines, Undines ¿qué tal? Tarde. Luca Guadaño dice, hola, buenas tardes. Hola Luca, ¿qué tal? Luca. Darian Gallardo dice, hola a todos. Hola Darian, ¿qué tal? Carla Anglada was saying, hello Dani and Nicolás, hello all. Hey Carla, how are you? Uh, so yeah, Luca Guadaño was saying, clavículas, jajaja. Ja, ja. No, me quedo. And Mario Sinquemani was saying clavicle. No, I so, know, yeah. I know. I just like stalled. My brain was just like, we're not doing this. I'm sorry. Mm. This word. And and on, I taught like two semesters of anatomy. So thank you. Thank you so much. Please never take an anatomy class from me. Robin West, 13. <laughs> what? So Robin. Who is this like stranger? Saying hi, everyone. Hey, hey Robin. Robin. How are you? Happy to have you here. Always. XOXO S Ray 2 was okay. saying hello. Yeah. Hey, XOXO S Ray 2. How are you? So Andres... hugs and kisses, Ray. But no. I know that you like XOXO... the XOXO. Gossip girl. Andres Pinzón was saying hola. ¿Qué dice Andres? Hey, Andre... eh, hola, Andres. Hey, Andres. Sí. ¿Cuándo se va, Andres? Yo sacando. Del no, no, pues no es que acabo de llegar a la casa y ya lo estoy sacando, es que ahí está la puerta, Andrés. Eh, no, es que sé que Andrés viaja, pero no me acuerdo cuándo fue que me dijo que viajaba, o de pronto ya está allá. No me acuerdo. Catherine was saying, hello, Danny, Nicolás en chat, and Catherine was saying, oh my God, now I know what sometimes happens to me, especially in public. Hyperventilating brain. Thanks for this spot on description, Danny. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, <laughs> well, that's the, yeah, the brain that's, is still like recovering. Yeah. So best uh, way to answer to yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so yeah. Um, Berika was saying hello, everyone. Hey, Berika, how hey, are hey, you? Veruca Salt. Brightly Moreno was saying, "Yup, full academic paper coming your way." I knew it, dude. I knew it. Uh, Solo Priest was saying. Another wonderful day in the neighborhood. Como dice, another wonderful day in the neighborhood. So, uh, when you say como dice, it's without the H. So, yeah. como dice, como se dice. Yeah. And another wonderful day in the neighborhood would be otro increíble día en el barrio. Vecindario. En el vecindario. Uh, Gianfranco Vagliati. So that's that's what um what is it, Mr. Rogers? No, another mm -hmm. wonderful day in the neighborhood. Is that it? Anyways. A ver, tratando tú de hacer. No, no, I. I... Well, it says uh, a beautiful day in the neighborhood is a film, 2019 okay. drama. Oh, but that was his movie with uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He made he. That's a really nice. Like people cried in that movie. Fred Rogers. Yeah. Mr. Rogers. So, um, Gianfranco Vagliati, Valia. ¿Cómo se dice si es GL? <laughs> Vagliati. Oh, there we go. That's good. Fred would approve of that. Dice hola, cómo están? ¿Qué colores están utilizando? Hola Gianfranco, ¿qué tal? Ah, eh, pero de pronto Gianfranco es, es argentino, uruguayo. Sí. Entonces pero estamos... Pero bueno, igual me alegro que no me sonó mal la pronunciación. No, Valiati. Vali... Valiati. Sí. Ese, ese yo no he logrado porque... Pero es que... Yo le pregunto a Fer y, ento... y entiendo que es como... Valiati. O sea, no es gli. No. Gli, no. Óyeme, óyeme. No. A ver. Valiati. Creo que sí. Ush. Es como súper dulce el dije, sonido. Yo te dije, es y que yo te dije. Y yo trato soy... de hacerlo y Fer es como, no. O sea, y yo digo, Fer, ya no hay más rango pues para ese es sonido. ¿Por qué haces gli? Pues porque yo lo adoro. Valiati. Yo le echo. Valiati. Yo le echo como sal Valiati. de ajo a, a la pronunciación. Yo estoy hecha para los CD. No, mentira, no. Hmm. No, pero de pronto estoy hecha para. Um... Sí. 
Estoy sí. hecha para. Para, sí. Perfecto. Sí, déjalo ahí. <risa> a ver, ¿qué, ¿qué responde, Nicolás? No, pero... ¿Qué? ¿Qué Estaban es preguntando <risa> qué los colores, la paleta. Ah, disculpen. Pensé que ibas a describir la paleta eh, de hoy. Baliati. Eh, es... Otra vez, inténtalo. Baliati. No, pero es que es argentino, entonces Bagliati es blanco de titanio, amarillo, ocre, rojo, cadmio, negro, pero el fondo lo vamos a hacer con cobalto y un poquito de ultramar. Entonces va a ser súper, súper barroco, súper eh, alto renacimiento la pintura, vamos a ver si sale. Si no sale, no es mi culpa. Sí, pero entonces para que no se confundan con el alizarín que hay ahí ah, no. y el tierra. Sí, no, nada no. de eso lo vamos a tocar. Eh, a ver... A ver, ¿a ti no te pasa que te confundes no. con la paleta cuando dejas colores? No, 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 pues... Bueno, mentiras, aunque te estoy preguntando y me acuerdo hace unos días que... Ah, pues el estabas con haciendo... el... Sí, sí, No, sí. pero es que estos dos... En... Es desde... confundirse. Desde donde estoy, estos dos son iguales, o sea, no, no veo la diferencia entre ellos, entonces, sí. pues ahí es complicado. Por eso es súper bueno me tenerle Me disculpa, un pero orden. me perdona. Por eso es súper bueno tener orden en la paleta. No, no sabría de qué estás hablando. Como, pues yo he visto, o me acuerdo en la gente en la universidad, que había personas que como sacaban los tubos, sí. los ponían. Ah, sí, los ponen en la mitad de la paleta o algo sí. así. Sí, pero ¿y dónde salga? O sea... Bueno, pero yo que ahí... no es como que tienen... Pero es que no, o sea, si lo ponen en la mitad, pero ellos entienden su orden, listo. No, 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 pero ese pues sí, sí es, es un raro, mal pero, uso de la paleta. Pero listo, pero lo que digo es, si tú cada vez tienes el tierra en otro lado... Yo ah, me confundiría no. terrible. Sí. O sea, porque yo a veces incluso como que miro, pero miro dónde estoy mezclando y no miro dónde estoy cogiendo. Sí. Entonces ya es como, como el teclado. Sí, que exacto. Uno no mira el teclado porque ya sabe dónde van a estar las Sí, cosas. Entonces, y ¿sabes qué es lo peor? Cuando uno da como un taller y la gente pone no de claro a oscuro, sino de oscuro a claro. Y uno coge un No, yo hago así, así siempre al negro cuando de quiero... De negro a... marfil y tenga... Sí, sí, porque sí. ya tengo lo que dices. O sea, uno tiene como reflejos ya... Ya como adquiridos, entonces uno, uno sin pensar ya está yendo a la, hacia la zona donde uno cree que tiene que estar el color. Sí, sí, sí. Eh, Rebeca Caridad was saying, hola everyone, hey Rebeca. And uh, Rebeca was saying, sorry if you've already shared this, but have you been priming your papers for the last few paintings again? Or yes. still working on raw paper? No, 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 we've been, um, Rebeca, Rebeca? Yeah. Rebeca Caridad. Rebeca, we've been uh, priming them. In fact, we've been priming them live. So if you go to the end of the uh, videos where we're doing the underdrawing, uh, I part usually... Part one, yeah, part one underdrawing. Yeah, part one, I usually end up uh, priming the paper. At least a couple of coats in on camera. this side and then one coat in the back. I think I do that on camera and then I'm missing... The one that I would miss is the one extra coat on the back. But yes, yes. yes. Um, a ver, ¿dónde estaba? Eh, um, Solo Priest was saying ne necesi necesito, so mm -hmm. necesito, más cad amarillo, más cadmium yellow. Okay. But, but you never use uh, cadmium yellow. So, do I need it or does he need it? No, I don't know, because they, maybe they're trying to uh, talk, like, to speak in Spanish. Yeah. Because they were saying, necesito más cat, cat amarillo. Okay, but again, I what I don't get is, is he saying that he needs it or that I need it? Because I don't need it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jürgen Schlotter mm -hmm. was saying hello. Hey, Jürgen, how are you? Jürgen. Jürgen. Sí, Jürgen Schlotter. Yeah, come on. You, we, you, we have to do right by uh, Klopp. Uh, yeah. Eh, iba a hacer un chiste, pero no. Yeah, better not. No, 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 de Klopp. No, please, no. Ay. No, we don't joke Todo about Klopp. Cariño. No, 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 we don't joke about Everything's Klopp. love, I mean. I know, and with him, he's, he's amazing, amazing. But we don't joke, like... Come, we, we have to show respect, please. Uh, Briley Moreno was saying. Yeah, Briley, let's hear it. Part, like, part one of ten. Let's go. Like I mentioned in another video. Yeah. So maybe like I mentioned in another video. Oh, Danny's correcting. Danny's tough today. I'm, no, 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 because I'm always tough like... Tough with the grammar. No, because I'm, 
I mean, I'm always trying to correct in my head as I read, but sometimes it's complicated. So, like I mentioned in another video, mm -hmm. I'm heading to London here soon. I've had a few conversations with him on Insta, but I was thinking about asking Phil Hale Oof. if he'd be open to doing a studio tour. I think so. Well, I'm there. Any thoughts? Oh, dude, How definitely. How would you feel if an art fan asked for that when visiting your area? Well, I think in our case, I'm sorry to answer Yeah, for please, you, no, go ahead. But I think that in our case, it would be different because we work where we live. Mm, so I think, and I think I'm speaking for both of us, it would be yes. kind of uh, like weird. Yeah to have someone come here because it's our house. Because if it was in, in a studio, it's different. I wouldn't mind. I would tell you, like, for example, Briley, I met at uh, at a workshop. Mm -hmm. And Briley is, like, super cool. Mm -hmm. So if Briley wrote to me and I had, like, an idea of him, because I, I think I got a pretty good idea of, of who he is. He's mm -hmm. a super cool guy. Um, if I got an idea of who this person is and this person was like, hey, I'm in Bogota. I would be, I would have no issue. Like with somebody that I've, I've already had like a, you know, like a week long experience and we've talked and, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, I mean, you can't be certain always, but there's a feeling that you get like, no, that's a cool person. Like, yeah, no, no, no. But I think you agree with I'd me. I'd be that totally it's fine with different. him coming here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you... if it's a strange person, no, I would say, and, and not because I'm doubting anything from, from anyone, but just. When you come here, like, my daughter's going to be here, Samu's going to be here, which makes me a whole lot more, ca like, cautious. Mm -hmm. It's not, like, a studio space. Like, you could come into the room where we work and I could show you work, but it's not, like, a studio space. So there's nothing glamorous about where, what we do. I mean, I would probably be more excited to show you my figures and my, my sculptures, you know, and, and to show you the art that we have. Yeah, but I think you understand but, the point that I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, that is that it's more intimate because it's yes. our home. Yes. So, so it's not like a studio, but it's right, right. our so, home. So I was saying, like, if I have an idea, because um, because I, I used to, like, I wouldn't host people, but I, I, I had people over... Uh, sometimes and I had them when I when I had a studio and I was totally fine. I would feel like super like okay with it. But in the studio apart from your house. Right, right, right. Um but and and with other people that I kind of knew, I was cautious, but you know, I would be okay if they showed up at home. But um I mean, if somebody's just somebody that I don't know and nobody can recommend this person to me. Um, I wouldn't be, I would be like, oh, I don't know. But Briley, I can't promise you anything, but I can write to Phil and say that you're going there and that you're going to contact him and, um, and that if he's cool with it, like he would love uh, a studio visit. I'm not like super chummy with, with Phil Hale, but I have exchanged like a bunch of uh, messages and he's in the, in the conversations that we've had, he's super cool. He's been super, super nice with me. So, I mean, it's kind of weird for me to like say, hey, we're so such good friends. Not really that I, I'm going to recommend somebody. But um, I, I'm kind of shameless that way when I'm being like um, open hearted and, and when I'm just doing things, you know, for the right reason, I feel. So I, I know that you wouldn't go nuts over there or go crazy over there. So I, I would be fine saying like, hey, you know, this dude is going to write to you. And mm -hmm. if your schedule allows it, like it would be super cool for him to, um, to visit you. So I could do that. We could try that out. I don't think it's like a terrible thing to try. Olga Maria Benninghoff. Who is that? So your mom. My mom? Is what? Being so, ama so amazing, this painting. Mom, I haven't even like started. Jesus, mom. Hola, Olguita. Hola, mi Olguis. Gracias por acompañarnos, Olguita. Bradley was saying, wow, that would be awesome, Nicolás. And yeah, he's super cool. Every time we've chatted briefly, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. So I'll write to him uh, this afternoon. And that but would I think be an would amazing be... uh, opportunity. I if think, you it, yes. get to go there. Oh, Bradley. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cool. I mean, I haven't done it. <laughs> and I've been to <laughs> London a few times. But 
but now, for example, now that I met, uh, I met Simon, mm-hmm. um, I think Simon, I, I would ask Simon to like, because I know Simon knows Phil. So Which Simon? Simon Davis. So, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they both, I think they, they both worked at comic books and, and, and Simon does the, um, the Royal Portrait Society thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm sh- I'm sure he's he's uh, he's friends with Phil. Wow. So now and and I feel you know with the week that I spent with Simon, he's I got to know Simon pretty well, and he is like one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Like he's super super nice. I was so intimidated because I thought oh, this this guy who's like an amazing painter, he's like crazy talented, like crazy. His drawing skills, oh my god, Simon's like off the roof. Um. But I saw him paint from life, you know, for the whole week. And we would hang out because this was in Liverpool. Mm-hmm. And so we were going out at night and having dinners and, 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 you know, drinking some beers. Simon is such a cool guy, such a, like, good person, like, like cool, good person. Mm-hmm. Ah, I thought he was going to be super intimidating. Like, I, I didn't, I was getting nervous that he was doing my workshop. And he was, like, the nicest, coolest person ever. So Aye, that's I'm, I'm very lucky, yeah. Um, you know who I thought was intimidating before knowing him? Who's that? Try to guess. Hollis? Yeah. Oh, Hollis is so nice. He's so sweet. No, no, no. But I remember yeah. like the first time in uh, Menorca. Yeah. I like when I knew that he was going to be there, I admired his work a lot. So I was like kind of nervous yeah because i i don't know why i thought he was gonna be like super uh formal and like super like closed maybe yeah. oh he's not at all he's like super cool oh super, he's so cool. fine he, yeah he's yeah he's just a super laid back like cool guy yes um sean is the same way i haven't met uh sean oh so. that dude i thought he was completely he's so laid back that you kind of think Oh my God! What is this guy? What's this guy gonna do? And my, he's like, he's super, super cool. He's he's okay with like anything. He's aside from being crazy talented, because honestly, that is, I think it's kind of crazy that that you know, um, that David has been, I don't know, because of life, but he's been able to these two like amazing painters together and mm-hmm. offer this incredible experience in Rome because they they really do have to be like some of the most talented painters I've ever met like you know just I don't know when you see them work and you're working alongside them so you know what they're seeing and you know how complicated it is and you suddenly see what they do with like the same kind of circumstance that 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 is giving you so much trouble um you realize oh no these these people are are different like they are different so it's oh, and i love that uh full full circle because you were talking about simon davis yeah and we ended up talking about david simon oh that's amazing so- <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah i think simon let me see let me see what uh because i think you posted like uh Simon, no. Yeah, he posted like a start of a paint. Look at those hands already. Hmm. Oh my god. No, but they're not seeing it. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm so. seeing it. You guys should check. It's like Simon Davis painter. Mm-hmm. Um, his Insta- his Instagram, but Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, I, I search for Simon and Instagram. Simon's Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're killing it today. <laughs> so, um. So question number two, Briley. That oh, one was so, easy. So let me uh, read some comments yeah, and but, we'll go to question number two. Yeah, because that was cake. Come and on. And then we question can, number we can three. Totally. If he is there and he's not busy, I'm sure he's going to be okay with that. And maybe you can be Justin Mortimer because I do. I think they're like their studios are super close. So it's a twofer, uh, Briley. Mm, so... Laura Dumont Boyer was saying, are you using the Zorn palette for this one? Yes, but we're going to do Zorn with Plus. an accent of like blue at the end. We'll see. So this is one of those things where 
the blue is going to purposely feel disjointed. We're not going to use those blues to paint the uh, portrait, uh, which would be nice. It would integrate it with that blue. So in terms of color, it's, it's almost like something that you should try and do, but we're going to try to work around it and see if it works. Um, Tura was saying, estaba diciendo, amo tus dibujos. Muy amable, gracias. Eh, Andrés Pinzón dice, Nico, todavía no me he ido, viajo en septiembre. Ah, bueno, bueno, todavía falta un mesecito entonces. Margo Delgado dice, Dani, nos dio un respiro el calor una semanita y ahora llevamos un par de días con calor otra vez, pero menos. Bueno. Pero comparados con el resto de España, que lo han pasado fatal, mejor no quejarse. Pero bueno, Margo, menos mal eh, ya están bajando... Así se adea poquito las temperaturas. Claro, porque puede, o sea, todo agosto también puede ser súper mm. caliente. Mm. Rebeca Caridad was asking, yeah. what made you decide to prime your paper again? So, if I was doing, um, let's say I'm, I'm essentially doing like a three-part painting. I was, I'm doing an underdrawing, an underpainting, and then I'm painting. Um, and in the painting, I'm not doing anything weird. I'm actually doing like a very, quite like an Alla Prima painting. Uh, but I'm doing that very direct painting based on all the prior decisions that I have already kind of worked hard to, um, to try. And I mean, today I can't say to try and get, but, you know, I'm usually trying to go for those decisions and, and understand them as as definitive as they can be. So yeah, I mean, it's not something like set in stone, but but they are, you know, I, I don't think I'll do dramatic changes when I get to the painting stage. Now that's what I thought, but um, in the uh, painting of Cristina of my niece, I did some changes, quite big changes for the drawing in the uh, in the portrait. And in this one, I mean, that's it's been horrible, so. So, yeah, ideally, you wouldn't want to have to shift so many of those decisions because if there are drawing decisions, if there are drawing shifts to be made, they should be made at the drawing stage. You don't have to keep going until your drawing is not what you want it to be. Um, but I am very stubborn or sometimes I'm very lost, so I'll stick to bad decisions And then I can't sleep when I realize <laughs> that they are bad decisions. Yeah, cool. So I, I will have to like try and change them um, that night or, you know, the morning after. <laughs> so very dumb what I've been doing. No. But the reason that we isolate the, um, the first layer is because if you have an underdrawing and you want to use it, it's kind of pointless to, you know, start painting over it you could do an underpainting that's that's what a lot of people do a lot of people do seal that underdrawing i think it's a good decision to seal it some way you know and you could seal it just by um i don't know spraying uh, uh um retouch varnish or just applying like a, a very thin um uh a very thin uh diluted Uh, varnish on top to just like really, really enclose that um, initial layer. You could do that that underdrawing in inks, for example, that won't be lifted by um, terps. So there are ways of just like isolating it. But the idea is to protect it so that you can see your drawing. Uh, because if you don't see your drawing and then you're going to do your underpainting and then you're like, what? You know, I put a wash of terps and my drawing is gone. Like, what was the point to to do um, to spend so much time in the, in that underdrawing? So, we're trying to be sort of mindful of taking um, solid steps that have proven to be not solid enough for me. So, but uh, in in the uh, pursuit of that. Um, peace of mind that would give you that those solid steps would give you. I tried to isolate that uh, drawing layer with a uh, primer. So I not only I'm not only priming, sealing my paper, but also priming it by applying a couple of coats of um, transparent acrylic primer. So a uh, binder, I'm sorry, which serves as a primer. Um, so that's that's what we've been doing. So let's see if it uh, if it's 
going to be helpful today. I'm, I'm very slowly modeling this, and I think it's going to be okay. But those are my last words. So, you know, maybe it's, I shouldn't have said that. So, Rebecca Caridad was saying, oh, I see. So, you're priming your page over your drawing? Exactly. Yes. And Rebecca was saying, I'll definitely go watch the underdrawing videos. I usually end up showing late to the lives. Oh, it's okay. But the drawings, uh, the drawings, the videos are always going to be there. So yes. you can watch them whenever you want. Um, Solo Priest, that was asking about the cadmium yellow. Yes. Said, I forgot that you hate yellow, Nick. I meant that I just ran out of cad yellow. There now I have to wait. For my next supply run. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I figured it was it was more like a you thing. No, I don't... I mean, I don't hate yellow. I, I would say I'm more afraid of yellow, if we have to be super honest. It's more of a respect slash fear that I have. Absolutely but you still irrational use it because, I mean, you prefer bismuth yellow, but yes. you use, like, a super bright yellow because bismuth yellow is... No, and I've made like paintings that you could describe as like oh, the yellow, yellow is paintings dominant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I've tried to get over that that you know sort of irrational fear, which I haven't gotten over, by at least tackling some paintings that make me, you know, embrace sort of the yellowness of 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 the painting. I mean, they they can only work if I embrace the yellow. So. The one of the raincoat is a very obvious one. And the the one... ones of the raincoat. Oh, yeah, there's a couple. Yes, yes, yes. Um, well, I wouldn't consider yours as um, the drawing, the gouache that I did of you. But you also did a painting of me holding a book. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that one's like a little more like a, like a yellow accent, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that it's like taking advantage so of So you're talking about yellow. like the repetition of the yellow Yeah, I would say the one of the raincoat with uh, Lola. And that, the one with one. Fer. The one with Fer. Which one? Um, I forget about my paintings. This one. Okay, that was like a more abstract, you know, attempt of... But I mean, if, if they said uh, Fer's yellow painting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's how you describe it. Yes. But no, but go ahead, go ahead. No, and I was thinking of, have you seen the, the uh, one of the girl, I think her name was uh, Margarita? If I'm not mistaken. I think I'm, I'm right. Which one? Oh, this was in the old, old uh, studios at the university. Mm -hmm. Old painting studio. Um, and there's a bunch of like uh, tables behind and she's got like uh, yellow leggings with like yellow Reeboks. It was super cool. Oh, to yeah, paint. yeah, yeah. I remember. And yeah, with, I like that painting. I really like purple, that. purple, maybe? No, not really. But she's like sitting like in a platform. She, she, she has like, like a her... zebra umbrella. Yes. Like yeah, there yeah, was I so much that. pattern to that painting that I was like, why am I painting this? <laughs> like, I really don't like to do these things. And I, I just forced myself to paint like a, a bunch of things that I, I mean, that I, It's not that I don't like them, but it's just that I, I always felt, oh, that would make a cool painting. But no, don't tell me that I have to paint that. And also the uh, Borges portrait. The oh, yeah. That portrait. One, I, I like that one. I And actually the like that one. Godja, like the dog. Oh, yeah. The Hodge uh, I mean, painting. Yeah, that one's yeah. pretty cool. There's a couple of uh, yellow paintings. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think we're, you know, I, I can't say we've... Um, We've completely overcome that irrational fear, but uh, attempts have been made. I'm happy with that, at least. Tani was saying... Yeah, what are you doing today, Tani? <clears throat> was saying, hey guys, no drawing or anything today. What? Kind of been out of it for a few days, but tried It's to okay. push through doing small doodles and paintings for the past few days. That's perfect. Today, I'll just be watching. Oh, that's perfect. We don't and always have to work. And that's necessary, too, yes, Tani. I Tanny, I do that sometimes if I, sometimes I know that I should be working on like, um, let's say a reward or something and I'm going to paint all my rewards. So this is not like, oh, that's why you didn't send the books. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. But sometimes if my mind is just kind of, I don't know if it's just fed up or sometimes you just, you just need a day off. It's like too much or painting. two days off. Yeah. Trust me. There, there is something, um, as 
too much painting, like too much work. And sometimes I just play, you know, a video game. Or That's do it. something else. Because I remember that Tani was telling us yesterday that they were uh, tidying up their living room. Oh, right, right. No, so I'm referring to like what I would do when I uh, have yeah, those, yeah. those moments. Like I just, that's my place where I'm like, oh, this is great. Let me, let me exchange suffering and painting with suffering in a video game and play <laughs> Elden Ring. So for so. example, Tani, uh, Nicolas can attest to this, but when I'm struggling with my carvings, uh, Nicolas has offered sometimes, because there's like uh, wood shavings all around the apartment. And he can say, let me help you. And I'm always like, nope, no. Because the moment where when I decide to pick up all the shavings, it's like so zen for me. It's like a moment I need to like decompress when I'm not... Uh, okay with my uh, carving process because I don't know if you remember but you've asked a couple times which is very nice of you because you just want to help me out with what you can with the cleaning yes yeah but it's like no no because that's also part of me like I enjoy that part and maybe some people can say like no that's like the worst part maybe but for me it helps me a lot like I could spend like an hour cleaning all the shavings And it would give me peace of mind. So sometimes you just need time to do different things. And that's good too. Uh, David Loran, Lo, Loran was saying, it's wonderful how Nicolas captures expression so beautifully in his works. Thank you. Uh, Catherine was saying, uh, I like the, light, the lightly shining finish of your paintings. As I understood well, you first varnish and then put wax over that. Not, Double question. Yeah, not all the time. For example, I, we, sent, we sent a couple of works today. And uh, let me see if... if um, oh, yeah. The one of Danny and Rome had uh, some wax on top. So two of them had um, just like a thin liquid layer, which I know it's terrible. But I mean... If we already bought into the idea of painting in raw paper, let's ruin it entirely by, you know, varnishing with liquid. So, um, so yeah, so those have like a, a very thin, very, very thin, not thinned out, but very thin layer of, of liquid in the end. So if I think that the painting would benefit from having like a wider uh, value range and um, more saturated... Um, hues then I, i'll i'll leave it somewhat um glossy but if i think that it could be more atmospheric and that uh, by making it more matte or like a satin finish um things just kind of come together a little bit more then for sure i'm gonna be like yeah i'm putting some of that wax on top so uh catherine was saying double question yes What varnish do you use? And is there a chance you could demonstrate it here sometime? Oh. What? Mm. Mm. Nicolas. <laughs> Sorry, I'm drinking some... Um, <laughs> sparkling, sparkling water, water. yeah. Um, But you were answering... Frizzante, You were answering Aqua inside frizzante, the bottle. Daniela. You were like, whoa! Aqua frizzante, whoa. per favore. Yeah. Uh, no, per favore un aqua frizzante. Sí. Grazie mille. Sí. Grazie mille. Uh, Grazie mille. No, you always laughed because um, you said that I said grazie mille. Grazie mille. No, but I said grazie yeah, mille. Terrible. I mean, grazie mille. It's, uh, it's embarrassing. Uh, un tavoglio, really. per favore. Oh. Grazie nice. mille. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Non capisco. Non capisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't care. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only know how to ask for that. That's I how. I only need an app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. That's how. Like, we're not having a conversation. That was me in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, okay, I got my question ready. I got my question down, pronunciation down. And then they and started then, talking. And oh, I my like, God, they're answering no, in Italian. English, yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no, I was joking. Just show me directions with your arms. Just, I don't really need an answer, like a regular answer. So, Catherine, remember the question. Yeah, so I think I answered it when, you know, before you asked the uh, question. So, is there a chance you could demonstrate it yes. here sometime? Oh, there's 100% a chance that we could do this. Um, 
Right now, we don't have a painting that no. is uh, dry enough for us to do that uh, that uh, thin liquid layer. So we would have to do a two-parter because liquid at le takes at least one day to fully dry. You know, you could do... Like 24 hours. Uh, you could do it on your stories, maybe, if it's easier no, for you. Do, or no, we could, we could do it like... Or we could just wait for next week. Yeah, we could do it next and we week could start... and we could do it... Um, with a layer of liquid in yeah, this one. Yeah, we could one. do it with with my uh, niece's painting. Oh, perfect. And yeah. um, because that painting is still kind of drying, it has like uh, black in some areas, and this black is like super stubborn to to dry. You know, it it takes time. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the person that bought the painting, they're gonna be totally fine with with waiting like an extra week so that it dries thoroughly. That's what had to happen also with your uh, painting, the Danny and Rome painting. Mm -hmm. We had to wait a bit. It had that little patch of black that it was just impossible to uh, to paint over. So it has to be, um, it, at least in the in the paper, it turns a little ashy. Like it separates a little bit. So when you you won't really feel paint, but what you feel is like the pigment sort of separating, and it feels. Just like literally just like pigment. So it feels like dirt on your fingers. That means the colors like not even close to being stable enough to to put a layer of anything on top. So so yeah, so I, I would be a little patient, a little bit patient, and maybe next week we can uh we can do a two parter and th then at the end of one of the videos we could show like j like just yeah, I mean this one's like there's nothing interesting about it, but just applying like a thin layer. Thin being the keyword here. A lot of people just put way too much varnish. It's ridiculous. You don't have to put varnish or whatever you're sealing your painting with. You don't have to apply a ton of it. For God's sake, just apply like, you know, barely enough. But for, that's the problem. To of cover like a thin layer of, of your painting. Of uh varnish um videos yeah varnish porn on instagram yep because maybe someone that has no idea how to yeah don't or do that, that never like has never varnished yeah and they've seen a, a lot of videos like that they no. would just like buy the bottle and no 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 have a bowl usually the right way to do it have like a metal bowl you know the, the ones that you could serve your dog some food um and have well, a metal not the bowl. One you're going to serve your dog. Or like the one that we haven't bought yet. Uh, no, have no, a metal. No, I decir es que el pobre perro. Oh, yeah. Don't use that to serve food for your dog. Afterwards. No, don't. No. Um, pour <laughs> some varnish. Mm -hmm. And then if you have like those big moppy varnish brushes, fantastic. If you don't, just buy anything that's like super like big and soft. Uh, it could be like a synthetic, but like a soft synthetic. And just apply, you know, don't, you, you don't want to like plop it on. You, there's no reason to put like a, you know, to cake varnish on. No, you just, you know, dip your brush. Don't dip like the whole thing in there. Dip your brush and just gently kind of massage it over the, the whole of your painting. You don't want to scrub. <laughs> massage it? Yeah, you don't want to scrub because if you scrub, you run the risk of the, uh, the solvent and the varnish dissolving some of the paint that you have underneath. So you just want to put it like gently on top enough so that it's like a very, very, very thin layer on top and you don't disturb it anymore. Like one pass and you don't disturb it. You don't have to do eight passes because th the more you brush, the more you risk like ruining whatever's uh, underneath. And depending on the varnish, like if it's Damar, oh my God, like God bless you, but that thing is going to be full of hair and dust because it's the mar varnish. It's almost like impossible. You would need to put it in a vacuum for it to be like pristine when you're done. Um, so good luck because that also takes weeks to dry because it's going to be dry, but not really. It's always going to be super tacky, super, super, super tacky. I mean, there, there's tacky things in the mar. I mean, that, that's a terrible thing, but it's, it's proven to be great. It just yellows eventually but it's a good varnish and it can be lifted and you know people love it conservators love it restorers love that varnish because they love it because they can like clean it um but you could use retouch varnish as a final varnish which is totally fine you know retouch varnishes are sometimes uh, synthetic so uh 
they can be they can have like a gentler um uh solvent in them so you won't run like a super high risk of uh of lifting what you have painted um so yeah it's up to you Julia Quaresma mm -hmm. who's saying hello from Brazil hey Julia hey Julia welcome it's a good uh good last name Quaresma yeah uh, Julia uh, Quaresma it sounds very cool that's um well La it's Quaresma. a Portuguese but from Portugal player like a very well well-known um, striker attacker he's done like crazy goals he hits it with the uh, with the uh, outer part of his foot like that's his thing oh my god Pero so si, good. but if you say uh, Quaresma Ricardo your mom Quaresma. your mom would oh my mother would be yeah religious Jesus. Quaresma Jesus yeah. so um Briley Moreno said, okay, yeah. next question. Jesus Christ. I'm working on a self-portrait yes. and I noticed a big error in one on one of the eyes. Oof. So I tried scraping the eye, but I forgot I was working on primed paper and the scrape left a huge indent that kind of shines on the inner edge of one of the eyes. Wondering if I could show you slash Danny yeah. where it's at. And if you think it's redeemable slash worth still working on. So, yeah, send it to my Instagram. Yes. Yes. Riley. I'm excited. So, yeah, I love... Daniela O-C-M-P. I love tragic stories of paintings. Like, I ruined it. It's gone. It's ruined. Julia Quaresma was saying, ha, 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 thank you. I'm loving it already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, solo... Oh, no, I already read that. Um, Elaine Shukri was saying good morning. Daniel hey, Nicolás. Elaine. Hey, Elaine. How are you? Uh, Michael or Mikael was saying hello. Hey, Michael or Mikael. Hola, Michael. How are you? That's uh, Do you know what that's from? Hola, Hola Michael. Michael. No. No? That's from what we called El Auto Fantástico. That's how the car would talk in Spanish in the series. The TV series. El Auto Fantástico. Yeah, it's Knight Rider. Like Hasselhoff. Mm -mm. You've never seen that car? It was like an intelligent car. Like I was... I don't know why. Yeah? Six years into our relationship, yeah, but that's you like... are still like shocked every time I don't know something about a so, movie. So, do you know uh, Baywatch? Yes. Yeah? Do you remember like Mitch? Mitch, the guy who's like the older... You know, he was like... You know, the guy. I mean, I remember Baywatch, but... But he's Baywatch, like David Hasselhoff. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he was famous. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing, like, he became famous because of uh, Knight Rider. Uh, he was in a series where he had this car that was like a robot, that was, like, super intelligent. Do you know where I saw, I'm sorry? David Hasselhoff? Yeah. And, like... Smurf movie or something? In Spongebob. He's... Spongebob, yeah. Okay. For the first time. In the Spongebob yeah. Pants movie. Okay. So yeah, I know him. Okay. He's in my files. Memory okay. files. So go ahead. Yeah, no. <laughs> so he had a no, car. No, no, no. <laughs> no, this died with like that reference. So, <laughs> so he had a car. I mean, yeah, I'm seeing it. Like, uh, I mean, Danny, like the cars I... you would associate with future. Yeah, I forget time. what it was, like a Corvette or like a Trans Am look, or something. Because it doesn't have a look. Oh, no, no, no. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't tell you what car it is, but it's it's something like it had to be one of those two. But look, look. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I think that's a Trans Am or something. I mean, there's nothing more 80s than a Trans Am. Mm, look, I see uh, a news thing that they said sold the car. El coche fantástico sale a la venta. Oh, wow. I'm sure so that got a lot of money. I'm sure there's fans, huge fans 2021, of that. 2021. That was... Oh, no way. How much did it go for? Uh, so it's... I'm going to say a million dollars for sure. Wait. Uh, moment, has moment. To be. Come on. What a sad thing if, if that's not like... A, if it didn't... Nobody cared enough to pay for that mm. car. Uh, $200,000. What? 
I mean, we don't have that money, but we could have bought it. Yeah. Oh, no. But now it says it was because I'm trying to translate as I read. Okay. So it says that it hit the market at $200,000. It was an auction, I'm guessing. Yeah. So no, a live sold, auction. I'm going to say a million. And after 10 bids. Bids. Yeah. Uh, pushes, I was going to say. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, it was situated oh, in... Did you, that's Pujas, what you read? Yeah. <laughs> it was situated, situated in... Situated, okay. Se ha situado. Okay, yeah, that's okay. In a million euros. Oh, euros. I, was, I wasn't far. I wasn't far. Yeah. The thing is, like, a million for a car is already... Like, that's what people pay for, like, collection cars. But do you think that people are going to ride the no, car? No, no, no. Because no, no, I would no. have it, like, park yeah, in the living yeah, room. Yeah, I don't even know if that car works. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if so maybe... So, I wonder what people would buy. Like, if you, ha if you could buy the 60s Batmobile, the Batman, the TV series. Oh, I <gasps> thought you were going to oh. ask me what car I would or buy. The, what famous car? Oh, or the uh, Tim Burton uh, Batman Batmobile. I don't even know which one I like of those two. What famous both. car would you buy? Oh, Everyone. my God. Everyone From TV? No, whatever. Oh, Jesus. Now I'm struggling because I love the Ecto... Uh, Ecto-1, yeah. Ghostbusters. That would be nuts. That would be amazing. Love the uh, 60s Batman uh, Batmobile. Mm -hmm. Adore the Tim Burton Batmobile. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the coolest cars ever in like cinema. <sighs> now you're just going to hate me, but I would buy the Krabby Patty. <laughs> this is not even a conversation. Like, why are we, why are we doing this? I think it's amazing. Like, so. If you're not going to take anything seriously. You know what I think was very cool too? The Scooby-Doo's uh, okay, van. Okay, the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What but was I it would, called? I the would, mystery? What was it called? But I would go with a uh, Krabby Patty car. Okay, this is... Thousand again. percent. Yeah, uh, sure. Like, waste your... Throw your money away. Or um, um, Mate from Cars. Okay, that's a fictional car, but yes. Well, the Krabby Patty car is, of course, I know, a but I allow car. it because it's SpongeBob. So anything I you allow say, it. I allow it. Oh, my God. Because it like SpongeBob. You are not going to ride my Krabby Patty uh, car. Guess who I isn't going to ride it? You. <laughs> Look, I can get this one. Uh, remote okay. controller. Okay, great. You're going to be the only one showing up <gasps> no, for that auction. No, look. What? Oh, it's always somebody. Look! Somebody always no, makes... No, but look at this, Nicolas. This is so cool. Yeah, can I paint Danny? It's cause, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because we need to make the money so that you can buy the uh, car, <laughs> the fictional car. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, let's see what people are saying. So, I'm I'm either uh, those... What else could I do? Oh, look. Aviola Jesus. was reading my mind. What's Aviola that? was saying the SpongeBob Burger car. So the Krabby Patty car. Okay. Julia Tovar was saying that she would uh, get the car from Los Pica Piedras. That's a good so car. So the Flintstones. Again, yeah. thank you for making it super fictional and like not grounded and mm. great. Great. We were trying to have like serious conversation here. And Lich was saying Mystery Machine. Mystery Machine. Yeah. The, um, the one of Scooby-Doo. Uh, Emily was saying Krabby Patty car and laughing uh, faces. Haha, <laughs> I love you, Danny. You're hilarious. Oh, thank you, Emily. Oh, my God. What, what's going <laughs> uh, on? Thank you. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm happy that someone here um, likes my humor. You're hu no, you would totally go for that because that's not even funny. Oh, you no, would, that's a reality. I would yeah, go you would that. go for that car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have it like in the living room. And I would ride like to the fridge, reverse to the living room. Okay. To eat a Krabby Patty. Okay. Now you you might as well just go to Walmart and that thing. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. To go. Well, we don't have Walmart here. No. But I would go. I think that car comes with a Walmart. Imagine. So that you can go imagine to that. me with the things like all the shipping things in that car. Yeah. Sensation, a total sensation. That I mean, be. if that's what you want to call it, yes. <laughs> Aviola was saying, I absolutely agree. Danny, the Krabby Patty car would be tied to roll in. That's a flex if I ever saw one. That would be like the biggest flex ever. 
Oh my God, you got such a loser posse <laughs> there. I mean, yeah, if you can all fit in that car, <laughs> lame people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go and hop, hop into my talking car that has missiles. Julia Tobar was saying the DeLorean would be cool. Oh yeah, I was missing that. That one, like that one, was so there. That was easy. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out again, isn't it? They're making more DeLoreans now. That's what I thought. I read somewhere. Um, uh, let's see. I think so. I read a story. Julian Cabrera was saying cars are great and movie and movie cars even better. I was in shock to see the DeLorean dismantled and rusty in the studio's backyard. I think it was restored, but a lot of original parts were missing already. Oh, yeah. And remember that, like, stuff that they would do for movies, and especially for movies like late 80s or, um, you know, that they would use for shots or, or for uh, special effects or... Like, they would only have to work for that shot. Like, they could care less if they were doing stuff that was going to be, you know, in detriment for the uh, longevity of, of a car or a prop or anything. They didn't care. Like, if it was good for a shot, they would be like, yep, it did its job. Great. I am kind of disappointed because I thought that when Julian was saying the mo and movie cars, that he was talking about the movie cars oh jesus christ uh leech was saying i would get the 60s jaguar from james bond oh there's a bunch of bond uh movies but the um aston martin i think it's the uh is the bond car uh badly 86 88 was saying lady penelope's pink rolls royce so let's see it do you know it I think so. That's a pretty old reference. Ah, <laughs> that's cool. Look. Yeah. Oh, that is hideous. <laughs> Nicolas. Yeah. Oh, now they have the new like version. New oh, this yeah. is. No, but I would go for the old one. Of course. Because I think that that one looks like it can go on water. It's one of those <laughs> like um, like like amphibian cars. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron Gall said the invisible boat mobile. Oh, please. That's the Sireno Man and Chico Perseve. Okay, so now we're just like, we open up the floodgates and yes. lame people. Yes, Aaron, you can ride with us. people are just, you know, saying whatever they want. You can ride with us. What a with dumbass Emily, question. I thought it was going to be cool. <laughs> I thought somebody was going to say, oh, the A-team van. To... The A-team van. We you can know what all I ride. ride uh, uh, Optimus Prime. I want to ride that truck that like transforms into a, a robot. That's amazing. But sure. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Adult sure. Here. No, sure. Go with all the I'm lame. Sorry, you can't enjoy. I never thought we had such a lame audience. I mean, you can't complain about about cartoons now. Well, I mean. I mean, look around. I could around. do a room to tour right now. So I know, but all why these, are you complaining these are all about? Cool. These are what? all cool. No, Nicolas. You know, if you you know pass that they actually... the line of SpongeBob. That's what and I you said. You use the words "not cool." That's why I said when I'm you said turn up. when you said your crusty ass car. I was like, it's not a crusty ass car. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm gonna silence your mic right now. <laughs> I was like, Respect. okay, it's SpongeBob. I I can't go it. I I can't go there. Like, that's off limits. You know why you're feeling bad? Because you don't get the references. Oh, yeah, I, I feel left out. I know, Nicolas. Oh, I so wish I was part of this conversation. I know you wish. So wish. I know you wish. Oh, I can't have lunch with the cool people. You can't. I mean, like I can have with... lunch with my car, meaning I could buy my car, oh, my Krabby so Patty cool. car. Yeah, it's so yeah. cool. Lame. You can go... Um, yeah, sit by yourself. Eat alone. Eat yeah. alone with your... In existing car. Uh, no, but do you know what? what? I'm nice. I invite you to my crappy Oh, car. that's so cool. Thank you. I think I'm doing something that night. Mm. Let's see. Uh, Elaine Shukri said, I still love Mr. Bean's car. Oh, the little... Um, what is that car? I, is that I, Topo? I, is, I used is it a to, Fiat? I used to love uh, Mr. Bean's a lot. Yeah, it is. 
And it's like a yellow? Green, let's see. Yes, like a... Look, it's like a lime. Yeah, Danny, remember that it's really hard for me to turn. But you can do it. I mean, I can, <laughs> but this is like... Um... Yeah, I used to laugh a lot with Mr. B. It was funny. Yeah. Mm, let's see. But but serious question, Nicolas. Okay. If there was like a Lego of the Krabby Patty card, don't you think it would be amazing to have? I mean, I would probably get it for you, yeah. For us. I mean, you could see the Ecto car. The Ecto one. Yeah. Over there. And I think it's cool. Um, well, don't compare. Come on. That's like... No, I know. Uh, Krabby Putty Car is 10 times better, I, but Jesus it's not available, so... Mm, I wonder why. Catherine was saying Mini Cooper is Mr. Bean's car. Oh, it's a Mini. Oh, right, right, it's right. a Mini. Um, let's see. Yeah, of course it would be a Mini, like a, a Mini. Mm. Why was I thinking uh, Italian? Where was I? Mm. Aviola. Mm -hmm. uh, who would be a happy Krabby Patty writer. Okay. Who's Team saying, loser. Yeah. Nicolas being a hater, don't worry, <laughs> you're still one of my favorite painters. Okay. L-M-A-O. But I think he's crossing the line, Aviola. Um... Let's see. Uh, Leach was saying those models from which the DeLorean was made used to blow up when overheating. Um, Tani was saying I would want the Lo Lupin, the third yellow Fiat. She Isn't that like an anime? I feel. I don't know. I, I think that's that an one. anime. I'm going to Google it. Yeah. I think I've seen it. Oh, it's a uh, uh, Cinquecento. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, Topo. I love that car. I think they're just beautiful. And there were a lot in Rome. Of course. Tiny cars. I was just so happy. They were beautiful. Mm. And useful. Because we saw For some Rome, people with like big... Um, like regular size. Well, no. some people had like SUVs. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, what are you trying to do in this street? With yeah. An SUV? And they like, were like 15 minutes trying to pass one tiny street. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Some people are, are um, oblivious to the fact that they live in a city where the roads can barely fit like a regular car, like the streets. Mm, so. Mm. Leach was saying no I mean the e-jaguar from the 75 the green one with machine guns also any car from Mad Max oh those are cool I don't yeah know and I... Javi Hav was saying hola hola Nico did you ever get into any of the 80s Mad Max um yeah yeah I remember well the first one is a super different movie than what it ended up like being the first one is like far slower, darker. Um, it's a cool movie, but it's it's quite different. I remember I was when I first saw it, I was too young. I remember, and I was like, I thought this was gonna be cooler. Um, but then I remember we saw. I don't know if I know we saw the Thunderdome one, the Tina Turner one, with my brother at the theater. I, I remember that we saw it because my brother was mo far more into Mad Max. Um, the second one, I don't know if we saw it at the theater, but I, I, I did like it. And I, I even like the uh, the new Mad Max. I thought that was a I thought I still think that's a crazy good movie. Like visually, it's like stunning. It's it's incredible movie. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm. I, I think I grew up with the idea of Mad Max, but it, I, but it was later on when I re I, I rewatched the first movie that I was like, okay, this is darker. Like this, 
this I would have never gotten if, you know, if I saw it when I was a kid, you know, it, because it, what year is Mad Max, um, Danny, the first one? Mm. I have a feeling that that's older than me. Mm, no. No? 1979. Okay, it's so, well, nice. I was two. So, yeah, so I just, yeah, yeah I couldn't. I, I remember I watched it probably first time when I was, I don't know, maybe seven or eight. And that's like, yeah, that's not a movie for an eight-year-old. So I, I think the same thing sort of happened with Blade Runner for me. I think I saw it when I was young, and I I liked it because I was into sci-fi, but I didn't quite get it. I mean, it wasn't like um, uh, Mad Max is more like post-apocalypse. Uh, it's more like Dune-ish. I remember I saw Dune when I was little. Dune. When did Dune came out? Like '84, maybe? Could you check original Dune? Maybe. Eighty-four. Yeah. So I don't think I watched it in the theater because I, I don't think they would have let me in into a theater to watch it. So maybe we just uh, rented it uh, with my brother. My brother was more into Dune. I remember I think he read the book when he was younger, too. Um, But I I remember seeing Dune and I was like, oh, this is not for me. Like, this is too much. This is too dark. I was scared. I was so scared of the uh, fat dude. Um, oof. Super, super scared, horrified of that dude when I was little. But I, I probably saw it again. Maybe not when I was seven, but I probably saw it when I was eight or nine. And it's one of those movies that you're like, yeah, you're not supposed to watch that. Um, Let's see. Solo Priest was saying, I would get the ice cream truck from the video game Twisted Metal. Okay, well, that's gonna be, there's going to be a show. I don't know if you know that. That's going to be an actual TV show. Oh, I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah. Sony's like trying to have... They're trying to have their video games um, uh, bleed into like movies. Mm -hmm. So they're going to make... Um, they're going to have a Gran Turismo show or movie or something, mm -hmm. um, which... I have no idea what that's going to be. It could be anything from from being, I don't know, just like a regular car show or just a story. I don't know what story they would put into GT, but maybe. Um, they're going to have a, um, what else? I mean, this, the, the um, they're going to have a, uh, what he just mentioned, a uh, twisted, metal. twisted metal show. And the dude that's the uh, Falcon, do you remember the, the um, Marvel guy, mm -hmm. Falcon? Yeah. He's going to be uh, protagonist of that show. Uh, but that car is terrifying. Yeah, well, it's dumb. It's cars with guns. That's what Twisted Metal is. No, but terrifying because if you cut yourself, it's like super rusty. Yeah, it's just, it's dumb. You would It's get like 90s. Ted if there's like, tetanus. Yeah, if there's like a... that. <laughs> That's a such a '90s game. Um, I've never played it. What What is it about? Literally, cars fighting with guns. What if cars had guns? Because I'm seeing here. Yeah. Uh, and I don't. No. So you just like ride and. And try to kill each other. It's like a fighting game, but mm -hmm. you're a car and you have guns. You know what uh, game I liked? The the of dude that driving cars. Did you also say it's not very good? The I don't know. Crazy Taxi. I oh, think it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it was cool. I I had a I lot of fun. It. I had a lot of fun with my cousins when we played that. I I really liked it. Really? Yeah. Oh, I think you thought it was lame. I mean... It's cool. I like it. It was a one-note video game, but... But it's it was, cool. I mean... That it, was what was cool and, at that time. Yeah. And imagine... Dragons. My cousins and me. Yeah. Just like playing... Because I think it's different. It's not like 
uh the souls games or something like oh, that no. that you can't play with someone else it's like a easy game to digest well you just yeah if, even if you don't know anything it's, it's like, just like yeah. you have to pick somebody up and take them to where yeah, they tell have you to fun. go and you and it's good if you crush yeah and try to drive you... as bad as you can <laughs> yeah i liked it um Catherine said there is an impressive collection of cars in the guggenheim in bilbao Also, the Aston Martin from the James Bond in 1964 with Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Uh, Tom. So Tom, um, Tom, Tom, Tom Jordan said, ha ha ha, Danny. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah. Tom, don't say anything Tom. else for today. Just Tom. that. Just no, that laugh. for today. Yes, just that laugh with like no context. <laughs> It's like, what is he laughing? Is he laughing at you? Is he laughing with you? No, I think with Did me. Did he just think of you and laugh? No, I know that Thumb is not going to make fun of me. No, 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 but we'll never know. Elaine Shukri said, oh, yes, the Camaro Transformer Bumblebee. Come on, Bumblebee is cool. so much cooler mm. than anything you've said, Danny. George, no, no. George, no, I don't know that person. No. Uh, of course, everything I've said, it's like a hundred percent cooler than all your cars. All your real cars. I mean, yeah, so what lame would be thinking cooler? about a real cool car, yeah. a car that you could actually ride. So dumb. Such a dumb idea. You know what? So basic. I know, Let right? Let's think of cars that you, you could basic. never hop into. Yeah. George Jiménez dice, el carro de la intro de la Pantera Rosa. Uy, eh, yo quiero saber, de pronto no, de pronto nadie. ¿Alguien jugó la Pantera Rosa Misión Peligrosa? Era muy buena. Bueno. Tú no la jugaste, por eso. Es que yo me conozco a Nicolás. Cuando él se siente fuera de la ecuación, uh -huh. así reacciona. Uy, ¿qué es ese carro? Mira ese carro de la intro. Sí, es que el, el, eh... Parece como un calzador de zapatos. Sí, fantástico. <ríe> no, fatal. Fatal. Ay, sí, me acuerdo que se bajan. Uh -huh. Que se bajan, sí, señores. Porque es una superestrella. Pues es que la Pantera Rosa, tú sabes, ¿tú ¿alguna vez te has visto las pelis? Me veía el programa. Eh, la animación. Sí. Sí. Pero hay pelis que son una maravilla. Que son con Peter Sellers, que es como el, el inspector Clouseau. Uh -huh. Y la Pantera Rosa es un diamante. O sea, así es como se le dice a un diamante. Entonces se lo tratan es de robar. Entonces, y él es un inspector uh -huh. todo torpe, pero al final le termina saliendo todo súper chévere. No. Pero yo jugué la Pantera Rosa Misión Peligrosa. Y me vi el inspector Gadget. Ah, bueno. Bueno, era chévere, mentira. Yo Ay, era sí. Muy fan. Ya te estás volviendo. Ya, como... de, 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 de. Sí, ahí el, el hater número uno. No, no, no. A mí me gustaba no, mucho. Te, el... te suspendo por 300 segundos, Nicolás. Dale, y dejamos de comer. <risa> eh, a ver. Ay, no. Es piche donde no. I think I deserve something to be able to paint, you know, during all the. Uh... A barbarity that has come out of uh, your mouth. I think I deserve something for all the conversations I make. I mean, there's a ton of comments about the cars. Yeah. People like, so. You know what I need? I don't like know. A, like a minute? The minimum? A thank you. So. From? You. Really? <laughs> uh, so, Tani was saying... The debate of the year for OPL. <laughs> <laughs> the day everything broke. Uh, so they were so nice up until that day. Leach was saying the Mr. Magoo car just because I would drive the same way. Oh, nonstop. Could you imagine driving like 15 miles an hour but never stopping? That's how my dad used to drive. Uh, Laura Burgos dice, hi, acabo de entrar y están hablando de carros, WTF, jajaja, <laughs> así que me gusta el carro en la peli de Death Proof, ¿cuál es? ¿tú sabes? No, ver, eso busquemos. también suena como un anime. Ay, ¿sabes qué carro icónico? 
No, es que tú ya puedes el decir de, cualquier no, no, cosa. No, el de Breaking eso. Bad. Ah, bueno, la van, sí. Sí. Puede ser. Mira este. ¿Era este? Es que yo no me he visto esa peli. ¿Dead Proof? No. Pues adivina, yo obviamente tampoco. No, qué pena la ignorancia. Sí, hay de pronto muy ignorante. No, y pena de qué. Y de pronto, ¿quién, ¿quién fue la persona? ¿Laura? Sí. De pronto Laura, no, pero yo, hablando de carros, yo digo un carro súper chévere y no tiene ni idea. Chao. Eh, Gracias. A ver. Eh, quiero mirar porque también quiero buscar... ¿Qué? Carros. ¿Amigos? ¡Ay! Herbie. Ah, a sí. toda marcha. Como sí, se sí. nos Muy lindo. pasó. Pero, se pero, nos pasó? Pero... Ah, bueno, pero es que tú tuviste a Lindsay Lohan haciendo película de eso, ¿no? Ella hizo ah, una Ah, creo peli. que sí. No, pero, sí, pero la... la otra era de no, mi hermano. No, o sea... ¿sabes que Creo que me la vi por mi papá. Puede ser, pero... Sí, sí, sí. sí. Eso, es, eso es más viejo que yo, incluso. Pero, o sea, me acuerdo de esa peli. Sí, sí, pero eso después lo, lo volvieron a hacer con, uh -huh. con Lindsay. Uh -huh. eh, a ver... Aaron Gold said, David Hasselhoff is an amphibious vehicle in the SpongeBob movie. Yes. <laughs> so everything yeah. is tied. So you can, um, the car of your dream can be, the vehicle of your dream can be David Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah. So I think we should end with that. Yeah. So it was always David Hasselhoff. Yeah. We always go back to the Hoff. And of course... SpongeBob. The Bob. The one and only. That was amazing. I loved um, that conversation. But I think there's more comments. No, it has to stop there. No. It's nice. It's nice to it's it was uh it was meant to be to stop there. Because I'm still reading a lot of comments around that. Hmm. And it's not because I can't stand the uh, the SpongeBob talk. That's so, amazing. Marcel, Marcel was saying, "What about the car from Christine?" Okay, no, I'm. What's the car from Christine? I think I'm lost there. Julian Cabrera said, "I'd love to have the A Team van, oh, the A -team van. or the Jurassic Park SUV." Aviola said, "Yo." I Yo. just searched it up. Someone built a Krabby Patty car on YouTube. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> and like crying, laughing emojis and fire emojis. <laughs> I have to look for it as soon as we uh, finish the live stream. Um, let's see. Mm. We should do... Uh, we should do movie... Movie... Um... You know how people watch a movie, like, um, you know, we do a live video. We can't obviously show the movie, but everyone watches it at the same time. And uh, we react or not react or comment or not. Um, we should do one of those with movies that you haven't seen. So watch a movie? Yeah, but then you watch it with, like, uh, people. But how would you do that in a live stream? You just tell people. Like, hey, we're going to start, you know, start. I don't know. I don't. I've But never the sound. done this. No, no, no. You, you're just watching. Like, you don't. So headphones in. You have, like, the camera on you and you're, you know, reacting, I guess. To SpongeBob, let's, the movie. Let's pick a better one. But, um, and then everyone just, whomever wants to be part of it, just, just like, um, go into the live. It's like a date, like a movie date, you know? You're like, okay, at 8.30, we're going to start. So you start, you know, the movie. And you uh, and you comment. And you have a beer. And you're good. A beer? I would have popcorn. Or popcorn. Sure. Like sweet popcorn. Okay, sweet and popcorn. Salted popcorn. And salted popcorn. And salted popcorn. Um... Briley Moreno was saying, Briley, take I've got to head back to work, oh, Jesus. but I'll See? come back and listen in if you're still able to give advice about port about that portrait. Oh, Jesus, I forgot the portrait, Briley. What? 
Sí, you Danny, still there, you. Bradley? Please send a thumbs up. I'm screaming no, now. No, send a thumbs down. That's a like, thumbs down. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, great job, moderator. Yeah. I'm sorry. Danny doing an amazing job today. Well, actually, I am, but... So, Briley, <sighs> let me know if you're here. No, Briley, Please? just go. Don't don't say anything. Even if you're here, just leave. So, so this becomes like so a we life can lesson. Uh, Emily said, whatever movie has an electric car, I want an electric car. One that doesn't look weird. So, no Krabby Patty electric car for Emily. Um, let's see. Could you Margo look for, dice, what? But Danny, could you maybe see if Dan, if Briley sent you the uh, portrait? I think they did because I haven't looked my phone. But the I thing know. is that they wanted feedback. So yeah. Um, so, but he was saying he's got to leave. But I could, you know, maybe give him feedback even, and he can just watch later. But we don't know if he's gonna because he said I'm gonna be back later. Yeah, but to that's maybe okay. like. I think we owe him the feedback. We have to make up for the uh, here, no? for your neglect. Aye. No, 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 I'm not trying to make you feel bad. No, because it was for, an intention. You know, you know the way you forgot entirely about every other conversation just so you could, like, leverage the uh, SpongeBob? Oh, but I don't see where it broke. Look. Um... I can't spot it either. No. Yeah, Briley, I, I can't really see where it's... um. Look. I, I can't see it no, either. Me neither. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, where was I? Margo Delgado dice, a mí me encantaban los coches de la serie de dibujo Los Autos Locos con Penélope Glamour mm. y Pierre Nodo Yuna. Nodo Yuna. Es que esa era, esa era la de la carrera, la de Hanna Barbera de la, las carreras. ¿Pierre Nodo Yuna? No, yo, eh, o sea, los personajes así, creo que Penélope es la, de, la que estaba en el carro ese de carreras que tenía el casco como sí. de... Ah, ya. Ya, ya, ya. Que tenía pulgoso y al malo. Pulgoso, que... <risa> no me sí acuerdo, me acuerdo cómo es que era, era tiernito, que mm. se reía. Se ríe como Martín. <risa> pulgoso era el chévere, sí me mm. acuerdo. Eh, a ver. Ay, ¿sabes qué también súper chévere? So, you know, mm. a very cool car. Sí, the cars from uh, Mario Kart. Ok. Mario Kart. Yeah, again, with fictional cars. Thank you. Great. We were talking about... Penelope Glamour and Pierre no doy una scar. So. Mm. Teodora T was saying, I'd love to own the yellow trotters three wheeled van from Only Fools and Horses. It's so iconic. So, do you know that, Nicolas? No, I have to say I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't. So, let's Google. And I always feel bad when somebody says so iconic. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember that one. Oh, it looks very cool. Oh, I remember that. Very unstably cool. Oh, yeah, you're dead. Because, yeah, it's any, like... Any sort of... If you're anything near... You bump near, a rock... Yeah. You, if you're, you're dead. near an, a car accident, you're dead. Oh, my God. Have you seen the inside, Nicolas? Not much. Yeah, that can. that's why you're in a car accident. <laughs> Your eyes just go, you know, it turns into a Hitchcock movie. Uh, so, mm. Lich dice, they have the Rob Zombie hearse car as well in that. The story is super dumb. There is a sorcerer called Calypso that will grant a wish to whomever wins the tournament or some mamba jumbo like that. Super, super dumb. Um... Juliana Cuaresma, mm -hmm. no, Julia Cuaresma, perdón, Julia Cuaresma, was saying, this mouth highlight is great. I love when the paint comes to this point. 
and Julia was also saying, I'm using all the knowledge I gathered watching all the episodes of 31 Minutos in Spanish to understand all the conversations. That's all you need. Yeah. That's literally all you need. And very good show. Very good show. Solo Priest said, Christine Carr, winner. Um... Wait, what is that show, Danny? I don't need, I don't Christine know that show. Carr. No, the 31 minutes. What is that? 31 minutos. Yo te lo mostré. El chileno? Sí. Ah, ya, ya, ya. No, ya. mi amor. No, pero yo te no. Te preparé para este momento. No, 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 no. No, pero no voy a decir mentiras. Yo Mira, no. este es el Christine Carr. Nice. That's very nice. Mm. ¿Cómo es que era la canción? ¿Me la cantas? ¿Cuál? Una de algo que tengo que decir, so no tengo nada que decir, que nada, no sé, algo así. Hay muchas era? de 31 minutos. Por es una que era... Ay, mi muñeca mía me no. habló, no, me no, encantaba. No. Sigue, no. Eh, es ¿Bailan que... sin cesar? No, no, no. Eh... No, era algo como, te... hay algo que decir, pero... Mm. O mi opinión, algo de la opinión. Yo opino. Eso, yo, yo opino, opino que... Yo opino, sí. Yo opino, ¿qué opinar es necesario? Es, es, es. Sí. Eh, ¿Y te acuerdas quién la cantaba? Que es chistoso. ¿Quién la cantaba de...? De 31 minutos. Un... Er... Nos... Lobo. Yo opino. Ah. <risa> uh, so. Let's see. Uh... Robin said, have you seen Everything Everywhere all at once? Yeah, we saw yes. it. Yeah, yeah we, we saw it. it. Uh, we liked it. Yeah, yeah. I loved, you know what I loved, Robin? The fingers. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sausage fingers are yeah. amazing. You were loving but, um, that. But I loved it. I, I was like, yes, I needed this. Uh, but I I loved that as soon as I saw the actor, the um, the husband, I was like, is that Data? I was like, that can't be Data. Is that Data? And it was Data, and I loved it. I was so happy. Robin said, I love the rocks. Oh, yeah, oh, that yeah, moment that is too. very cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that moment is very nice. Eh, Leslie Cavazos Garduño. Cavazos Garduño. Who's saying, can we keep the text bubble? Ha, ha, ha. I mean... It's still how I feel, so mm. not much has changed. Liad was saying hello. Hey, Liad. Hey, Liad. And Roslyn was saying hello, everyone. So we have the road to the rose. And um, Liad and Roslyn just missed the what movie miss? Car of Your Dreams conversation. Oh, I think they're good. I mean, one of the, what did I miss? They say when they just came in. Somebody says, nothing. You're good. Mm, so, uh, Mario Sinquemani dice, pregunta para Nicolás. Sí, señor. ¿Qué tipo de cera usas para barnizar y la aplicas con una espátula o brocha o cómo? ¿Quieres mostrarla, lindita? Que esa es, esa sí, es legendaria. ¿En ¿Allá? En el, sí, en nuestro kit. Listo. Kit cocina. Sí. Lástima ese pedacito Ay, la que ya... Mesa que yo... La mesa tan linda. Y le eché súper bondera. Pero ¿sabes qué vamos a hacer mañana? Vamos a jugar ping-pong otra vez. ¿Sí? Sí. Uy, me encanta. Feliz. Volvió, feliz. volvió el ping-pong a esta casa. Te voy a destrozar. Y eso nunca ha pasado. No, linda. La verdad, vamos como 71. Pero creo que no te va a gustar el resultado. Tenis de me. No, no era así. Ya no me acuerdo. No, ya no más, no más. O sea, no, 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 no. So my secret, the secret sauce when I varnish. Stone protect. So it protects stones. Yeah. Protege. No deja marcas de objetos sobre el mesón. Cera brilla mesones. Sobre el mesón. Sí. Cera en pasta para mármol, granito y otras piedras naturales y pinturas. Y no, no dice y pinturas, hay que aclarar. Entonces, 
Protege, pero, pero no muéstrala. deja marcas de objetos sobre el mesón. Protege, no deja marcas de objetos sobre el mesón. Protege. Dice entonces esta cera, y obviamente las precauciones entendámoslas siempre como sugerencias. No, Nicolás. Descripción no te... del producto, cera para abrillantar, que no sabía que eso era una palabra, pero bueno. Y proteger mesones de piedra natural como mármol, granito, travertinos. Proporciona acabado duradero, resaltando colores y texturas de la superficie. Seca rápidamente, la verdad es increíble, haciendo más sencillo el proceso de lustre. Modo de empleo. Primero asegúrese que la superficie esté limpia y seca. Aplique Stone Protect, marca registrada, cera brilla mesones extendiendo una capa fina y homogénea con un paño limpio y seco de algodón, asegurándose que no quede espacios vacíos. Deje de secar por espacio de un minuto y comience a frotar la superficie con otro paño de algodón, cepillo para lustrar o polichadora hasta obtener el brillo deseado. Uy, pero cepillo en la pintura no. Sí, Uy. podría ser. Pues es que el cepillo para, para lustrar no es tan... Uy, no. No son cerdas no, me daría... tan abrasivas. No. Precauciones, dos puntos. Mantenga el recipiente cerrado y alejado del calor. O sea, está en el único sitio que entra el sol en este apartamento. Chispas o flamas eh, abiertas. Quiere decir que tiene solvente esto. Dañino si se ingiere, 100%. Mantener alejado de los niños. Mantener el recipiente cerrado y en un lugar fresco, libre de humedad. Está hecho por gramar o gramar. Esa es nuestra cera fantástica. Uh -huh. Fantástica. Pero muéstrala de pronto como para ah, que vean entonces, la consistencia. Es una cera... Con olor a limón. Sí, 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 pues para, para ocultar, quién sabe, el, el, el lo nocivo que es para la salud. Esta es la cera. Uh -huh. Entonces vamos a cerrarla. Creo que sonaste, cerraste eso súper duro en el micrófono de pronto. Qué pena, qué pena con todos. So that is the wax, that is the uh, secret sauce of uh, a lot of the varnishing. It's a wax, synthetic wax that is used for stone flooring. Mm, table or, sto or stone kitchen tops or tabletops, yes. Uh, so yeah. perfect for painting. Gav, Gav. So Katya Belilovsky. Oh. Our dear Katya is here. Katya Belly says, love you. I don't know. I don't know why we hadn't gone there. Katya, yeah, that was that, that was one's like, like super right there. there. It's yeah. So easy. And again, uh, we are. I think I I would say that our love language is nicknames. Yes. Because we yes. just think it's fun, so it's it always comes from love. Uh, Katya was saying, "Miss you so so much." OPL. Same. Miss you too. Uh, just briefly tuning, 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 why? Tuning in to say hi, hi. Uh, beautiful work, Nicolás. Danny, I saw you in my dream. Wow. Oof. We couldn't decide on the flavor of ice cream we wanted to eat. Oh, that's 100% me. Oh, yeah. That's why Could you I... you describe something that is not 100% Danny? Because that is her. Yeah. That like, would be like a thousand percent me. It's like, Danny, quickly, the world is going to end. You have to pick between these five flavors. The I want ended. them all. But the that's, the that's, world ended. That's why the I... The day the world exploded. That's why in Rome, my go-to was uh, three balls of um, gelato. Because yeah, I but... could not decide, but just got them all. Get them all. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but but I love Katia that that's very, it was a very me in your dreams. Yeah, it could be the future, you know, yeah. maybe if we uh, meet again. Oh, yeah, for uh, sure. Katia we and have... Yuri in uh, Rome. Yeah. Uh, that's probably going to be something that happens. Yes. That you're just, you know how everyone is like st stuck online And there's this one person that hasn't really thought about the flavor that they wanted before so that, you know, they could be, you know, take into consideration that there's a line behind them. And maybe if like you made up your mind while you were in the queue, you won't subject people to like unnecessary waiting. No, but you know how I am. Indecisive. I hate. Yeah, but I hate to make people wait. So what I do 
panic is mode. I go, yeah, or panic mode, or I just go in, uh, see the flavors, or take a picture of the flavors, uh, step out, decide for an hour, 20 minutes. Yeah, this, now the store has closed. And then go in. And now it's like, or lady, I'm sorry, it's I like 2.30 in the morning, we're closed. If I am very, because that's also good when I ask for three flavors, when I asked for that. Because I was like, I have a staple, so strachatela. So I was like, can I have a strachatela? And and w while they were preparing everything and like taking the scoop out, I was like reading super quickly. No, so that's... I was like, oh, and this one. No, yeah. And I wish I could say that that works, Danny, but. We both know it doesn't work. But you know what was good in Rome? That I wanted to try a lot of flavors. So yeah. I couldn't go wrong. No, like, yeah, honestly, there's, there's, I mean, you, I think you went for like some not great ones sometimes. Mm. You know, the Gerber one. I like that. That wasn't. And that good. was perfect for uh, the a day. Baby? Well, the night we got it because mm. I was full. So maybe if I got. A different flavor. I love that. I'm so full. Could we stop for gelato? No, but it's like Fer says. It's like I'm full, but not dessert full. Dessert full is like, yes, another compartment. <laughs> yeah. My, my children know. Another pocket, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They might as well be cows with like a, another separate like stomach for that. Mm. So, um, País Llanero. Mm. Hola, País Llanero. Dice, pregunta para Dani. Uy, a ver, pregunta me, para mí. Me disculpo. Sí. Oye, tú no eras sino que empezaras a mostrarle a... cada niño a País Llanero y dejó de aparecer y, y ahora hace machón. preguntas para mí. Sí. Eh, dice, ¿has usado Monster Clay? No. No, y si soy honesta, yo no he hecho mucha modelar. escultura de modelar, exacto, como escultura por adición, pues. Eh, yo estuve con Lich, que está por acá, en el taller de Gabriel e hice eh, arcilla, uh -huh. cerámica, pero eh, no sé cuánto tiempo estuve, de pronto seis meses, uh -huh. pero era un taller abierto, no eran como clases de... Eh, pero sí, yo no, yo no sé de modelado. Me, me encantaría saber. Eh, pero no. No, no. Sí, aparte acá no se consigue. Creo que no se consigue esa... Esa... Um, plastilina, pues. Mm, País Llanero dice... Ja, 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 no, Nico, el amor está ahí. Bueno, ahora la que se retira soy yo. Sí. Lía... Eh, Interrumpimos. Qué se pregunta a todo el mundo. Esa, eh, disculpe, interrumpo. Con esa voz. Eh, disculpe, interrumpo. Interrumpimos. Liad was saying, it's like a glass jar full of rocks. It might be full, full, but you can fit a lot of melted gelato in it. Yeah, you can always fit gelato. It's like the glue mm -hmm. to all the things inside your belly. Uh, the perfect glue. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Eh, Gaby dice hola Nico y Dani está quedando súper lindo Gaby, hola Gaby llena de drama ay Gaby sentimos mucho lo de tu ay, pajarito la, el, eh, lo de tu pajarito sí. sí cuscus cuscus iba a decir churrucuco pero Gaby sí. venga le la, la pongo a um, pensar en otras cosas pues yo tengo una pregunta yo estuve pero... ah sí dale, dale no pero después Gaby estábamos hablando de ¿Qué carro de película? No, pero me la sacaste. Sería... No, me la devolviste a... Sería el... que, O sea, si pudieras elegir un carro de película para ti, ¿cuál elegirías? No, Gaby. Y ahora ya, Gaby, Nicolás. viste la alfombra mágica de, de Aladdin. Eh, no, Gaby, estuve pendiente de el pequeño drama que pasó con... Eh, no vamos a decir eh, sitios ni nada, pero con una convocatoria que hubo de una, una cosa que estaban diciendo, convocamos a diseñadores para eh, que nos manden propuestas sobre bla, 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 bla. 
seamos como vagos como para que no esto no se vuelva a hablar mal de nadie, porque pues es... Eh... Pero además yo ni siquiera sé qué pasó. Sí, sí, no, yo sigo todo, yo, yo tengo como un, un radar de drama con, con Pérez Gil, entonces cada vez que hay drama se me paran como las antenitas. Y se me hizo muy chévere eh, eh, que Gaby, pues Gaby y yo, o sea, claramente no somos la misma persona, pero eh, hay cosas que, o sea, yo como carne, Gaby no. Yo no cuidaría una paloma, Gaby tiene el corazón para, para cuidar a una paloma. Eh, pero no sé Gaby, es muy Gaby es una ilustradora, Gaby es, o sea, ha hecho, lo que ha hecho con su carrera es desde la ilustración. Y yo soy como mmm, ilustrador de corazón, aunque no, no sea mi, mi... Fue mi carrera y mi profesión por un tiempo cortito, pero pues ya no es. Y Gaby salió en defensa, que uno tiene que decir que eso es admirable, de lo que es el gremio de la ilustración, diciendo como, oigan, eso que están haciendo ustedes está mal. ¿Pero qué pasó? ¿Qué es pasó? la convocatoria. ¿Qué, qué ¿Sabes qué es lo que pasa, Linda? Es que... Eh, lo, que es, o sea, lo que sugería la convocatoria que después la arreglaron, digamos, la, la, la persona a cargo se dio cuenta que, que uno no puede pensar en algo sin tener una claridad sobre como las normas que están, si es un concurso pues tiene que haber claridad sobre unas normas del concurso. Sí, ¿y qué era? O la sea, persona no... no tenía claridad sobre esas normas, sí. entonces ingenuamente dio a entender que se perdían los derechos de las imágenes con las que se iba a participar. ¿Al ganador? No, a todo el mundo. ¿A los participantes? Sí, ahora, esto, esto que uno, o sea, uno dice esto y, y una persona sería como... Un momento, como, no, no, espera un momento. Espera, espera, déjame, sigo y verás que se entiende. No, porque se me pueden coger mi idea y hacerla. Exacto, es que... Es como, es que, ay, no ganó. Es que... Y al mes es que es cuando como... uno dice... Oigan, mándennos, oigan muchachos, ustedes saben que nosotros los adoramos, mándennos ideas, porque vamos a hacer una campaña y una de sus ideas puede ser nuestra nueva línea de bla, de lo que sea, no importa. Eso no, o sea, por favor, cualquier ilustrador que nos esté escuchando, nunca hagan eso, nunca. No, obvio no. Nunca. ¿Saben lo que debería hacer una empresa seria? Dice, oigan muchachos, eh, viene... Se viene una, una nueva eh, colección de bla. Estamos súper interesados en trabajar con ilustradores jóvenes. Por favor, manden sus portafolios. Portafolios. Sí. A bla, o sea, al sitio. Y lo que tiene que hacer la empresa, si es seria, es mirar los portafolios y decir, oigan, ¿sabe qué? Esta persona está súper chévere. Contratemos a esta persona, contratémosla por etapas. Podemos, pueden claro, decirle, oye, por las ideas. te vamos a contratar, te vamos a pagar bien, sí porque uno dice, pues es que al final no me tienen que contratar a mí si, por ejemplo, si, si hay empresas, les digo desde ya, si hay empresas que tienen ilustradores in-house, o sea, si hay una empresa que de una vez está trabajando con diseñadores o ilustradores, lo más seguro, o sea, no quiero, no quiero que esto suene feo, pero lo que normalmente tendían a hacer las empresas es contratar a alguien para que les haga un prediseño y dicen, oye, nos encantó esto, pero quisimos irnos como hacia otro lado, pero la persona no se dio cuenta que cuando firmó el contrato cedía todos pues sus claro, derechos. Claro, y después lo que va a haber es reproducido y lo eso que hacen es a decirle manos de otra a los persona. ilustradores in-house que les pagan súper poquito, porque normalmente acá ilustrar es muy mal pago. Wow, muy mal. Les dicen, oigan, listo, ya tenemos las ideas, ya pa le pagamos nada a esta persona por hacer freelance, nos dio súper buenas ideas pero pues ya son nuestras ideas, porque la persona se dio ese derecho, y Uf. le decimos a una persona in-house como, oiga, usted haga estas ideas, chao. Eso es lo que, eso es lo que, norm esa es una práctica súper común en la ilustración y que es horrorosa, Uf. horrorosa, y normalmente pasa con agencias publicitarias que, que, digamos, contrataban por fuera a ilustradores, pero que siempre tenían a un ilustrador o un, o un equipo de ilustración súper chiquito, porque normalmente son chiquitos, eh, dentro de la empresa y decían, oigan, convocatoria, lluvia de ideas, uy, fantástico, y lo pintan como si fuera algo increíble, cuando en realidad es como, oigan, eh, hagamos una convocatoria para que todas estas personas nos estén haciendo un trabajo gratis, porque al final terminan trabajando gratis, entonces, 
Gaby sí fue muy valiente, Uy, sí, pienso yo uno... en decir, oigan, pero muy esto bien no está bien. Eso porque eso no está bien. Sí, esto no está bien. Y tampoco no está funciona. bien como que la gente crea que, que les están su haciendo trabajo, un favor. Sí, sí, exacto, que su trabajo no vale y que les están les haciendo un favor. No, o sea... nunca les hacen un favor, miren. Un, un ilustrador aquí en Colombia, y yo creo que ese es el caso, bueno, no en toda Latinoamérica porque hay sitios que tienen como más historia de ilustración. Nuestra historia de ilustración es muy, muy, muy corta. Es muy jo la ilustración en Colombia es muy joven y como es muy joven es muy mal paga. Nunca la han entendido como algo como chévere. O sea, aquí puede haber un resto de editoriales grandes y nunca les ha importado a las editoriales grandes tener ilustradores buenos. Esa es la realidad. Y cuando hay ilustradores buenos, que lo bueno es que ya se están educando generaciones de ilustradores jóvenes buenos, eh, si los contratan les pagan muy poco. Y cuando pagan muy poco, entonces el ilustrador pues, normalmente dice, bueno, yo no puedo vivir de este trabajo, de esto que estoy haciendo en este momento. Y además, los tiempos de ejecución son ridículamente rápidos, como cortos. Siempre les dicen, oigan, necesitamos esto para la próxima semana, entonces, por favor. Y uno es como, ¿what? Mm. Es como... Ocho ilustraciones como en tres días, ¿qué? Sí, no. Entonces, aquí no hay cultura de ilustración, eso sí es cierto. Entonces, las personas como que no saben cómo comportarse. Pero entonces, el peso está en, en los ilustradores, las ilustradoras de decirles, pues oigan, no, no participar así en no eso, funciona es como, eso. Oiga, no. Así no funciona. Sí. Y cada vez que hay un concurso de esos, que donde las cosas no se parezcan que están bien, decir, oigan, qué pena, pero esto no está bien. No, pues, o sea, como así, si, mi trabajo, entonces... Yo les estoy regalando mi trabajo. Sí, y, y te lo regalo y además tengo que estar agradecida. Sí, Ay, no, no y gracias créanlo, por. Y crean lo que. De, o sea, de pronto está esta empresa, que de nuevo no importa decir el nombre, es una, nada, no viene al caso. De pronto esta empresa pecó de ingenua y no tenía idea de lo que estaba haciendo. Pero entonces, si no tiene idea, asesórese. Pero es o una buena con más enseñanza, calma. como para que vean, es que es trabajo. Pero les o sea, voy a decir. O sea, esto no sí, puede ser. Pero les voy a decir. No son ingenuos. Muchísimas empresas de esas no son ingenuas. Puede se hacen, que algunas sean. Se hacen las bobas. Se hacen las bobas porque saben que terminan, o sea, terminan habiendo contratado a alguien sin haberlo contratado. Entonces no les tienen que pagar I, nada. Wait, so for one second I'm gonna make a little um, paréntesis. Ajá. Because Briley is here, so I yes. wanted to ask Briley. Because we were seeing the image you sent, Bradley, but we can't figure out where the scratch that you were talking about is. Yeah, dude, honestly, it's not. I, I was thinking that yeah. it was going to be something super evident. Yeah. I can't spot it. I spotted something in the right eye, like a little. But I, I don't know it if was... it looks like a mark yeah. of the uh, brushing of the, you know, whatever you used as a, as a primer. But that's about it. But I don't think it's. I don't think, I really don't think it's that important if mm. it's that. Anything else, I have to be honest with you, I couldn't see it. I literally couldn't see it. No, I would me be lying neither. to you if I told you, oh, I guess it's this thing. Mm. You know what it is, Briley? Sometimes in the eyes and specifically, uh, specifically in portraiture. Oh, Briley said, yes, that mark. Yeah, that's It's like been nothing. bugging me. Yeah, uh -huh. you know why? Because it's the eyes. If it was running down here in the chin, it, you would be like, yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But whenever we get like, um, you know what happens? Uh, I would I, I would love this uh, when it I happened. Tiny one, like in the, in the I know, yeah. Well, or the one on the other side, I thought. It, either or. It's like, it's so not even there. Yeah. You know, uh, Briley, I... I remember more than once, and I thought the universe was just laughing at me. I would buy, because, you know, there was a time that I would buy, like, raw linen, uh, like, unprimed linen. And I remember, like, I would be doing, like, a painting, and it could be, like, a really large painting. And raw linen usually has, like, knots, you know, in the uh, threading. So you would see, like, just natural knots. And sometimes they even have, like, a, like little twigs and stuff. It's really kind of beautiful. Um, but... I remember like when I would, you know, when I was putting uh, rabbit skin glue on top of the um, linen, I would see the little knots and I would be like, oh, here's one and here's another one. And I would be like, don't tell me that this damn knot is going to be like, like literally in the eye. It's like one stupid knot. And I could visualize my, my composition. And I was like, don't tell me this damn thing is going to be like right in the eye. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, there's no chance. I mean, it's a stupid knot floating like in the middle of the ocean. How could, I'm, I'm not, like, I already know where it is. 
I am so not going to draw on top of this thing where the eye is like exactly right there. Dude, of I course. promise you more than once, I would be like, and the eyelid and I would be like, oh my fuck. Oh God, are you kidding me? It's like right there. <laughs> yeah. It's like it was a black hole. It was calling me the whole time. So it's really funny, but I think you notice it way more than... Yeah, because than... we struggled trying to see yeah. where it was. Because I thought it was like the paper was like uh, wobbly. Yeah. After the scratch or it had like a big hole, but no. But dude, if you're like super OCD and you just cannot unsee it, um just <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to be super extreme about this. But sand sand the painting, just sand it down no, and do it again. No, but they were telling us it was a paper, no? Or no, it doesn't matter. Like you could sand it down, like take some sandpaper. And sand it down, or or was it that you lifted the um, the fiber, the pulp? Let's and see. And that's what the problem was. Because I, mm, uh, a ver. Mm. So it is, I tried scraping the eye, but I forgot I was working on prime paper and the scrape left a huge indent. Um, I wonder why would that was. Does that mean that you like... Lifted up? Um, I indented well, you... the paper. Okay. I maybe should have taken photos from a better angle. But it, like an indent because you put... Uh, like an indent like as if something like fell on the paper and it just left like an indent mark like there's something you know going into the paper mm -hmm. um i mean i don't know how if you if you turn the back do you see it if you flip it do you see the mark so while briley answers yes Let's read what Gabi was saying. Gabi's con. So Gabi, <laughs> Gabi's con. Dice, como que carro podría ser yo que me gustaría tener. La alfombra no suena mal, pero un Impala del 67 de Supernatural me gustaría tener. Y dice, Dani, el concurso decía que uno tenía que dar todos, en mayúscula, los derechos patrimoniales cuando se inscribía y de manera gratuita. Eso decía en el contrato, era terrible. Y uno tenía que mandar los editables. ¿Qué? O sea, gracias por mandarnos. ¿Los gracias editables? Gracias por hacernos la tarea. Además, gracias por, o sea... Y por dejarnos todo como listo para que podamos usarlo nosotros. Además, mandar cuántos, o sea, cuántas ideas gratis estaban recibiendo. Ay, no, muy mal. Y Gaby dice, y el premio por hacer el diseño de un empaque, un producto y un stand que se vería a nivel nacional... Era una tableta bambú de un millón. Puff. Dice Gaby. Y dice, lo más ofensivo es que la dueña comenzó a responder gritando en los comentarios. La dueña. Gritando. <ríe> no, 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 es que all caps. Es que con caps. Ah, all caps. Sí, grito, la dueña. Grito virtual. Ay, Dios. La dueña se y pegó empezó a bloquear, una pifia. Y empezó a bloquear a diseñadores chiquitos. Quien dijo buro 2.0. Y sí. Gaby dice... Eh, sí, ¿qué tal la, la dueña diciendo uno por ponerse a hacer de más y queriendo ayudar al gremio? Dude, ¿quieres ese trabajo? No es un favor a los demás. Y sí. Gaby dice, Nicolás me sacó de la, de, la, de, ptimi, de la deprimida y otra vez estoy brava. Ja, 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 ja. No, 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 pero por se eso me es hizo... que hay que venir acá, Gaby. Se para me hizo, Pérez Gil, se me hizo que se me hace chévere, o sea... Uno, uno tiene que saber qué peleas pelear. Yo tampoco creo que uno tenga que pelear todo el tiempo por cosas. Pero esta se me hizo chévere que fuera es un momento donde usted dijo, no, un momento. Esto sí. está mal. No, y Gaby y me... alguien tiene que decir que está mal. Sí. Y entonces eh, hubo otra gente que, que se pegó a eso y, y obviamente después hubo muchísima gente haciendo reclamos. Uh -huh. Pero Gaby, Gaby se... Se, eh... se puso la 10. Sí, sí, se... O sea, dijo, no, pues yo quiero ser vocera también de esto. 
y está muy bien, está muy bien porque esa, ese tipo de prácticas, lo que yo digo, o sea, pueden nacer de la ignorancia, pueden nacer como de la ingenuidad, aunque no, o sea, por favor, si están oyendo como ilustradores jóvenes, no crean que esta gente no sabe lo que está haciendo, o sea, ellos saben lo que están haciendo. Además, estas prácticas no solo las hacen empresas chiquitas, sino que, por ejemplo, las hacen empresas de publicidad enormes, agencias de publicidad enormes. Ellos hacen ese tipo de cosas. Entonces, es, es una manera de encontrar trabajo gratis. O sea, cuando, cuando se dan cuenta que sus ilustradores o sus creativos in-house están teniendo resto de problemas con algo, no tienen buenas ideas, pues ellos dicen, oigan, hagamos como un outsourcing gratis. Gratis, pero que les suene a, a, al, al gremio como que es una oportunidad súper chévere, muchachos. Les vamos a dar pizza. A ver, y Gaby dice, pues lo chévere es que la marca tuvo que cambiar esos términos por la presión que hicimos. Lo malo es que trato de tontos a todos los diseñadores, jaja, pero pues cosas pasan. Sí, la vieja se pegó una pifiada. Pero bueno, lo bueno es que hubo cambio de... Sí, pero... O sea, uno, por pero... lo menos hizo eco, ¿no? Digo, es porque... Lo que tú dices, cuando, no sé, o sea, me estoy enterando apenas, pero cuando pasa con empresas muy grandes, a veces la gente es como, no, pues bueno, o leen y es como, no, pues no lo hago, pero si nadie alza la voz, pues no cambian esas condiciones y por eso es que también lo siguen y lo siguen haciendo sí, otras se... y otras y otras empresas. No, entonces. que se pongan serios, si quieren, si quieren abrir una convocatoria, sean serios, digan, oigan, eh, muchachos, queremos invitar a ilustradores, eh, estamos eh, con esta, vamos a trabajar para esta campaña, eh, para esta nueva temporada de productos de bla, lo que sea, eh, nos encantaría como, como tratar con personas que se ajusten como a, a lo que visualmente es nuestra marca, entonces por favor miren los productos que nosotros hemos hecho y si ustedes sienten que son como acordes a eso, mándenos nuestros portafolios y nos encantaría trabajar con ustedes. Y ya cuando uno está trabajando, pues ya uno dice, ah, bueno, esto va a tener un contrato, esto va a tener un poco tonón de cosas que yo voy a firmar antes de hacer una cosa, antes de hacer un garabato. O sea, uno ya ve un contrato y uno dice, listo, bajo estas condiciones eh, yo trabajo. Mm. Y entonces, si son condiciones en donde la empresa se va a quedar con todo lo que usted hace y es, y es de ellos, pues usted dice, listo, yo le cedo mis derechos, pero mis derechos valen sí, tanto. pero pague bien, Y sí. cuando uno cede los derechos es que uno está diciendo, pues es que yo le voy a hacer todo el trabajo a usted de la, la campaña que usted quiere, entonces usted me va a tener que pagar. Mm. Eh, y ellos saben que tendrían que pagar, ellos no, después ellos ahí serán las víctimas, como no, ¿qué les pasa? Obvio, no, podemos pagar eso. Pues, pues bueno, pero entonces, pero entonces haga las cosas bien. Pero igual están queriendo un trabajo y están diciendo que no lo pueden pagar. No, y, entonces... y a ese punto está bien cu cuando uno no ha hecho nada, uno puede decir, listo, me retiro, a ustedes les gustó mi trabajo, pero pues yo no, yo no voy a trabajar con estos en, dentro de estos términos. Perfecto, chao. Pero uno nunca hace, nunca hace... Mi amor, hace... estás gritando. Es que, es, sí, es no, que no importa, sino que es que está no, en me rojo. me embalé, me embalé. En rojo y me, me asusta embalé. que alguien... Me embalé. ...pierda los oídos. Sí, me embalé. Pero uno no hace trabajo, nunca mm, hagan no, trabajo, pues sí. nunca en su vida hagan trabajo cuando no saben cuáles son las condiciones eh, eh, sobre las que les van a pagar y cómo y si van a ceder o no sus derechos. Por favor, nunca, nunca hagan eso, nunca. Y cuando vean que hay alguien haciendo un concurso así, pues díganlo en redes, como oigan eh, a mis compañeros ilustradores, no vayan no a, participen sí, en no esto, vayan a participar sí. en esto. Y más bien cerciórense de decirle a la empresa que esas no son las condiciones bajo las que ilustradores colombianos trabajan. Qué pena. Julia Tovar dice, siempre apoyando a Gaby en denunciar esas convocatorias, ya juntas habíamos denunciado una bien descarada de un calendario. Sí, por favor. Eh, Muy bien, Julia. Dice Luca Guadaño, ah, eso es verdad, leí los términos y daban a entender que Tú perdías el derecho a tu obra, me pareció rarísimo. Y Luca después dice, pensé que todos hablábamos de la misma empresa, pero parece que esto es súper común. ¡Claro! Sí. O sea, lo absurdo es que, pues, ustedes están hablando de una, pero creo que es como ap aplicable a mil casos. Claro, y porque mira... son prácticas ah. en, el, en el mundo que se hacen para que el trabajo sea gratis. Y Camila Ogerman. Oh, my Camille... God, man. Camille Ogerman. 
uh, decía, ay sí, eso es una vergüenza. Acá en Argentina lo hacen grandes marcas y él, entre comillas, premios, premio, perdón, es que usan su imagen como haciéndote el favor en vez de pagarle a la gente una estafa. Siempre. Sí, de nuevo, y es muy charro porque es como, o sea, uno no va a donde un médico que le tiene que hacer a uno una cirugía y le dice como, ay, eh, regálemela porque es que yo le estoy haciendo el favor, no, y porque a los artistas sí, y porque a los diseñadores sí, o sea, porque, porque uno tiene como que creer que su trabajo no vale, a mí eso me, me da mucha rabia, porque como es que, que siempre se crea que los trabajos que son creativos es como, no, es que yo le estoy haciendo un favor es a usted, es como que, obviamente no, y si es un producto, o sea, si yo hago... Eh, botellas de agua, termos de agua yo le pago al proveedor de los materiales yo le pago a, las, a la persona que tiene las máquinas porque no le voy a pagar a la persona que va a diseñar lo que va a estar en la botella o sea, así como no le voy a pedir regalado los materiales al, al proveedor de los materiales pues tampoco debería pedir regalado el diseño porque es que todo es trabajo Sí. eso no eh, Gaby dice solo les quiero contar que ahora trabajo para una marca y convencí a mi jefe de que el concurso que hagamos sea pedir portafolio y un claro, corazoncito claro. y Gaby dice entre comillas concurso y dice postdata Dani tu pelo se ve muy bonito ay gracias Gaby ya por fin soy pelirroja de nuevo en la cama, en, en la webcam no, en la vida real ya no soy Sí. Pues la webcam eh, te acerca más Lo que pasa al es que, mundo deseado. Como que... No sé. Pues me desinfló, Nicolás. Pero no, eh, la cámara sobresatura todo mucho. Y eh, también lo otro es que ya tengo raíz. Y en el viaje de tanto lavar... Es que estaba haciendo mucho calor, entonces de tanto lavarme el pelo también se va como bajando el color, pero, pero pronto me retoco la raíz y el color para que quede otra vez un rojo así potente, un ginger potente. Si me dicen en la calle. ¿A ti? Un ginger potente. No, pues se refieren a otra persona. Un ginger poteco. No. Cosette Pineda dice, jajaja, ja, ja, qué risa, Nicolás. De nuevo, es como lo de Tom. Sí, qué pito. No sé de qué hablan, pero Yo tampoco, increíble. Por Ginger Potente. Ah, <risa> uh, so let's see. Did uh, Briley answer? Oh, let's see. Uh, oh my God. Danny. Espérame. No, 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 pues es para concluir I'm esta have conversación. To call mi amor. No, so Fabio Alonso Castrillón was saying esa, esa situación pasa en muchos lugares en Colombia y el mundo. Se quedan con tus propuestas y proyectos y aparte dicen que te están haciendo un favor. Sí, terrible. Uh, so, Briley, back to Briley's question. Briley said, uh, I indented the paper. Um, I, I was just asking... Just a little bit, though. A small indent that I think came from pushing too aggressively while trying to scrape. I was a bit upset. Okay. And um, let's see, because uh, Liat was answering... Yeah. And asking some questions to Briley about the painting. Yeah. So Liat said, can't you feel it with paint? And you could, Liet yeah. Said, that was... I think as I add more layers, it would hopefully become less evident. Yeah. Great, great thought though. I might just be a little OC, a little too OCD. And Liat said, Briley, I would just use a palette knife and spackle over it, filling up the dent, and then paint over it. Uh, Briley said to Carla, oh, because Carla said, Briley, I admire that you're painting self-portraits. Oh, no, so that's regarding another question that Briley did. So. Okay, thank you. I'm getting no context from this, Danny. No, so go, I mean, if you want to, answer something more to this because Briley has another question. Oh, okay. So that's Sorry. what uh, Carla Sorry. was commenting okay, on. Okay, okay. So that's what I was trying to say. Um, Briley, we could we could do two things. I think um, um, Liad's suggestion is actually a really good one. Uh, you could just like 
you know, put enough paint there um, so that the volume of paint just covers that indent. So that shouldn't be a big issue. That shouldn't be difficult to do. Now it requires you to like re, you know, paint that eye almost like from the start, but maybe that's something that you'd be willing to do. If you're looking at it and it's like, no, this is, it's not like, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. I'm just frustrated. Every time I look at that eye, I'm going to remember that I had to like, you know, spackle paint on top of it so I could paint it. It's just too frustrating. Um, I asked if it was, if you could feel it in the back. And um, I'm going to suggest something that maybe it's kind of weird, but maybe it works. But you have to be willing to like risk it not working. Like or... to scrape from the back? So no, can... no, no. To like steam it or to just like very gently like dab it with something damp. Is it oils? Area. Is it oils? No, it doesn't matter. Well. No, no, no. No, it doesn't matter. Color and no, it doesn't. It... Well, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it has to be like a tiny, like a tiny little section so that the, you know, it, it almost like resets the fibers or the uh, pulp a little bit. It's not great. I mean, it's not wonderful. Do you remember when I did it? I actually had to, um, um, my John Paul Leon drawing, the drawing he did of me, uh, he did for me of yeah, a Batman. Of Batman. It was in really bad shape, like in the yeah. bottom. It was super, super crumpled because um, the people the that shipping, yeah. usually when when it's shipped over here, we had to ship it to a PO box in the U.S. But when it gets here, people in customs open everything we ask, like everything that is shipped to us. They have to check it in customs. So they open it up. They actually look around. They're looking to see if there's anything illegal there. Um, and when they put it back on on, you know, the boards or whatever you're shipping, the the um, the envelope, they don't care. They don't care if it's a good painting or a good drawing. They don't give a crap. They always like, you know, they do a horrible job trying like when when putting stuff um, uh, back on its original uh, packaging. So they ruined um, my my Batman drawing, uh, John Paul's Batman drawing. And I, it was heartbreaking because the paper was like super bent in the bottom and it was just, ugh, I was dying inside. And I told Danny, he's like, I don't think by pressing it, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, you know, I could leave it for like a month under like books and I don't think it's going to make it better. Because it wasn't like wobbly, but it had like oh, marks. Tons like of marks. Folding like, yeah, like folded marks. marks. Yeah. yeah, It was like painful to see. And I was like, the only way... I can try, I can kind of try to save this is by damping the back by, you know, taking a, a I forget if I used like a sponge or like a rag. Use this punch. Yeah. I but not like, you know, not, not full of water. Oh, it, no. it just has to be like, a like tiny, so lightly, lightly yeah. damp. And you just rub it very gently. And it wasn't like, I, I, it's not perfectly flat, but you should have seen the difference. Like it was enormous. No, and now you can't see it. I mean, you have it framed. Yeah, and, and but under before, the glass, it's like impossible to like. No, see but I think it... I think that if you hadn't do that, if you didn't do that, yeah, you could have seen it even with the glass. Oh yeah, it was it was not because they were shape. like marks. Yeah, it was not not in good shape. It was like I said, it was heartbreaking, but because I know that this was something at the time I was like, I know this is not John Paul's fault. Like this is just something that because, you know, the way we we get things here, like they have to go through so many hands and through so many people checking so many packages that they just don't care. They really it, it literally is comes down to that. They don't care. And um it was just heartbreaking. It it really was. So I was at that point where I was like this means so much to me because I always wanted something of, of um, John Paul's. And I mean, in the end, it proved to be incredible because he was working on my piece while he was very, very sick, very, very sick. And, um, you know, he eventually passed away. And I felt I felt like this is so important for me. This is so, so meaningful, for, meaningful for me because he had no like he could have said no dude i'm just not feeling right like i i i'm not taking commissions but he was super nice to me and he was like dude of course i'm going to paint i'm going to draw something for you and he did a killer oh he did an amazing piece yeah, amazing it's... piece 
it's like whenever I think about it, it breaks my heart. Everything breaks my heart. So when I saw the piece, I was like, oh, no, no, please, no. Mm -hmm. And um, but I was at a point where I was like, I have to try to do something with this and and try to save it. And um, and it worked. I mean, again, it didn't leave it perfect, but it really, really worked. Paez Janeiro said, can we see the drawing? Because maybe uh, I could pass it to you. It's to the wall. So I'll show oh. it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll show it. We we can take it oh, out. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that fell. The um uh, the uh one time I had a window the window open and I had it where it's right now and a gust of wind came in and it actually pushed it out of the um repisa of the shelf. of the shelf that it's in and it fell and you know, it was like I almost like broke when I when I heard it fall. Yeah, but but, uh, happily, but it's okay. It's nothing perfect. happened. No, nothing happened. Nothing. Well, some of the frame kind of like chipped. Or, who cares? But it's, it's a dull like frame. barely yeah, it, it noticeable. No, it's not like cares? it no, broke. No no, 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 no. Who cares? Who cares? Um, but I'll show it tomorrow because it's a little bit easier to do that um, off camera. So, um, Cosette was saying, estaba diciendo, la culpa de los ilustradores porque siempre queda cediendo y bajando los precios pasa lo mismo con el diseño gráfico pero si todos los ilustradores se pongan los moños otra cosa fuera sí todos tienen que honestamente ilustradores tienen que trabajar como un gremio como un gremio o sea debe debe haber prácticas que se hacen y prácticas que no se hacen Julia Cuaresma said y oh. por más de que uno no, iba a terminar diciendo, por más de que uno esté necesitado y todos hemos estado en ese punto, uno tiene que saber que a la larga es mejor siempre decir no cuando las condiciones no son buenas. Julia Cuaresma was saying, in Brazil it's the same thing. I think it's in all Latin America. Super sad. It's uh, really, really sad. Briley was saying, ha, ha, ha. I'm so sorry for blowing up the chat. No further questions. Dude, what? And I'm loving the questions. Briley, so last question of Briley. That I hope it's not the last question. Because Briley, you can ask whatever you want. And anyone can ask no, just whatever Briley you want. Today. No, anyone. Please. Open to Briley. Only. So Briley said, last question. I feel good portion of my paintings have been self portraits. They feel more comfortable because if I make a mistake, there is no subject slash sitter. That would be let down. Sometimes I'm afraid, though, that it comes across as too self-interested if my portfolio is all self-portraits. Thoughts on it? Not a super well-formulated question, more just a thought. Haha. <laughs> yeah, but I promise you that when you look at Rembrandt, you don't think, oh my God, yeah. there's this, again, this self-absorbed idiot doing another, you know, self-portrait. It's like, ugh, I'm going to walk super quickly past this gallery in this museum. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I don't want to I don't want to see his face again. Every time I, I, I get to a Rembrandt portrait, I'm blown away. I'm like, yes, it's another opportunity to see, to understand how he saw himself. But I think it went beyond him, himself. Like, He was just seeing himself as as almost like an archetype of of like this, you know, sensible human being. So I don't see how that is ever limiting or how that can be misconstrued. It can be misconstrued if, if, you know, the work leads you to believe that that's what you're searching for. Like, if I look at your painting and your painting is self-adoration and it every single painting that I see about you... It's, you know, I mean, I don't want to call out Nerdrum, but if you paint yourself and the title is, of the painting is The Prophet of Painting, I mean, that's, you know, and that's literally a, a, a Nerdrum painting. Or if you paint yourself with an erection or, you know, I, I don't know, that you get a different vibe when Nerdrum paints himself than when, you know, you look at a Rembrandt self-portrait. Or Kathy Colvitt. Yeah, yeah. Or like uh Philip Ackerman. I think that's yeah, Philip Ackerman. Philip Ackerman is a is a contemporary painter and he's painted self portraits since could you check Danny? Philip Ackerman. Mm-hmm. He only does self portraits. Only. Only. All right. 
like he's been doing self portraits since that's that's kind of the stuff that I'm looking for. Portrait date? Maybe? No, no, no. Since when has Philip Ackerman done self portraits? Mm. It's gotta be it. It's gotta be there. I had it in a book, I remember. No, it says Since nineteen eighty one. There we go. Yeah. Philip uh, Ackerman has applied himself to paintings and drawings. Exclusively self portraits. Yeah. 1981. Yeah. 1981. 40 years. 41 years of, of doing self-portraits. So, that's not the problem, Briley. It, it really isn't. It really, really isn't. Uh, Catherine Kehoe, constantly. Uh, Susanna Coffey. Coffey, is it? Susanna Coffey. Self-portraits. Um, I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is what you say with your self-portraits. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, that's probably more more relevant here and also like being very like genuinely interested in doing a self-portrait because i think that also translates yeah because if you're like i have self-portraits but i really want to paint animals well maybe that wouldn't make sense if you're presenting that portfolio but if you do it because if you started doing it because you were afraid of uh like uh, having a sitter different than you and you felt like you could be more flexible with you, but you ended up enjoying it. It's perfect. I think it wouldn't be less of a painting if it's a self-portrait. No, 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 it never is. Never, ever, ever. I mean, uh, Gonzalo Freud's? Castro was saying, o los de Col Colleen. Yeah, Colleen Barry yeah. or uh, the ones that uh, Lucian Freud, for example. That's yeah. His portraits were amazing, self-portraits. And he always changed something up a little bit so that it could be a self-portrait, but it could also be a picture about something else. Even if it was like a straight-on portrait, he always found a way to, to make it like, not because it needs to be something else, but he wanted those paintings to just have a different feeling. He was probably like, oh, I've done this one before. Let me see if I can you know, do, do one trying this other thing out. So, yeah, I don't think that's a problem, to be no. honest. I don't, I don't see how a gallery would be put off or, like, anyone would be put off by, by um, your decision to just make self-portraits. Mm -hmm. Again, it's how you make them ultimately what, you know, matters. So I would, if, if I decided that I'm going to be my subject matter, I, like Tara Booth paints... Yes. Just like it, it, she does like her diary, mm -hmm. visual diary. It's it's always her. Yeah. Always, always her. It's stories about her. And even like the way she represents herself, it's incredible. Because mm -hmm. I've seen pictures of her and the drawings like feel like her. Uh, it's it's yeah. amazing. So she's always like the character in her stories because yeah. it, it it's always like autobiographical. So I don't think think there's an issue with that honestly it's it really has to do with what you make of it so mm -hmm. don't be scared of that mm, so let's see because i think that when we started talking about movie cars <laughs> oh my god danny <laughs> no 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 but i was trying to say that i skipped maybe some questions i think you skipped like a thousand so. questions so Aaron Gall was saying, what kind of paper do you use? Any thoughts on moleskin paper for drawing? So this so is you could answer skin. that that one. You could answer that one, Danny. This is moleskin paper. No, but they layup. were saying any thoughts, any thoughts on moleskin paper for drawing. So maybe you can. It's a great paper. I think it's a very solid multimedia, multimedia paper. Not quite made for painting, but works wonderfully if you want to paint with it. Uh, on it as a substrate, yeah. Mm, Thumb Jordan. Tom. Thumb. Thumb. Was saying cleaning wood shavings does sound pretty zen. I wish I had that feeling with cleaning my brushes. Maybe the oh. dream is to have enough money to use brushes only once, like those basketball players who wears a new pair of socks every day. Yeah, or like Jay Z that 
would wear um, boxers, underwear, new underwear every day. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking of the planet. Of the planet? Oh, he's not thinking of the planet. No, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not why him. I am worried yeah, about not, that not idea. Him. No, not him. Uh, yeah, and I would say maybe cleaning wood shavings is not zen as as is. Because, I mean, you could ask Nicolas how the apartment looks. Yeah, I don't the know thing when is you that clean them. It stress okay hi <laughs> nicolas because it stresses me to see the shavings but i think that i like it because i feel like i'm doing something related to uh the carving but i'm not carving so i can have like a moment to like tidy up my space and the whole apartment because there's like shavings in the bathroom in the kitchen in the everywhere So I can clean everything and then I can go back. It's like a moment to breathe a lot. A lot of wood shaving. And go back. Yeah, sometimes if I cough too loudly, <laughs> like a piece of wood just comes out <laughs> of my lungs. Yeah. I've told you, sometimes I uh, have a shower. Yeah. And there's like shavings and I'm like, how are they... Their shavings falling. Yeah. If I use the shower, shower after you, it's like a beaver. <laughs> it's like a dam. And you know that I try to have them, like the shavings, just in one spot. But. Yeah. Unlike a beaver, you can't do that. No. I well, can't. unless you consider the apartment one spot. Mm, yeah. I think that's a way around it. Well, I don't know if when I go to the supermarket. <laughs> In that days that I'm carving, yeah. maybe there's like shavings in the pineapples yeah. and tomatoes and everything. So, Gaby dice, pero es que hay que comenzar a educar. Yo comenzando la embarré mucho y me gustaba ver estos concursos porque pensaba que eran buenos para darme a conocer. Carita triste, perdón. No, perdón. Sí. Que... No, es que yo creo que eh, el punto es como entender todos como gremio, como decía Nicolás, que es trabajo y que vale. O sea, porque yo creo que mucha gente también, si, digamos, está empezando en el mundo laboral de la ilustración, dirá, pues yo veo tantas convocatorias que supongo que esta es la manera en la que se trabaja. Entonces, pues, tenaz. Tenaz porque desde el principio empiezan a creer que pues el trabajo no vale nada. Es como, no, agradezco que haya estas convocatorias para regalar mi trabajo, porque de pronto así me van a conocer. Eh, País Llanero was saying, quote unquote, just Briley. Y después, ¿por qué es que no hago preguntas? Y un corazón <risa> partido. Y luego dice joke. Um, let's see. Elaine was saying, question about colors. Yes. Would you use your normal pal palette of colors for gouache as well, Nicolas? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, you know, um, in gouache, because it's opaque, I wouldn't see any reason why not to. I can see how maybe in watercolor, thinking that it is a, um, It's not an additive medium like oil, but it's a subtractive. So your light comes from your paper. Um, I can see how you can be a little more sensitive towards uh, transparent pigments. Uh, but even then, like that's, I, I think that you don't have to. Like if if this was my my watercolor palette, I'd be fine. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure. Mm, and Elaine had two more questions. Yes, please. So it is. I was reading a book on Holly's Dunlop and his palette includes Venetian red slash Indian red as opposed to alizarin crimson. Is there a reason why people choose slightly different shades of colors? Well, he, he's changed his palette quite a bit, to be honest. Like he can he can work with um, I think I saw I've seen him work with like very few colors like he could do almost like a, a weird variation of like a primary color palette or and, and like a Zorn palette. Um, 
but if I'm not mistaken, because he he would use like some sort of um, yellow, so it was like a cat lemon yellow or something like that, let's say, and an earth red. You're right. Um, he uses a blue. I forget if it's like what blue does he use? It's a super strong blue, if I'm not mistaken. So it may be phthalo blue and white. Like I've seen him do paintings with those colors. And he can pull it off. I don't know how, but he, he can totally make those colors work. Um, but I've also seen him change the palette just a little bit. So, yeah, I forgot, I forget to, I forgot to ask him what he was using um, in Rome. So, yeah, and why choose some colors over another? I don't, I don't, I think it's about recognizing how you paint, like the character of your painting, where you feel comfortable. And about the... the relationships you build with your palette as right. you were saying some days ago right but but there's you know in theory there's no wrong answers here like his palette is not like my palette is no not more right than anything that he would you know use the the proof of that is the paintings you know when you see his paintings and you see where they come from you're like okay yeah that's a genius palette because He's able to, from this palette, make this painting. And that's mm -hmm. it. That's all the proof you need. Mm -hmm. All the proof you need is just a painting. Yeah. So um, I think it just has to do with personality, to be completely honest with you. I really, really do. I think it has to do with the affinity that you have with certain colors and certain, like, permutations of colors more than just single colors. The way maybe understanding a color not just as a color by itself but how it impacts the rest of the colors in your palette so mm -hmm. palettes end up having like personalities like you know a very specific character and you are very aware of it from the beginning you're like okay i can do this and this with this palette but not this and this and if you concentrate on the things that you can do with a palette instead of the things that you can't then you are going to be showcasing like the potential that that palette the, like the true potential that that palette has. And you'll be able to unlock that potential and do amazing paintings, which is what Hollis, you know, does. So, um, and Elaine's uh, third question yeah. was, and, and Elaine said, sorry, no. why do people still use lead white? Is the alternative transparent white? As I know, titanium white is a cooler color and opaque. Yeah, so it's it's a cooler color, um, titanium white when compared, uh, much much cooler, much like infinitely more cool than than um, lead white. So the reason that we use it is, let's say, part history. I mean, it is it is it has been part of like the you know the development of painting throughout centuries. So that was the white for centuries. Chances are that when you go to a museum and you see white on a painting, it's lead white. So, you know, there's enormous chance that that's the white, the sole white that they were using at that time. So um, when, because it's the white that they had used for centuries, we can see how it behaves. We can judge how it has behaved throughout time. And there's a lot of people that love that. They love to have like proof of, of how a, um, a pigment holds up throughout, you know, centuries. And lead white is amazing. It's, you know, it's absolutely resilient. Like any other color, you know, it will crack. Um, it will yellow a little bit, but it's it's an incredible white but the the um you know the glory of lead white is in its handling that is like the the greatest thing that um painters like unlocked when using lead white when using lead carbonate um they realized that you know if you brush lead white it kind of holds its form you can kind of model it and shape it and it just holds it it beautifully holds its shape it's not overpowering like titanium. It's slightly transparent, which doesn't mean that that the alternatives to a lead white are transparent whites. No, 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 no. It's actually, if you use like zinc white, it actually has more body. Lead white has way more body than zinc white, which is far more transparent. So it's not quite about transparency, not at all. Actually, lead white has 
like like I said, like a beautiful body to it. So yeah, it's painters still. I mean, it's very expensive, very very expensive because it has become very expensive to produce. Uh, there's a ton of um, limitations that that many many countries have put on the production of lead white. So it is not an easy color to produce. The uh, companies that do produce it have to have like tons of, um, if I'm not mistaken, tons of um, uh, permits to do so. Um, so, you know, it is, it is just that, you know, it's become that of um, l like a boutique color. It, it really is something that not many painters use nowadays. There's a ton of painters like that still you know, feel that because they are working in the uh, tradition of painting, they have to use it. But the reality is that most painters don't pay for, for lead white and, and most painters wouldn't really, you know, your painting wouldn't necessarily benefit from using lead white. Um, so it is a color that, that lends itself to um, a certain type of painting, but not all painting necessarily needs lead white. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. It's one of those things, Elaine, that if you use lead white and if you've had like experience using other whites, um, you see, you kind of feel the difference immediately. It's just, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to explain. But um, but to me, what what is probably most relevant and most beautiful is just its handling for sure. Uh, Marcelo Peralta said, never painted a self-portrait. The idea haunts me. I don't oh. know why. Marcelo, you should try it yeah. then. I mean, you don't have to. No, you just could, to try it. Yeah, you could go your whole life without doing one. That's totally fine. Nobody would ever say like, oh my God, this artist never painted themselves. Never. It's like, it's a fine. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But um, But it'd be interesting to like, to like see maybe why you have avoided. Yeah, because also while doing it, you could maybe understand why. Like why you, like it haunt, haunts you so much. So it would be interesting. Uh, Julia Tovar. Mm, who is that? Was saying, I feel Danny is so good in understanding the technique and subject as a path to express what you want instead of forcing a technique or a subject which can happen to a lot of us, me included. Oh, Julia, that's so sweet. I love that you uh, feel that that's how I approach uh, the things I do. Because I think that... Um, like, I've talked with Nicolas a lot about how sometimes I have an idea and it's not like I have an idea and I think... I can approach it in uh, sculpture and drawing and painting. But I feel like sometimes this idea can only be answered in this sort of way, like in carving, because I feel like it resonates there and not in other place. So I, I am so happy to read that. Um, and I love that when it's a comment, you don't say anything, Nicolas. No, but she's talking about your work. I, I, I don't, I'm never going to butt in. And especially if she's saying something so nice about your work, like this is all you. I thank you, Julia. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this, this is, um, I would very, you know, respectfully say like, no, no, I don't belong in this conversation. This is like, this is totally between you and, uh, Julia Marina. And all I could say is I think I'm, I agree with uh, Yulia. Briley Moreno said, I appreciate that, Nico and Danny. Yes, I uh, just want to capture a feeling and moment of time and saying something through it. And I'm usually the closest person in the room to model. Thanks again. Eh, País Llanero dice, pregunta para OPL. Sí. La primera parte del proyecto fueron los videos con un tema semanal para pintar. La segunda del proyecto son los lives. ¿Cuál sería la tercera parte? Un perro. Un perro en los lives. <risa> eh... Sí, no, no, pues no nos 
no sé, o sea... No, es que además yo creo que yo no lo veo como etapas así, o sea, yo creo que eh, lo de los videos editados, como dijimos desde el principio, era una idea que iba a ser por dos años, desde el primer video se dijo es un proyecto a dos años y eh, yo creo que transicionó a las transmisiones porque de verdad se nos estaba dificultando muchísimo en temas de tiempo eh, hacer y editar cinco videos a la semana. Entonces yo hacer y editar cinco videos, Nicolás hacer cinco pinturas a la semana y además hablar sobre las cinco pinturas y además salir en los intros eh, era mucho trabajo entonces por eso transicionamos a pero no creo que tenga que ser algo como que entonces a los dos años de los live streams hay que cambiar o a los dos y como nuevo capítulo nuevo capítulo no eh, como hemos dicho nos interesa la idea de hacer como una especie de cursos de pintura que sean eh, como más personalizados, o sea, que sea de un grupo más pequeño de personas donde se puede tener por un periodo más largo de tiempo un curso, como si fuera un workshop, pero por más semanas. Eh, eso nos interesaría, pero eso no significa que entonces llega eso y se van los live streams, ¿no? Eh, de pronto... Uno nunca sabe, de pronto volvemos a un video editado, o de pronto nunca volvemos a editar videos, o de pronto siempre vamos a hacer live streams, o de pronto cambiamos de los live streams. Eh, acá nunca se sabe, País Llanero, y por eso lo mejor es suscribirse <risa> y no perderse ring that bell. lo que sea, exacto. Si ringean la bell, Uy, no, pero... van a, saber, no, pero eso, ¿qué van a es estar palabra? pendientes de todas las etapas de Our Painted Lives. Ojalá no haya muchas después de decir ringear. <ríe> eh, Julia Tovar said, I just saw some graphics on how the 1% billionaires pollute compared to regular people. It basically said that a normal person would have to live 550 lives to pollute yeah. as much as a billionaire. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> That's it's, just... Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm sorry. But you don't need to own a, par, a pair of underwears for every single day you're alive. That, that's just su stupid. But I'm sorry. When thinking about billionaires... It's stupid. You could start anything that you're going to say you don't need to. Anything. Anything. It really, mm -hmm. You don't need a house that big. You don't need to travel on like a private plane. Like anything that you can come up with, you could say you don't need to. So that in, in, in a very sad way, it's like that's almost like not even the point. Because yes, they don't need to, but they do it. They know that they probably know that they don't need to. Mm. That's like that's why they do it. Because they can. Because yeah. they can, yeah. Rebecca Caridad said, I find self-portrait so difficult. Because I think we never really know what we look like. I always feel like it looks nothing like me when I paint myself. Yeah, also this goes with what we were talking about yesterday. About that idea of self. Because if you think about it, when you paint a, a port like a self-portrait, you're painting how people see you. Do you think that? No, no, no. Not for people to see a version of you, no. But, I mean, in your day-to-day, -day, if you don't see your reflection, you're not seeing yourself. You're right. inhabiting yourself, but you're not seeing yourself. No, 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 I... I so when you paint a self-portrait, is as you can, as if you can be outside your body, seeing yourself. Because you have to see a reflection of yourself. I don't know if this is getting a little bit entangled, but in my head, it makes sense. Because, I mean, I live, I inhabit my body, But no, no, as no, I no, said I, yesterday, I don't see my body and I don't see my face all the time. So when I do a self-portrait, I'm being conscious of how that thing I'm inhabiting looks like all the time. Yeah. No, the, the, the um, you know, it's because you, you said other people's, like there was a moment where you said other people see you. Yeah, because I, yesterday I was talking about how that idea of self We have an idea of self, but of inhabiting that body, but not how we actually see 
No, I get that. How people see you, you with other eyes, like how you as a whole interact with the world. So I was not a talking about painting for someone else. Of course not. No, 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 no. Of course not. I mean, I was talking about how you're going to paint from the perspective you never have of yourself, at least not if you don't have like a reflection to see yourself. You know what's interesting though? What? I, I, um, I remember doing this. It, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't an exercise that, that I did many times. And it usually was, was not something that I would repeat because people would have a really hard time and a lot of stuff would like bubble up when they were doing this exercise. But um, we had a self-portrait exercise in, I think it was drawing class or, I don't think I ever did it in painting class. Like without seeing yourself? No, 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 where I, where I asked people, uh, draw yourself how you think other people see you. Like do a self-portrait, but do it the way you think people see you. Oh my God, it was incredible, like incredible. Because a lot of the, like mostly insecurities that people would have would be like the main subject matter within the portrait. And a lot of those were like amplified to like a thousand. So it was very painful because, you know, you realize how disconnected the way, you know, in which, like the understanding of the way in which other people see you is from the way, you know, people would say, I don't think I've ever seen you like that. Mm -hmm. Like e everyone else in, in the classroom would say, wow, that's crazy that you think people see you like that because I don't, like none of us see that. Mm -hmm. But the person would say, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. Like th that's, you know, that's where my insecurities like come from. Mm -hmm. And um, so so that's what I was meaning. Like when you think, not not that you're working for other people, like ideally you never do anything thinking of like the observer um uh but you know you're always trying to propose something to the observer yes but you're doing it from the way you want to direct it mm -hmm. um so it was really really interesting that when the other kind of played a part in the making of a portrait it would just dramatically alter the way you would represent yourself Even like right now, I would say, how do you think people see you? I th I know I would paint a different painting than the one that I would paint if I was painting myself. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Because when I, when I think how other people see me, I think that everything that I feel that I have to hide within myself or, the, or that I'm insecure about is like, you know, easily visible to everyone. And because it is visible to everyone, they're going to not only like care about it, but highlight it and think that it defines me. So you make all of that just, you know, just like the basis of your, your, um, your portrait. It's very, it's very weird. It's a very tough exercise. Yeah. I, I don't think it's like, a, like an easy, it's, it, it's an easy task when you put, Um, I'm not saying that you were saying that's easy, but I'm saying that it it shifts a little bit the uh, focus of, of what you're doing when you think of perception. And I also think that making a self-portrait is a very complicated exercise because you're doing like the impossible, which is like trying to take your eyes, your side out of your body mm. to see yourself. Right. Because that's not the way you understand self in every single day mm. so i think it's very very interesting yeah it's always good. like and and most of the times uh portraiture is um is bigger than the person that is portraying themselves like it, it's it's incredible how we can see echoes of ourselves in other people's portraits and it, it has nothing to do with like gender or like i could see a self-portrait of a woman photographer and feel identified. Mm -hmm. So it's really weird how there are, I don't know, primitive things that we can tap into when we're trying to see ourselves that, you know, people from other countries, other religions, other, 
you know, um, uh, social standings, uh, any, it doesn't matter. It, it becomes like a, this, this strange, almost like private universal language, like something that's very unique to us, but we react to it. That's, that's the power of a self-portrait because you don't have to care about, like when you see somebody painting themselves, usually there's something different about an, uh, uh, an artist when they paint themselves. Let's say like talking specifically about painting. When they portray themselves, you go like, oh, wow, there's something about this that's like, you know, there's, there's, there is other, there are other elements to their work um, when, you know, when they're portraying other people, but when they see themselves, it's like, woof, there's another dimension and you kind of feel it. Because it's charged of a lot of other things that are not, don't have to be there when you paint other person. Right. Because I mean, if I paint myself, I know how my body feels. I know how, uh, as you were saying, the insecurities I have. I know the things that bother me. I know the things I like about myself. I know what I feel, like how my skin feels, how, like everything. You have like a lot of things that you don't have when you paint another person. Because when you're painting another person, it can be someone you love yeah. and that would add something else. And it could be someone you have a relationship built with, even if it's, uh, I don't know, a person of your family, a uh, loved one, a friend, uh, your partner, whatever. That would add something. But I think that nothing like that compares to painting yourself. Because again, you're inhabiting the body you're trying to paint. Yeah. So. It's a weird, weird thing. Uh, so. Mm. Oh, Max said that like now that you were saying it, uh, Max Monroe said something super cool. Uh, you know, of one of the drawings that I, I showed today. Mm -hmm. Can I say what she said? It made yeah, me feel like course. super cool. Um, she said. Okay, you in the bundle you uploaded there was uh, a drawing of Max. A drawing of Max. Yeah, yeah, maybe a, people. It's like an older haven't drawing, seen it. but I really. I, I think it was of uh, the time she went to one of your. Oh workshops. yeah, so this is yours. So. So she said, so in love with that drawing, I feel like you captured things in my face only I know about. And well, I told her that that was like the coolest compliment yeah. that anyone could give me. Yeah. Um, it, because it is weird, isn't it? Like, yeah. Um, and I don't really know what she's talking about because when I draw her, I just try to connect with her. Mm -hmm. But, you know, those things I can't put into words. I, like it escapes me to mm -hmm. say, oh yeah, you're referring to like your dimple. It's, like it's not that easy it's to, like that idea impossible to word out of humanity that we were talking about yesterday in a portrait yeah like when you feel something that you can't describe what it is like it's not like something specific it's like something that's laying underneath the drawing or painting or whatever that makes you feel that that's human Yeah, And I think that happens a lot when you see, because for example, that has happened to me when I see paintings of you that I've told you, oh, I feel like I'm there a thousand percent. And if I don't say that, it doesn't mean it's not a good painting. I mean, it can be an amazing painting of me where, I mean, the end result was an amazing painting, but there's specific paintings that... It can be a painting that maybe you don't even enjoy it that much. And I can feel that it feels like me. I don't know how to word it out, but it feels like me. Yeah, but I think I understand what you're saying because sometimes it's like, um, it's um, like my hope is that every time, for example, I try to paint you or I try to paint Fed or, or Samu or my mother, and I, always, I know I always give those examples, but, you know, probably four of the closest people that I have in my life. But when I attempt to paint, you know, people that I love, it's like you're always hoping you can get something. Like you can tap into something that seems like really weird and special and, and that it doesn't happen often. And you know that maybe it doesn't happen. And maybe what you were saying, I was thinking like, You know, it's not a bad painting, but you become like a character in that painting. It's almost like, okay, I'm playing a role in this painting and it's super cool. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost like 
you hired me as an actor to do this in your painting. And it feels, you know, it's a great painting. It looks great. It's cool. I'm happy to have helped you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, materialize this. But it almost like stops there. Like, yeah, that was my role. But there are times that, that like what happens with, um, I was looking at David's uh, sculpture of me this morning. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, mm. I don't know. Like, I, I can't word it out better than what I said um, the first time that it's like, I never think of myself as somebody who's cool. Like, I, I've never thought of myself as somebody who's like, particularly good looking or cool looking or like interesting. I don't know. I see myself as somebody who's like, like forgettable. Like, you know, you walk past people and you're like, who, who did you walk past? And I'm like, I don't know. No, but no, 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 but go ahead. You know, but, yeah, that's yeah. how you see exactly. Yourself, so, though. and and uh, when David did this little sculpture of me, I was like, oh my god, I I can be fucking cool. Like this looks awesome. Like I feel that that's like the cool version of me. Like that's the cool person that I can be. So it's really incredible because I've always been insecure about other people either painting me or drawing me or doing anything. You know with me as a starting point and it just goes to show you how powerful like art can be that you can have a very set idea of who you think you are or and you can be completely insecure about a ton of things and when cool artists like tell you no let me show you how i see you mm -hmm. and they do like a kick-ass job it's like oh my god that is fucking cool like i never thought i could be the like the beginning of something that was that cool. That's how I felt with David's like sculpture. I still look at it. I put it to the side of me because when I'm painting, I like to look at it and, and be like, wow, that is, that is something else that like, that's awesome. So whenever I'm in doubt of like, you know, thinking, oh, it's like what Briley was saying, maybe it's too many portraits or maybe it's, I don't know how relevant this could be. I don't know how self-absorbed I'm going to look. Um, whenever I see, you know, I, I have those same doubts in my mind. I look to the side and I go like, no, these things can be powerful. And it's not powerful because, you know, it's a depiction of me. Like I could honestly, I, I'll tell you guys the truth. I could care less if anyone paints me or draws me like it doesn't matter. I, I mean, I'm far more comfortable if they don't. So so when I say it's like powerful, it's because it really changed the way I could perceive myself mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing it's it's really amazing that art can do that it's it i think that that's power and you know what i also find very interesting uh for example talking about paintings you you've done of me yeah there are some paintings that you can feel that i am really there yeah and maybe i feel that in another one i feel like i am really there and I think that's interesting, again, when you go to that idea of self, because you experience me in a different way that I experience myself. So maybe I see a painting of m myself that you've done, and I feel that that is very me. And you can say, no, I feel like you escaped me in the, this painting. Or there's another painting where you could say, oh, I feel like this is 100% you. But it's interesting because it's the you that you perceive right. of me. Not, It doesn't have to be that it matches the me that I feel I look like or I pro project or I inhabit. So I think it's very interesting. Yeah, it's super, super interesting. Like yeah. portraiture, honestly... And again, I mean, I'm, I know I'm being super repetitive, but the idea of self is very, very interesting. Yeah, I, I think uh, we we are um, we're almost like at a loss when we decide that portraiture is just this very formal idea of portraiture about you know rich people having their portrait painted. That's mm -hmm. or rich or powerful or well known people like. I would love a show of just portraits of unknown people yeah. because they, they should be as powerful as somebody, you know, and, or, or somebody, or somebody who ha who you have built this, this like idea, this collective idea of who that person is. Um, I, I think just complete strangers can be 
incredibly seductive because you don't really you don't really know them but you know the the um the portrait the painting you know that that is understanding itself as a portrait is almost like inviting you to um or presenting to you this stranger in a way in which you could say i think we got to know each other like yeah. you know when i was looking at this portrait it's weird but there was an exchange and i have feelings for this person i could just be yeah, I could just reject the portrait or I could say, I don't connect with it. I feel ambivalent. Or I could say, oh my God, this would be this person. I have no idea who this person is. That dude could be my friend. Like I've completely connect with this human being. And there's no basis for any of that. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing except what the portrait is trying to do. And you know, when it does it well, it's probably those times that you just comp you have like a very strong feeling about, um, you know, how you feel about this absolute stranger. So I think it's wonderful. I, I really I'm I'm with you, Danny. I, I think it's um, I think portraits are one of these things that, you know, we're going to do until the end of our days. Yeah. And. I think we're going to do it because it's just a place where we get to know each other. Yeah. And and humanity is going to shift and change throughout time. We're going to, you know, believe in different things and and hopefully, you know, for the better, but it it is going to be like the way we we see ourselves reflected. Yeah, or how we establish relationships. Yeah. Because as you were saying, sometimes it's someone that just sits there and you've never crossed words with them. But you try to paint them or draw them. And it's like you're trying to get to know them by painting them or by drawing them. So it's a very interesting way of trying to decipher someone. Because yeah, when I'm you establish a conversation with someone, you're getting to know that person. But I think that by observation and by painting, you're also trying to get to tap into what that person is. Which is very, very interesting. And what were you going to say? Now that I, I, I remember painting, having painted people where, you know, you end up being fascinated by things that are, that feel so particular of those people. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there are times where you paint something and you realize it's something that they don't really care for about themselves or they don't like about themselves. Mm hmm but when they hear you say it with such like excitement like oh my god i saw this thing that your neck does that is incredible mm -hmm. and they you know many times i've heard like models say or people that are posing say like oh yeah but i yeah i don't like that about my neck and our usual response to that is like really that's amazing it's like the most amazing thing you know when you when i saw you for the first time i thought that that was fascinating so it is kind of cool when somebody looks at you, but looks at you like in a sense of like bewilderment and, and exploration. Like you really just want to travel through, you know, all the forms that make up this person. And I think that when you do that, you don't think about pretty or ugly or, no. you know, you're not thinking those things. You really, I mean, we're not immune to like looking at a model and you can say, oh, dude, that that guy is beautiful. Like mm -hmm. that model is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like Andrea in Rome, mm -hmm. that dude is gorgeous. Like he he was sculpted by the gods like mm -hmm. that. He's <laughs> objectively legs. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you I mean, we're human beings. It's like the first moment I saw him, I was like, oh, my God. No, on, but I is... just I love that that's how you always describe him. Oh, that dude is like, like crazy. sculpted by oh, the gods. He is, is godlike. <laughs> he, he is. In he really Rome, is. So. I know he is right. Like <laughs> it had to be in Rome, Nicholas. but um, no. But you know, you're not immune to any. Like you, you are a human being. You're gonna look at something and say, "Yeah, but it's oh, he's beautiful." I or, get oh, what she's you're beautiful. saying. Like it's past that. Yeah, but you don't. Because it's not there. like you're judging. Right, you don't like, stay oh, there. Oh no, I don't find them beautiful. I'm not gonna paint them. No, what are you talking about? You're not even thinking about beautiful, not beautiful. No, no, no. Because you're if just you stay trying there, to connect. It's like, dude, you like you're missing so much. You're gonna miss everything if you just stay saying like, "Oh my God, she's so hot. Look at her, she's so hot." It's like, okay, dude, but get to painting because that's when the interesting stuff like begins to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, so I I think that 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 exchange is, 
I think that that's going to be with us for forever. So that's why I was saying, like, I hope that, yes, this it's it's nice to see like these traditions still alive of like, you know, wealthy people getting their portrait painted. And that's how it usually, you know, that's always been a part of painting, having patrons. I, I totally get that. Um, doing like commissioning work. It's always been a part of painting that 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 I don't think that's ever going to go away. But I think we can like dive deeper into what it means to just, um, you know, as sitters, for example, to let other people to be vulnerable enough so that other people can can, you know, uncover us. I think that's amazing. Um, and as artists that are willing to portray other people or to portray ourselves, there's like such a cool responsibility to it when done properly that I think that that's amazing I, I don't think that or i wish that you know that never goes away and that we can we can say sure this other part yeah that's that's still there that's still the part that you know for some reason um kings and queens and presidents and and judges and senators and everyone wants their portrait done and it's always like you you always know what to expect when those portraits are done. And it's also not even them. It's like the rose-tinted glasses version of them. Because in a commission, that happens. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. You could never like, like say, well, well, actually, the, the I, I would say the queen, for example, is, uh, is quite open to leaving an artist just paint her how they want to paint her which i think it's very interesting that's I, why the portraits can be interesting yeah that's why they become like cool paintings exactly because you know what would be interesting now that you're talking about like not having all the uh powerful people showing just the commissions they did and that's all we have to see as portrait art but i feel it would be very interesting to see like if there was a way to see the rejected versions of that. Oh, yeah. Because it's also to see how the artist really saw that person. Right. And how they wanted to be seen. I think that would be What like, we were talking about at the Prado, that um, that Velázquez would, uh, had painted Felipe yeah. um, before. Yeah. And x-rays give us, a, a you know, an idea of, of what how that painting looked exactly, like. Exactly, yeah. And it was so like animalistic that portrait. It yeah. was so like grotesque and cool. But of course, you know, that painting was never ever going to happen. But very, very interesting because you can see like you can see how the artist saw, but you can also see the things that the sitter was seeing of himself that he he or she or them didn't like of themselves. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. the things they wanted to just hide or the things they wanted to exalt. Yeah, the image they were trying to portray. Exactly. Yeah, it's fascinating when you look at, at, at that portrait, like those portraits in particular. Yeah. Um, to realize like that there was this, you know, that Velázquez just acted like a regular painter. It's like, I'm going to paint what I see. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, no, I can't paint what I see. I'm actually depicting the image of, you know, the king of the most powerful person at that time. Mm -hmm. One of the most powerful people in Europe at that time. I have like it is my responsibility to understand that I'm creating like an icon, mm -hmm. like this image that has to survive beyond the idea of likeness. It doesn't like the, matter. The version that he wants to be reminded by yeah yeah and to and to have reached that degree of like you know this beautiful understanding of okay you are horrid to look at but let's see what are the things that we can still keep but not horrid to look at i mean no i mean i think no one's horrid to no. look at okay so. okay well it's pretty hard to look at um but to 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 then see like the way he just masterfully said, okay, what what can I keep? What do I like soften? What do I diminish? What do I, you know, because it's still, it, it couldn't be like a stranger. It couldn't be like, you know, other people going to uh, 
to Spain and saying, and here's the portrait. And you would be like, who's that? Like, who the hell is that? No, would, you would still have to be faithful to like an essence of, of that human being. So I, I think it was, you know, genius. He's probably like the best court painter ever, you know, ever, ever. Because what he had to do was just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Any, I don't think anyone could have done what he, what he did. Anyone. You then later see uh, Goja, for example, as a, courtrait, as a uh, court painter. And no, Goja could never not be Goja. Like, he's, he was like, oh, she's weird looking. I'm going to paint her weird. And because he had like a, like not that, you know, very elegant sense of drawing that uh, Velasquez had, for example, but he was much heavy hand, much more heavy handed. Um, it's amazing that you can see like these grotesque, you know, uh, inbred kings and queens. And, um, and you would be like, oh, that shows like another dimension. But Velasquez was like pure class. I mean, it was just... I mean, it was perfect. It wasn't pompous like French portraits. It was just like this beautiful, elegant, simple, crazy, craziness. I mean, again, what is a portrait in the hands of like the best painter ever? So it's incredible. Camila Ogerman said the portrait of Queen Elizabeth by Lucian Freud. Incredible. It's genius. Uh, so let's see the comments. Uh, Robin was saying... A picture of yourself versus a self-portrait too. Right? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Carla Anglada said, I like your mind, Danny. I hope that doesn't sound strange. Oh, no. That's like a very good compliment. Thank you, Carla. Best compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Liat said, so when you do a self-portrait, if you're working from a mirror, it won't look right to people that know you, but... If you work from a photo, it won't look right to you because it's not mirrored. Oh, oh, I've okay, yeah. Like in a literal sense, yes. I've done at least six self-portraits. I hate painting myself. <laughs> yet. Rebecca Caridad said, love what you're saying about that quote-unquote charge self-portrait feel, like a great representation of the act of painting in general. Self-reflection, facing yourself through the act of painting. Carla Anglada said, my papa used to view painting by its energy with Rembrandt's painting having the highest energy. That's nice. Marcelo Peralta said, my second to last painting was a portrait of my father. Had a lot mm. of fun doing it. Camila Ogorman said, I hated my first self-portraits even though I was really young and of course better looking and a laughing uh, emoji. But that exercise is fascinating, no matter how it turns out. Tani was saying, I recently did a small sketch of myself without a mirror and kind of liked it. Nicolás, you focused a lot on portraits as well as the human body. How did you practice to improve your portraits slash anatomy paintings slash drawings? Did you keep pra practicing the fundamentals of portraits and anatomy, such as the makeup and dimensions of form so i literally like D danny knows this i taught anatomy at like blank for i think two times mm -hmm. and i forgot the word clavicle today so so yeah so i i never thought that to do something well you have to do that thing like consistently so if you want to do portraits then all you have to do is portraits i don't think think so I really really don't I don't think painting or art works that way um, like sure you're going to become you know familiar with something that you do repeatedly that is unavoidable I don't think that should surprise us if you paint you know pears every single day I'm sure that after five years of painting pears you're going to be very familiar of what a pear feels like you are so that's not that's nothing new that's absolutely nothing new. It's like, uh, you know, I bike to work every day. After five years of biking to work, you're going to pre you're going to be pretty good at, you know, on a bike. It's not going to feel weird to bike to work. Um, so, yes, it's obvious that if we work on something, we can get 
some like a, a sense of familiarity with that subject matter. But it doesn't mean that it's the only way. And I hope people trust me when I say this, but in the same sense, Danny was saying like, wow, I don't know how this happened, but I wasn't doing whittling uh, or wood carving for some time and I was concentrating on something else or my mind even, like maybe I didn't even have to do it, but my mind was thinking about something else and suddenly I have no idea why I can carve better when I, you know, after I was drawing or after I was painting or after I was thinking of painting. Mm. And I think it's it's it has more to do with like the critical brain. It has nothing to do with like, artisanship although your hands are going to be grateful and your muscle memory is going to be grateful if you do something a lot it's going to be easier for sure but um but you know like this for example i struggled with that drawing like crazy like crazy it didn't come easy to me to finally get to that place where i felt okay this is fed is here or what i want to access of fed is finally here but who cares if it's easy or if it's tough or if it's, you know, if it takes you, if it takes you 10 days to get there, who cares? If somebody does it in one day, well, good for them. You know, if their ability enables them to get there in one day, good for them. But if for the rest of us, it takes longer, then it just takes longer. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Like, like my, the road that I have to travel because it's taking me longer, it's going to teach me so much, like so much about the making of this painting. And it's going to make me think about things that I would have never thought of if I don't struggle through the making of this painting. So there are like really cool things that we have to acknowledge happen because things are not easy. They're not readily available to us. So I think that you don't really have to. I think that like I'll tell I'll say it like this. I think that if you were stuck in a room and there was a chair in that room and all you had for a year was, you know, the ability to draw that chair. When you step out of that room and you want to draw somebody or paint somebody, you're going to be amazing at it. And you're going to be amazing at it because you've seen you know, the universe in that chair. Mm. You have trained yourself to see everything in that chair. That chair becomes sad. It becomes happy. It becomes like you inject all these sorts of m emotions on this chair. Tipping, tipping it over just gives it character. Um, but you have learned how to see that. So when somebody that's not the chair you know, is in front of you, you're not going to forget about everything that you've learned in mm -hmm. terms of how you perceive and how you sensibly have kind of shaped the way you see. Th that's going to be there. So you are now going to have, you know, that degree of perception and observation put to use painting or drawing a portrait. And that's yeah. going to be amazing. But you don't need to. You don't need to, like, take specific courses on drawing you know portraits or drawing like i said you know you know what's tough to draw a kangaroo and i always change the animal because it's pointless it doesn't matter like sure if you go to a zoo and all you do is draw kangaroos for like a whole year you're going to be good at drawing kangaroos you're going to understand them a little bit better but that doesn't mean that if i get to see a kangaroo for the first time that i've never drawn them it doesn't mean that I'm going to suck at drawing a kangaroo because uh, I'm still going to be like eager to look at shapes and look at forms and gestures. And I'm going to, you know, slowly be able to decipher what a, you know, what a kangaroo feels like. So it's the same thing with portraits, the same thing with anything you can, you can connect deeply with something, even though you've worked on other things your whole life for sure. So, um, let's see. Mm. Catherine was saying, it amazes me every time how you can paint so beautiful while having to answer questions and discussing so many different things. Thank you for everything you share with us. No. You're both very generous. Now it's bedtime, midnight over here. Bye. Oh, go to bed. <laughs> 
Bye, Catherine, and thank you. That was very, very sweet. Wouldn't it be funny if we, we were like the Milli Vanilli of uh, painters? That eventually... Ay, you... what's Milli Vanilli, Oh, Nicolás? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I mean, let's end it right here. No, again, why do you get surprised? Yeah, like, I, sh I shouldn't, but every you've time, I mean... You've been with me for six years. I know, but... And you know me, like, so damn well. I don't know so, why, why you forget. let's do this because we got to do this. You know, I'm sorry, but if life is showing us that, that there is a void of who Milli Van Millie Vanilli are, are, we have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to deal with this. Millie. So no, no, no. Don't look at them. Don't look at them first. Okay. So there was a group in the, uh, well, what is this? Like uh, early Wait, 90s, I'm going to say. one second because I okay. am saving the thumbnail. In... The Milli Vanilli thumbnail? No, no, no. The thumbnail for today, because I was doing it on Photoshop. But I want to pay attention. Oh, yeah, so, come on. If please. you Yeah, if you if we have this void in our lives. So we there have to was deal a group. It. There was a, a duo. A duo. Very popular, Millie very good looking. And vanilli? Yeah. Milli Vanilli. So they were these two um Dutch guys, if I'm not I forget. I think one, at least one of them was Dutch, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, what genre? Very good looking. Pop. Like in 90s pop. Early 90s pop. Mm -hmm. um, and they were super good looking dudes. And, you know, they were like dancing. They had dreads. Like super cool looking guys. Mm -hmm. Good voices. So perfect. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're good looking and you have a great voice, like, yeah. You're, you're like talented if you're like a, a duo and you sound great as a duo and you're like popular songs, you know, all, everywhere in the radio, everywhere around the world. I think they want, I think they want a Grammy even. <laughs> I think so. And eventually, eventually it's like a year later, two years later, two years later after they like blew up. Mm -hmm. What happened was that people realized that they weren't singing. So there was a... So they were just there for the lip. They were there lip singing. They would do concerts lip singing. Uh, and and who there was, was actually singing? Why were oh, they singing? So if you can imagine what the person that sings l would look like if they were like the opposite end of the spectrum of Milli Vanilli, that would be the person. Now I want to Google. Yeah. So it's Google Camila them first. Oh, Gorman said, I remember that. Un fiasco resultaron. Yeah, so so Google them first and look at these guys. Vanilli. Yeah. R and B duo. So they were them. Yeah. There you go. Good looking and, dudes. Uh real singers. I don't see it. No. No, that's them. Because I just see one person. Yep, that's... The real voice. There we go. Oh, the real voice of Milli Vanilli uh, died because of COVID. That's sad. And even their story is, like, sad. I think one of them committed suicide. It, it's him? pretty sad. Him? He was the other one? No, no. Maybe the producer? No. Maybe the producer. Maybe the guy that was selling this idea. No, because it says one. Because I looked for Milli Vanilli real singers, and it says uh, the real Milli Vanilli singer was John Davis. Yeah, it's that dude. Who just won? Yeah. And he sang as both of them. I don't know. Maybe I don't know that much. <laughs> oh, I that's mean that's not too... the that's not the issue. No, to but be honest. that's just so dumb it's so 90s it's I so mean, it's perfect and the the image of milli vanilli ever sing to see how they sang like how they sound Do oh you know i don't know i don't know if they were ever love, caught they were like oh. i don't know if they were ever caught with like a live mic just like uh like um but that's just so dumb well it is what it is. So 
No, but I mean... This was like huge in the early 90s. The the singer, if he had a great voice... Yeah, well... That's it. Like, why would you need to make two uh, dudes that have no good voice or no talent? Or, or I don't know if they have talent, but... Why would they have to use your talent? And I mean, you just again, be there it was 90s. In the so dark. it was all about like, you know, being superficial. Wow. I remember that. And you know what else I remember from what? from <laughs> from like 90s? What? There was like a meatloaf song. I forget what song it was. It was like one of those. Meatloaf um, song? Yeah. Yeah. Meatloaf was. Uh, I mean, he ended up being kind of weird. I think he had some uh, controversial views. Uh, before, you know, when he got old and, and he was just like a cranky, um, very conservative dude, I feel. I have to say that I had no idea. Oh, that Meatloaf, Meatloaf was amazing. Was a no, no, no. I mean, as a performer, oh my God, as a performer, it was incredible. Um, I'll, I'll put a song for you that's like incredible. It really is amazing. Um, but there was this song in the 90s that was, um, um, I don't want to start singing, so we get uh, YouTube uh, no, just, blocked. It's not like they are oh, I think they... No, I can do a good meatloaf. Um, no, 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 I'm joking. But in the video, there's this, you know... I remember this was this girl. It was like a Beauty and the Beast sort of video. Was it? I don't know. I'm, I think I'm getting things mixed up. Maybe I have my cables, like, crossed. But the thing is, she was like... Is uh, it this one? Because it says, I do anything for love. And I would do... Yeah, that one. Oh, but I know so, that song. So, yeah, that's a huge very, song. Very, very famous song. Yeah. yeah. So, in the video, there's this, you know, black, beautiful woman that was like a model that was playing the part of the woman's voice. And I guess people that weren't familiar with, um, with Meatloaf, they didn't know who the voice of, you know, who the voice was. So everyone thought, well, a lot of people thought that the girl in the video was the woman that was actually singing. And I remember there was this controversy because they were saying like, oh, my God, you know, this is like a superstar, like a star is born. Like, look at that voice. And it was like, what? No, like it's the woman that's always sang with him that has like a tremendous voice. Could you search for that? Because I, I, I want to do her justice. Like, she's amazing. Mary something something. It says Lorraine Crosby. There we go. Is it? Are you sure 100%? Because mm. I just don't know her name. It says just but she me was the female vocalist on yeah, there we go. Midlobe's 1993 hit single, I'd Do Anything for there Love. There we go, yeah. And um, no, and she also sang in the uh, Stop Right Now. I, I forget wow. what's that song. Oh, go again. No, 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 no. But what's that song? It's a, like a super, it's like a, I mean, it's a song song. It's like a, a, a very um, show, like show tune song. It's just, but it's, it's incredible at that. Um, yeah, but it was so sad. I think it was like, sadly, 80s late 80s 90s but was it because it's her no i don't think that's her no she's got dark hair no 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 that's not her no 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 that's not her wait because i went for lorraine crosby oh, was she the vocalist for that song yeah no because i think well, it's the vocalist it's... from all the from 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 their uh past song too well because it says look Lorraine Crosby, Crosby, she was the female vocalist on Midlow's. I would do anything for love. I do anything for love. Okay, who was who was she though? Oh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Yeah, that's the song that I'm thinking. But I thought it was uh, the woman that sang there. Um, uh, Ellen Foley. I thought that was the woman that was um, that was always the uh, the uh, the vocalist. Ellen Foley. Yeah, I thought it was her. But anyways, yeah. But the what I remember was that 
it was a different person. She? But yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, she has a voice. She's she's incredible. But the point was like it was a different person. But people thought that this beautiful model that they had hired for the video was the one that was singing, and they were like, "Oh my god, superstar! Like superstar!" Because mm. if you have talent and you're beautiful, it's like, "Oh, stop! Like that's that's it. Like that's period. The- that's what uh, you know. That's what popular that you know. That's when popular music can become like." Or when pop stars can become enormous, you know, enormous. It's not like that's why Taylor Swift is Taylor Swift. That's why Ariana uh, Ariana Grande is Ariana Grande. Like they're not only talented, or like Harry Styles, or. Oh, but if you've heard about Ariana Grande, it's um, I mean, she tried to start as a singer, yeah. and she was rejected because she was so short. So she, they were like. I mean, you have a great voice, but you're not going to be a pop, uh, like a pop star because you're too short to be a pop star, which is just I mean, craziness, stupid because yes. she has an amazing voice. Why do you care how she looks? It, it just it doesn't make sense. And she's uh, she's been open about that mm. a lot. Yeah. So but I think in the in in the 90s early 90s when it was very evident that everything was like very superficial like late 80s early 90s it was like very very superficial i love that i'm sorry what's that the blue yeah yeah it's gonna change everything really um i wonder why it feels like it's kind of rejecting so let's see um lane shukri said Blame it on the rain. Oh my God, Milly Vanilli. <laughs> Camila Ogorman dice, el Grammy fue revocado. Oh, y las caritas so... riendo, sí. Yeah. Gonzalo Castro dice, hubo una conferencia de prensa en la que los Milly Vanilli se defendieron y uno de ellos cantó a capela el estribillo, Babe, you know it's true. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I could have sang that. So. Eh, y Camila Ogorman dice, I'm watching them right now y muriéndome de risa. Espérame, voy a reportar esto y hide user do you in your in your brain uh danny if somebody says girl you know it's true does it sound does it strike a chord maybe with a song no girl you know it's true yeah Mm -hmm. yeah 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 that was a that's a popular song yeah i was uh, blame it on the rain blame it on the rain Mm -hmm. same rhythm but just put blame it on the rain no, that one maybe it does not. And I think those think are the about... two only two that I have in my in my in my brain. I I forget every other song. I feel. Um, uh, Camila Ogorman was saying, "I'm watching them right now and muriéndome de risa." Eh, Elaine Shukri said, "Camila, oh my God, memories, blast from the past." <laughs> and Camila said, "Elaine, the outfits, the makeup." And laughing emojis. Good looking dudes. Uh, Liat said, yeah, but the people care how you look when it comes to stars. Oh, how yes. How many ugly singers are there? But I, I, again, I just feel that by saying like ugly, not ugly, it's just. Yeah, but you know, you know. No, what no, no, I get, mean, of course like, I get what Liat is saying, but I just feel that that's stupid because again, there's not like. I know that they have like some standards where they judge beauty, but there's not like a universal idea of beauty. Yeah, but well. So it's, that's why I started saying that I know that there are some things that people say it's beautiful and what is not beautiful. I know that. But, and, and again, I mean, if you're a singer, why the looks? I mean, why would you care how someone looks like if what they're trying to sell is their voice or they're communicating through their voice yeah and if they weren't i mean they can communicate with their looks too because their looks are also a part of what makes them them so well madonna let's say you know she can't sing but attitude 
Femo, Femox, I think, mm -hmm. said, I prefer true talent over good looks in a female singer, though. Oh, 100%. I, I, I prefer true talent anywhere in anything. Yeah, I wouldn't say in, in a female, but in everything. Yeah. Like for me in, in football, I could care less what a football player looks like. I can't, I just cannot care what a football player looks like. But in like, football, it doesn't affect them as in Cristiano a song. Ronaldo. No, Crist I mean, Cristiano it can Ronaldo. make them wealthier, more famous, whatever. But what I'm trying to say is that it does not affect them because I'm trying to tell you that that happened to Ariana Grande and she had to be an actress first and then she became a singer because they were rejecting them because of the way she looked. Yeah. And that has also uh, happened to Pink. And she have spoken about that a ton. Because they were telling her, oh, no, no. I mean, I'm sorry, you have the voice, but you don't look like a pop star. Well, that was, I remember that she was coming up when Britney was still, Britney and, and Christina yeah. were like super popular. So that's, that was the, people that they were trying to push but that's as how singers. effed up it is yeah because it's like you know you have the voice but you are the problem well it's like you, know, you have the talent oh we love your talent yes but you are the problem i we love, don't like how you look i loved this that's thing just, that you did with me one time when you showed well, me the um the voice dude the um and you were like just by hearing this person Tell me what you think, like, what do you think they look like? What do you think? Um, and it was like, it's probably like one of the best voices that I've ever heard in my life. Oh, in it, my life. Yeah, Jordan Smith. But I remember that there was a lot of people that were like, I thought it was a girl with well, an amazing voice. Well, you told me, tell me how you visualize this person. And I told you, it's a black girl. I was like, oh, it's. I heard it for the first time and I'm going to be super honest here, but I remember telling Danny like, oh, that's, that's a black girl singing. Like there's no doubt in my mind. And when you told me like to do the oh, same thing white, that they did. He's a white dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, now I'm going to show you what this looks like. It was like, I, I mean, nothing matched in my brain. And then you realize Oh my God, like talent is so powerful, like so, so and powerful. I think you also realize how stupid it is that the industry has pushed just some voices that your brain automatically associate with some looks Yeah, that have nothing to do with the talent because you can have talent looking however you look. So, so the, and, weird, the weird thing about this dude is like, He does, he's very religious. And the only reason that he's not like the biggest voice on the planet, because I think that that dude can out sing. Oh, but he wind that. Oh yeah, no, he, I mean, I would have not even showed up if I was competing with him. Like that, that has to be the best singer ever to ever, ever participate in any of these contests. Like mm -hmm. that dude sings, the, it just like, and effortlessly. He's crazy. Mm. It's like out of this planet good. But because he's like religious and because he looks the way he looks, that no, is also very think... true. Yes, that is also very true. You mm -hmm. know, if it wasn't like that, if he looked like um, the Maroon 5 guy, no, that but... voice and that dude, oh my God. Mm -mm. It's like the, the world would have blown up. No, like, I agree to disagree it. here. I know, but that but it's the truth. It may... It may It may not be the way, it, like, we may not want it to be the way it is, but that's the way it is. Mm -mm. Girl, you know it's true. No. Oh. I know you were quoting that song, but no. Um, let's see. Elaine said, Camila, I just remember the thick shoulder pads. Ha, ha, ha. And now I will have to look it up. And Elaine said, Camila, by the way, I have to say that I really love the painting you did of the painter in orange with headphones. I liked it too. Yeah. Camila is a kick-ass painter. Yes. So anything she does turns out really well. So. Yeah. And Camila said, Elaine, the shoulder pads were the most horrifying thing ever. 
they should be illegal. And Camila was also saying thank you, Elaine. And uh, Thumb. Tom, th th Tom, go to sleep. Was saying. What are you doing? That blue background. Now Fair just needs a squirrel and a starling. Oh, thank you. No entendí. Well, like uh, for like a Holbein painting. or no. We saw the Holbein. Yeah, the Holbein. Now I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cosette Pineda dice, ese azul precioso como resalta ese retrato. Yeah, because the portrait was... Ah, qué pena en español. Sí, porque el retrato eh, Cosette estaba casi que muy análogo a lo que era um, el tono de la del, uh, imprimatura. Entonces es bonito también que tenga como un, un juego. Yo por eso desde el comienzo decía, vamos a introducir un color que es como ajeno a todas las otras relaciones que hemos hecho dentro de la, la pintura, pero de pronto por ser tan ajeno como tan Stil. disonante se ve también súper bonito porque mm. lo estamos como estamos diciéndole como usted va a cumplir la función de espacio entonces como que le estamos dando un rol a ese color así súper abstracto mm, Cosette Pineda dice bello, muy bien <risa> muy bien apruebo mm, let's see Darko B Who's saying um, a little bit ago, hi guys, how are you? I'm late, unfortunately. No. But you're not that late because we're still here, so. It's good. Mm. Let's see. I wonder, Oh, Danny, um, I was thinking, what? how do the people that do the reaction videos in YouTube, how do they get away with not like having the videos taken down or, or muted with by YouTube because they when they're doing reaction videos of songs like is that the reason they play like 10 seconds of a song maybe because I think you can play 15 seconds and that's it oh okay and I think they flip the video like the image of the video they're showing they flip it uh So, because I want to see your honest reaction to this song, to the meatloaf song. You want to record my honest reaction? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be underwhelming. You know, no, no, no. I so, never uh, react. So you have to do like a proper YouTube thing. You have to, you have to start, you have to say what you feel like as you're listening to the song. Because you have to I, pause it. No, but now I have to edit a video. And we have to do the book, Nicolas. No, we're not editing the video. No, so just... right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop right now. Yeah. Okay. ¿Cómo es que se llama? Paradise by the dashboard lights. Paradise by the dashboard lights. But, pero ya me la... If you're singing it. I know. No, I'm going to get a, like an idea of how it sounds. So. Oh, no, no, no. This, this song goes places, trust me. But no, no, no. Put your headphones so that people can sing it. People can hear it. Let's no. do like 10 seconds. No. Let's try it. What, what are we going to do? What, we're going to, what, waste like I'm five gonna bucks? I'm going to put it here so they can listen here. No, no, no. YouTube can listen to that. If you put it on your phone, it can pick it up. It can pick it up. Trust me. Okay, 10 no. seconds. Oh, come on. Oh, Danny's like, don't be fearful. What does that sound like? Cool. I I mean, I'm terrible reacting, Nicolas. I just feel it's cool. And I like the faces he makes. Oh, he's super theatrical. Yeah, super, like super that. theatrical. He's like really feeling. Yeah. It's sad because saying. he ended up being, like I said, you know, his, uh, his views. I have know. no idea who he became. But I love I know, I know. how he's performing. And I think, you know, we should judge artists. Like, he wasn't doing anything illegal. Like, he's not Bill Cosby. So we're okay saying. That's pretty good voice. She has, she's got a killer voice. Well, she's not the voice. As you told me. Well, what are you seeing? The video? Yeah. No, no, no. She's she's the one. Yeah, she's the, she's the one that sings. 
No, you. I don't Not in this video. It. No, this is older. This song is like super old. Where were they performing? Somewhere. I don't know. What, but was it like with actual people? Maybe. I don't know if it was a live. No, that recording is not like a live recording, but. It's pretty good. See, I wanted everyone to see. My, my idea, Danny, was that you could just turn the song on and people would hear it and then you could pause it and say what you were thinking. But I don't know how to react because it's not like I have a reaction every 15 seconds of the song. Oh, I, will, I can react fi every 15 seconds with anything. The world, how I breathe. But every 15 seconds, I could give you my reaction. Danny's always, if I, Danny's horrified that for some weird reason, they're going to take our channel down. Always. Yeah, She's always dreading. I love dreading, our channel and I love I will start people. another one. We can start another one. Our Painted Twice. If they, if they cancel this one, our Painted Twice. But she's thea theatrical too. Oh yeah, this was like. I mean, the thing is that he is just like moving. Oh, he moved like everywhere. Oh, and he was having a stroke like, every time he would yeah, sing. Yeah, she's. Oh, he was like losing on. twenty pounds when he would sing. Goodness. Is that like your I, reaction? Oh my goodness! You no, know, it's like I take my head out of the chat for one second, and the bots. They're enjoying the song. It's like maybe. the attack of the bots. No, but honestly. No, let's stop. Let's stop this because you're hearing this song the way it's like <laughs> not even meant to be heard. Like you're hearing it as if you were in a car and there's like five cars away. Somebody has like the window no. slightly down and you're hearing it through an old radio. No. And you're driving the, the, the SpongeBob car. No. No, no, no. You have to hear it like hear it. Okay. But, but what did you think? I liked it. Yeah, that's, that's meatloaf. That's like peak me meatloaf. But I have to be honest, I've never heard that that song no. name. Okay. So when you said a meat love song, you thought about the food, like a song about for meat love? yeah. And I was like, what is he talking about now? But yeah, thank you, everyone. That was my reaction. It was. Uh, Hope you enjoyed probably it. Probably the worst reaction video that I've seen. But ever. You were trying that I stop the video every second well that's how they have to do it those people to do it but they're like vocal coach well it doesn't matter you can say what you like and what you don't like about anything mm -hmm. you don't have to be an expert i think they were very dramatical with the lights very dramatical with the lights i love this <laughs> love this you could you could write for a uh, rolling stone liad said don't become a react channel dot 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 I'm going to react to that comment, uh, Liad, with... Uh, we are a React channel. Yeah, we're Liad. slowly heading there. Um, uh, Femo Femox said she might like it, I think. The song switches up very good also. Mm, yeah, I liked it. I mean, it's not... A, of course, it's not a bad song. I thought you were going to make me react to uh, Milli Vanilli. Um, no, this was actually very sad. This uh, first reaction <laughs> video was proof enough that um, we should stick to uh, painting and talking. Well, I think we should. Yes, it was very, very sad. Very sad. No, and I think that now that you are saying how you would react, yes. I think you would overreact to everything. Everything. For like sure. so now I'm pausing. Uh 15 uh seconds have uh passed. Yeah. Uh I can see him moving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's singing. He has opened his eyes and Oh yeah. Our, now our, I have to pause pause again. Oh yeah. Our, our future does uh, not lie in this uh Danny. <laughs> I don't think you were built for this. Mm, Marcelo Peralta said this blue changes the painting completely. Really cool, pun intended. Oh. I feel I'm warming up. Ha ha ha. To a self-portrait by painting my family. 
getting a hang of dealing with expectations. Yeah. But I was laughing because really cool. And then he said, I'm warming up. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, not pun intended, but no, pun. Vi vintage uh, Brazilian humor. Uh, Liet said, oh, no, I already read that. Don't become a React channel. Yeah. We're already it. Thank you for reading that one again. Mary S. said, that blue is stunning. The portrait too, of course. Um, Juan Carlos Stella dice mm -hmm. hola. Hola, hola Juan, Carlos. Juan Carlos. Darko B was saying, gosh, the sketches that you posted on your Instagrams, Instagram is inspirational. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we've always liked uh, those drawings. And um, I had kept them. And... Um, Whenever I feel I'm getting too attached to something, I feel it's a good time to say goodbye to it. So, I mean, not in life, but, but you know, in terms of, of work. <laughs> What are you trying to like, tell Danny, me? Yeah. Danny, after this horrible reaction video, <laughs> I feel I need to look elsewhere for a reaction partner. No, I so, know you're not going to do that. So, so um, thank you. Thank you for your years of um Thank you, work. next. Liet said... Nicolas, yes, did you Leah. know you started the painting? Did you know when you started the painting that your background was going to be blue? Yes. Yes, he even said it uh, at the begin beginning of the video. Yes. Which I think it's amazing because it's just like ugh, perfect. Yeah, but I don't think that there's, I mean, it's cheap to be, let's be super honest here. It's kind of cheap because there's no real incidence of this blue in anything else in the painting. None. I don't think that's cheap. Yeah, it is cheap. Because I mean, if you're you were the using color, it all the time. Because colors are, you know, some colors. I mean, I don't think colors are objectively beautiful. It's it's very, that, that would be a very dumb thing to say. Like colors are abstract. But we we are the ones who have imprinted them on, like imprinted value on them for whatever reason. And we tend to give value to bright colors, um, like saturation and light. Um combined but um i guess blue very instinctual you know blue sky like happiness you know no clouds in sight um th there's a reason why we call it like why gray is like drab and why you know a dark day feel means something terrible um so maybe that that blue you know that that background that The blue serving as a background, it's it's just very, very open. Just feels like a, you know, open, like completely open skies. Um, so maybe we do feel like that's amazing. Like it's very liberating. You're like, you could breathe in that painting. It's, um, but, but in all honesty, it's just cobalt blue. Like, like that was my point. It's cobalt blue. It's a pigment. It's but, uh, you know, I think it's not cheap to be intelligent about your colors your palette because i think sometimes with the way we paint we use certain devices to frame things or to uh enhance things we want the viewer to focus in and i think this is another way of like pointing to something you want the viewer to be at So I don't think it's cheap. I mean, if you were using it in every single painting just because... Oh, no, it's a disgrace if I do that. But I think that if you use it in this one, it's as valid as if you were trying to not have two uh, lines meet in the same spot so it doesn't look weird. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I don't know how to describe that in in English. Like when you have two lines... Tangents. Tangents, yep. exactly. Yep. So I think you're just like being intelligent of the decisions you're taking because you knew you wanted that since the beginning. So you approached the palette inside the portrait in a way that it would balanced or it would be, it would pop out thanks to the color you knew you wanted on the background. So again, I think it's not cheap if you're using it in an, intelligent way well you're being very kind mm, no but i know that you're also like no 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 like i'm being honest and if 
this wasn't your painting but someone else's painting and i just saw that that this is the painting it's not like oh i see their work and all i see is like a bright color and the portrait bright colors portrait bright colors because then that would be a recipe and that it just becomes boring but if i just saw this painting i would think it's very like a very intelligent decision so well thank you i think you're being very kind but thank you you're welcome I wasn't trying to be kind, just like really honest. Because sometimes you think I'm being kind. Well, like I'm just being overly kind. You always are. No, but I, I don't want that to be. No, no, no. Like I, to I, take away from me being honest with what I'm trying to no, say. No, no, I, I, I trust what you I trust what you're saying. Sometimes I'm just like super stubborn and kind of set in believing something that you know that i just um i don't know i don't know i don't know how to express it that uh i just you know i'm very critical of when and and you've probably heard me say this like when a painter for example relies on a color to do the job for them instead of like putting in the hard work and creating like relationships and and doing all those like cool things that painters do and i agree but that's not what you did yeah so so when for me it's hard to and that's why i was like uh, at the beginning i was saying we're gonna try to invoke some of those um high renaissance and like baroque paintings where like the for example the introduction of a blue feels out of place because you can't use blue in all of your painting you wouldn't be like willy-nilly like just willy vanilly just using uh, lapis lazuli all over your painting just because you want to, just because you're like a purist painter and you're saying like, no, I have to integrate that blue into everything else that I'm painting because it then, it, you know, it won't make sense. Like the introduction of that blue won't really make sense if I don't have it in any, in another area of my, of my painting. If it's just in the sky or if it's just that piece of, um, of cloth in this character then it feels like it's just it, it was imposed on a painting but it was like it was invited uh, to the painting but it never really had an impact on the painting so um or like a, an impact in terms of of color or of like the the incidence that a color should have on uh, on on every other color that is uh, right next to it so but a lot of that happened in you know a lot of that color like weird color theory or the way they had to manage color theory happened in, in, in high Renaissance and Baroque because they had to sort of segment their colors and segment the way they saw like how areas of paintings had to be resolved. And so it made for, for very difficult, um, I think understanding of the, of the whole in terms of, of like your chromatic decisions. It was it was very very interesting. Sometimes I'm like shocked that they could create color relationships with like nothing, nothing. I mean, these people honestly. I, the more I look at the, like High Renaissance and Baroque, the more I'm like, this is genius. Like this is the core of painting. This is genius painting because they did everything with like nothing, with nothing. They had barely enough colors to like make you know, statements to be able to make statements with those colors. And they were able to do that. It's, it's fascinating to me. So I do push myself to, to, to believe that when I want to say something with a color, it can't just be like, Hey, like the cool color came to the party. Woo. And everyone's like happy that the cool color finally came to, you know, the party when it was like super lame, but they showed up and now it's cool. Um, because that, I feel sometimes it's like letting color, like leaning so hard on color to do the job for you. Because I agree that that would be cheap. And like you said, if I caught myself doing it too much, or you would say that to me, you would be like, oh, okay, I think, you know, you would be super nice about it. You would be like, you know, I think it works really well on this one. And I don't know if it works that well on the last 20 paintings that you've been doing it. Yeah. It's like, come on, dude, you're making it super evident now for everyone. Like, 
like the trick is is very visible now so um yeah yeah that that's why i'm i'm hesitant to to see like the um the quick sort of um super like i i'm sure it has like a like a very quick impact in terms of like oh look at the blue that's great and that means that you're right like i was disciplined enough with my rest of the painting so that that blue can have that personality because again no because again the blue is framing something yes it's not like you see and you're like oh look at that blue oh there's a portrait i haven't seen the portrait no it's framing it so i think that if you did a bad job in the portrait the blue would be just like pointing out all the things you did bad but the blue is just framing a portrait that is beautiful so i think that that's why it works it's not just only because of the blue because it worked before the blue and it's gonna work with the blue because it works period it's very nice of you <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know how to take compliments you know this about me i yeah. just don't i just always feel i just hope that you like inter interiorize the things that i'm saying and, oh i'm, and I'm totally not listening. like no 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 I'm being like oh you're nice and I know that you don't, but I know that for you, it's hard to receive compliments. And I'm say saying this when I know that for me, it's also hard to receive compliments. But just know that I'm always giving them from a very honest uh, point of view. No, thank so, you. Thank you, Lindita. You're welcome, Michael Kiro. Um, so let's see. Darko B was saying, no, she's right, man. Uh, but it does not underestimate the work because it just it is just the background. You can push yourself on the object. It won't be cheap. Nano Espinosa dice, hola, chicos. Pregunta obligada. Sí, y no señor. sé si ya la respondieron. Sí, sí, señor. ¿Qué fue lo mejor que comieron en Italia? Uy, yo tengo mi respuesta muy clara. Sí, eh, Tú la sabes. Pues sí, Dana, Dani, Dana. Dana. ¿Quién es Dana? Dana. No sé quién es, es Dana. Que, que es la que va, es mi compañera que va a ser feliz de hacer reaction videos. La que estaba en Roma también, sí. comió en Roma. Dani eh, se comió una pasta como de mar. La mejor, tengo que decir, Nano, y lo que más me duele es que le dije a Nicolás, es el restaurante, es el plato más rico que me he comido en mi vida y me duele mucho que esté en Roma y no en Bogotá para poder comérmelo más seguido. Pero hasta seguí la cuenta del restaurante. ¿Sí? Sí. sí. Se llama Restaurante Le Mani in Pasta y sí. era una pasta de frutos del mar que fue la cosa más espectacular del mundo. Curiosamente es... O sea, es lo, lo que tiene la comida en Roma es que es deliciosa, es porque es como fresca, súper fresca. O sea, uno siente que le están haciendo la comida a uno como ahí, es como si hubieran salido a pescar en ese momento. Sí. O sea, y se demoran eso, además, son relajadísimos. En ese pero, sobre todo, sí, sí se demoró sí. un montón, pero la verdad Muy fueron chicharacheros. Súper amables y nos mandaban como un montón de otros, eh, de otras pastas para que fuéramos probando. Y tengo que decir, valió la pena mil por ciento la espera. Porque probé la pasta más deliciosa que me he comido en mi vida. No. Bueno, pero no, no te... No, es que me, como sí, que estás mal, estás me mal. desgarra el corazón un poquito pensar Entonces, en eso. Muchas gracias a Tato, perdón. A... No, a Nano Espinosa. Nano. Muchas gracias, Nano, por eh, llevar a Dani a ese momento de sufrimiento. Y eh, como en general, o sea, ese fue el mejor plato que me he comido en mi vida, punto. Eh, order. Dime. No, 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 que pues eso es... No, es que yo te dije, por difícil. eso fue tan difícil, porque yo no había... O sea, yo he probado comida que es como, uff, esto está delicioso, me encantó. Pero esto fue como, no, yo no he probado nunca nada así en mi vida. Ay, no. Bueno, eh, pero pues el gelato también tiene que estar ahí, en el top. Y eh, eh, pizza. Comimos pizza margarita, muy rica. Pizza venteada. Sí, hay un sitio que ha, has, eh, 
Curiosamente, pues la pizza romana es distinta, pero la, la pizza napolitana es como la, la más, la verdad. Y hay un sitio que nos llevaron donde es como la pizza napolitana más rica en Roma. Sí, y es... se llama La Antica. Uh -huh. Y es, es, eh, es pizzería, muy... Pizzería, La Antica Pizzería de Michele, perdón, porque solo dije La Antigua. Sí, no. sí, 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 porque es esta... La Antica Pizzería... De Michele. Sí, porque es esta, ese es un sitio, el otro día Ish puso una foto de... Ah, es que ellos contaron que en Los Ángeles sitio, hay. Nápoles. ¿Y ah, en Los Ángeles? No, 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 que en Los Ángeles también hay. Ah, no. Ah, entonces, entonces deben estar ellos en el de Los Ángeles. Sí, era una fila descomunal, o sea, era una fila que yo, si yo llego ahí, yo digo chao. Yo no, porque en el sea, de adoro. Nápoles ellos dijeron que es repleto Sí. y que es una pizzería... O sea, es como una puerta y a ti te dan un ticket. Mira, ¿es esta? No sí. sé si ahí alcanzas a ver. Sí, sí. Es como así. Sí, no, 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 ahí estaba, ahí estaba Ish. Ah, bueno, pero esa sí, es esa la de la Nápoles. Foto que puso Ish. Sí. Y que es, o sea, a ti te dan un ticket. Sí. Y es la gente en la calle esperando su pizza, que además cuesta, es una pizza gigante. Como cuatro euros. Que cuesta cuatro o cinco euros, sí. Y en Roma cuesta nueve euros. Sí, pero es, es, deliciosa. o sea, yo que soy como amante de la pizza, es como, o sea, no sé, es que uno no sabe, es delicioso, la masa es una cosa... Uy, sí, no, y el queso, sí, no porque es. es un queso como bueno, es que es lo que tú dices, o sea, es muy curioso porque en Roma a mí nada, como que me sentó mal en el estómago, como que yo Nunca. sintiera pesada, pesado el estómago, no. yo aquí no. me tomo un vaso de agua... Y me echo tres pedos. No, y Nicolás, Tres asco. pedos por vaso de agua. Allá pero, comíamos como unos cerdos y si yo creo que uno llegó más gelato, flaco. Pizza. Y... Digamos, yo no, tom yo no comía leche hace mucho y allá comí gelato todo el tiempo y nunca me siento mal. Nunca. Sí, lo que es mm. la comida fresca. Lo o sea, que pasa es que también es tú y yo decimos, no, es que la pizza ya sienta súper bien, pero venimos acá y pedimos dominos. Sí, pues, no, pero es Entonces, otro mundo, es otro mundo. Dominos, acá también hay unas pizzerías súper ricas, no, es lo mismo. de comida súper no, no, fresca. No, es que me, hace, me acuerda esa, entonces me siento triste, entonces prefiero algo que de verdad sea nocivo. No, <risa> Nicolás, ¿qué estás hablando? Uh, so, Pam Sorade was saying to me the blue and the skin tone set up a vibration It brings life to the peace. Thank you. Um, let's see. Let's eat? L no, Will. No huevo? <laughs> no huevo, a huevo. Eh, País Llanero dice siempre es el mismo bot, ¿no? Eh, País Llanero siempre son del mismo tema, sí. Eh, supongo que es la misma empresa No, pues bots, solo hay un Yo la verdad solo, si no es un bot de porno No es bot, yo creo Gracias por eh... Por no decir las palabras Pero eh, A veces cambian como la imagen O como el título, yo creo Porque de pronto los detectan Pero sí siempre es Pero el problema es que no es el mismo usuario Porque yo siempre bloqueo el usuario Es que crean una cuenta Pues crean bots con el mismo nombre todos. ¿Qué pasó? No, que hice un, un brochazo como pesadito acá. Se ve charro. Eh, a ver. A ver, a ver. Vamos a ver la colita. ¿Dónde estaba? Mm. Oscar C. Dice, uh -huh. hola a todos, hermoso retrato, Sensei Nicolás. No, ¿qué es eso? <risa> ¿Qué es eso? Eh, a ver. Mm. Ray was asking, scariest movie you guys watched? Omen. Uh, Easy peasy. And I would say the one of the Annabelle when the lights went off. I didn't finish the movie, but I... Because I think I had something similar to a panic attack. Danny also left in Harry Potter, so... I was 10, yeah. No, but Fancy. it's not like that traumatized me. I mean, but... No, 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 it just shows other... your, you know, your ability to 
you know what you can withstand in like um no cuz i scary there was a, no there was a time that i used to see scary movies mm -hmm. but um but that one cuz the thing is that the fact that the light went off yeah it diffused the movie and reality which i hate i mean if there's a scary movie that says like based on real a real story yeah no i can't if it's just like a horrible monster that eats people and becomes a zombie and then a ghost i don't care mm, well you cared enough in harry potter well nowadays now that i'm not 10 years old mm -hmm. i don't care but when it's something from the real life i do care it just i don't know it it like it plays with my ma mind so and yeah and that time i think i had like something similar to a panic attack it oh. was terrible like i no it was terrible i felt so so bad so are we still talking about the harry potter one or <laughs> <laughs> oscar C. Um, was saying what is the best pizza of bogota oh geez <laughs> I mean, literally, really? For us? No, well, there's like cheap pizza, but it's like, you know, pizza that's not pizza, which is like Domino's. Because that's um, our go-to. I like it. I don't care what anyone says. I like it. So let's not even have a conversation about this. Um, And I guess, um, what's the Italian place that, uh, that we get... Um, did you get your pasta and oh, sometimes... Oh, uh, I forgot. Yeah, me too. So, again, forgettable. No, it's not forgettable. No, it's, it's really good. De Luca. And they also, De Luca. Yeah, De Luca. That's pretty and good. And they also have a very good uh, pasta with... Uh, <gasps> I have to ask for it. Like, to order it. Ask for it. Pedirla. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, they have, like, a seafood pasta. Okay, but maybe it just makes the... Uh, the other one's so much better. Mm, let's see. Because I'm seeing, according to this thing, the best pizza places. It says Pizza Candelaria. I haven't tried it. No. Julia. Mm, I don't know what that is. I haven't tried it. But I mean, we're very ignorant about food, to be honest. Mm, pizza Italia by Storia d'Amore. Okay, but we, that's where we uh, ordered. We had like, the um, tiramisu, tiramisu, and it was really good. Yeah, it's an expensive place, though. Mm, let's see. Let's eat. Uh, Damichi, mm -hmm. Damichi. I think I've tried that one in my sister's house. It was good. Dakimati, also good. I don't know that place. There's a pizza. I think it's in Dakimati. My sister orders. Um, I don't see it, but it has like prosciutto. It has um, albaca, maybe. And uh, burrata, really good. Uh, Nathan Parrot. Yeah. So Nate was saying, saw Alien back in 1979, the scariest movie to date, mm -hmm. favorite of all time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, and also, oh, no. And also, uh, The Exorcism. Yeah, but you weren't Now clear. I don't know if it's of Emily Rose or the exorcism exorcist exorcist some so an exorcism any any sort of any exorcism you're not like up no, for mm -mm. no but that one i saw it because i told everyone but i i saw it when i was a kid too and i couldn't sleep i was so scared for so long would you go to like a, a real exorcism no of course no if i'm telling you that i can't even see a movie when it says it's based on a real like a real story of do you, do you think do you think they're like 
you know that whatever the church understands as oh yeah this is this is a demon like we have to do a real exorcism do you really think there's a demon in there i don't know but i'm scared of it i'm scared of everything <laughs> i'm i'm just i feel bad for the person suffering so much that's but i would never think that there's it's like, like oh a ghost inside. or when they're like oh a ghost I don't know if they exi they exist, but I'm scared. So, oh, an elf, a devil elf. I don't know if they exist, but I'm scared of that them. That was too. weirdly specific. A devil elf. I'm just like making things up. Like you know, in their town they call care. them delfs. <laughs> I don't care what it is, but I'm scared of them. <laughs> so I think that's a good description of me. Not that I'm scared of everything, mm. but just of that sort of things. Nate said, my son's name is Ridley after Ridley Scott. Ridley, Ridley. Ridley, I'm sorry. After Ridley Scott. Who's Ridley Scott? The director of the movie, oh. of Alien. Oh. So it really had like a an impact on you, Nate. Yeah. That's that's pretty significant, I would say, too, yeah. Uh, Liette said, quote-unquote, real exorcism, LOL. I, I mean, the process happens, but you know, still not real. I'm still scared of it. I would never go. I mean, no, that's just Never. Like, I wonder if the church... I'm sure... If they, do they share official numbers? No. Like... There were three exorcisms this year. Mm, no, I don't know. Are they I don't want are they know. not obliged to uh, obliged? obligated? Well, I I don't know if they're interchangeable, like obligated or obliged. Like I know people say much obliged, but are they synonyms? I I wonder. I don't know. Obliged makes someone legally or morality bound to do something. So. Okay, morality bound. We I, we could go with that. I feel that that's okay ish um so are they obligated or obliged to to share those uh to share that data no probably not they don't you i know. don't know who you're asking because i god. have no idea the a god one of the gods thumb was saying oh. thumb 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 go to bed <laughs> Thumb was saying, obliged is fine. If I would trust anyone with a word. It's thumb. It's Tom Thumb. Mm, Darko B. Darko B. Yeah. Was saying, did you try the AI mid journey? What is your thought on it? AI that create art while it depends on the human art. You can try to tell it to do an art look like yours, and it will depict your style. So I think we've touched. So I I got, um, I think. Do you have to get invited? Because I I don't know if I got an invitation. Uh, Cliff, this dude I met in uh, Toronto, I think he was the one. Cliff was cool because he he was the first person that told me. Hey, I just fed a bunch of like uh, your paint, a bunch of your paintings into this um, AI thing, and these are the paintings that it spit out. Like these are the um, this is what this machine thinks Created, like uh, yeah. Nicolas Uribe is, and it was like super interesting. It was super fun to see the uh, sort of images. Um, fuck me, I'm like, I'm reaching that point where if I do something slightly off, it has like a big um, like it makes like a big difference, so I have to like slow down and and not just paint whatever. Anyways, so it was um it was funny seeing those, and I think Cliff sent me an invitation, and I actually um applied to use because I think it's at a um invitation level, or I don't know if it's open, like completely open, um. I never saw that something. images. Yeah, I have to show them to you. They're not great. They're not really great. No, but I'm interested. But I've seen other people feed other things into it. I I think this dude that um, Rosalind sent me. So big shout out to uh, one of my rows. 
for sending me this. He fed. Um, he? I think it's a dude, yeah. Well, not, I'm not saying, talking about the AI. You were I'm saying, saying that Rosaline actual... sent you. Yeah, he sent me this dude's work. So I think it was with that AI. I'm I'm almost sure it's that AI. So he, he put um, um, Andrew Wyeth and Batman. <laughs> and it is some of the most, the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Like I even wrote to the dude saying like, Hey, can I, can you send me like either this thing so I can print it? Like I'll buy it. Not just send me like, like it's not your work, but I was like, I want to print this so freaking bad. Like this is so, so damn cool. And I think today he posted, he um, mixed uh, uh, Witkin, but the photographer. So uh, Jerome, uh, what Joel, Joel Peter Witkin with, um, with Batman 2 and it's so again it is so damn cool like I can't get over it it's it's incredible the images that are produced it's it's just it's amazing because we're just at the infancy we're at a level where it's nothing I think this is going to be nothing nothing absolutely nothing compared to what these things can do in the future um but even at this level even at this like very very kind of um basic level of of um making images and images that have like um we were talking about this the other day that have like a very recognizable character um i think the fact that people can curate the way these images also um like the way the information is fed so the way ai is going to understand like its role um, so I think that that's what's brilliant about this dude is that he said, hey, I think this is going to be cool. Like if I mix these two things, I think this is the, the result can be fascinating. And oh my God, is it fascinating? It's like, it really is some of the coolest things I've ever seen. I want it. I want that picture. Like I desperately want that image of like, a, it almost feels like a scarecrow Batman, but it is so like fucking cool i'm sorry but i'm sorry but it is so cool that i it's it's like it's as if a genius artist would have come up with that and i adore it so mm, nathan said where is thumb is it laid there and thumb said hey nathan i'm in england so it's 0029 a.m here at the moment, not too late. Okay, so it's not. Nathan said, oh man, yeah, it is late. Nicolas and Danny are sure worth it. Oh, that's oh, so nice, you guys are sweet. And uh, Julian Cabrera was saying, my journey is open beta. Okay. It's available through Discord, and now it's possible to add it to private servers with less than a thousand members. There are concerns about copyright, because there are ways to monetize and they're using artists' names yeah, and mm. art to produce the images. Well, I think it's good for inspiration and reference, but not as art per se. I don't know. What a wonderful wor like door that opens and what a wonderful world that opens when, when we're trying to decipher, like, is it really like, like, the image, the resulting image is, is you can clearly see the influences, but I don't think influence is enough to to be to say, hey, that was a copyright violation. Because also, how would it be copyright if you haven't created that piece? I mean, you can see your influence there if it's something that they use like an image of yours, but you haven't done that piece. So it's right. like, how would you, how would you fight for copyright? Yeah, because it, it's because it's like, no, no, no. I I know it looks like something you've done. Well, that's but... the thing. You would have to be the one that fed this information into into it. So you were you as the human being are would be penalized for for feeding it, you know, th information that was copywritten, so or copyrighted. Um, because 
you are telling it, hey, use these images to produce something new. But if you have a copyright But, image and you do a painting or if you do a Photoshop edit, like you edit that photo, let's say, and you distort it so much that you know that that was based on that photo, but it's not that photo anymore. Yeah. That would be an interesting uh, legal battle. Yeah. Because, again, it, it goes to the percentage of I that know. image that's present. And if you use, like, 18 images of paintings you've done... Yeah. And then create something, it's like, no, but it, he made it with something I've done. But it's like, yes, but how many of the percentage... Or if I say, I'm going to use five of yours, five of these artists, five of these artists, and then blend it all. Isn't that what art is? Yeah. Like, isn't that also. what a lot of people just do? When when you see a, an artist that you don't know, what is the first thing that you do? You associate it with, like, people that you do know. So exactly. you would say, oh, that's like, um, I don't know, I'm going to say anything. That's like uh, Nicola Samori meets Giotto. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that makes sense. That probably makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. But it doesn't matter. Interesting. But, that would be interesting. Yeah, but isn't that... Isn't that what we do already? Like what artists do or what artists are okay to do? So what if, you know, what does it matter if now that role of putting things together, of like merging things and like, you know, or, or things becoming like, or, or the melting pot is not like this abstract thing that just exists in your brain where you're just putting a ton of ingredients there and just hoping that the resulting thing is just not this horrible soup. But isn't that like, wouldn't AI just be your brain? Like in a way, you, you know, wouldn't you be able to say, you can't penalize something for, for it's just for saying, yeah, I use this, but it's not, and you can see an influence, but when has influence ever been like is penalized? It penalized? Penalized. Penalized? No, penalized. penalized. No, penalized? penalized. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I trust you. I think I'm... Well, we can ask Tom Thumb for that. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's different in England. The penalized? Yeah, it's always different. Um, Scone. Scone. It's a disgrace. Uh, penalized. Yeah, penalized. Oh, I always said penalized. Oh, whatever you say, it's perfect. Uh, Thom said penalized is fine. So penalized is fine. I would say. Well, that's <laughs> the that's how I've always said it and heard it. I'm I'm. But I love that Thom just said penalized or penalized heard, yeah. is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Which great. Means like great. Uh, Tom Thom is fine. Yeah. Whatever you say is fine. Um, But what a great argument, right? What a great, like... Well, what a hard thing. battle. What a wonderful thing. I love these things. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Like, how are we going to fight about... Like, the, the, the conversation about um, copyright is going to be so weird now. <laughs> Maybe they put, like, restrictions on AI. And maybe they, they tell you, no, no, no. Maybe they have to shift like the algorithms so that they don't use so much of it. But what if, for example, I do a mixture of things you've done? So let's use you. Yeah. So I'm going to take That's what you usually five do. paintings you've done. Yeah. And I'm going to mix them. And it throws me something. And based on that something, I do a painting. How? Yeah. How would that be a legal battle? Yeah, like, like how many steps removed do you have to be so that it's not something that that is, you know, that people could consider? I don't know. I just don't understand how this would be any different than influence, than the concept of influence. The thing is, like, we're redefining influence, I feel, in many ways. Maybe this is more... in like literal like it may be like a like a more literal approach to to being influenced by something mm -hmm. but um 
I don't know. I think it's wonderful. I love that I have no idea how to answer that. I don't think anyone, I don't think like the understanding or the laws that we have right now are ready to oh, answer no. that question. I think that's oh, why. You okay? Yeah. I think that's why it's interesting. Because it's like, Oh, we're approaching something we've never approached. Yeah. So we have to start to like move our brains to I think try to figure like out how AI judges. <laughs> I think that's the uh that's no, the that, answer. They would be like AIs are yeah. always right. Yeah, I so. I am not biased. You human. Yeah. Stupid human. Uh Julian Cabrera, who's saying it might be a concern for the future of artists. It is like translators. Uh, they're, they're gotten good and human translators have been slowly put aside. I speak from experience. It is a complex matter indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I, but I mean, it's, it's, that's the... Uh, I mean, since, since Industrial Revolution, that's like machines taking over for, for human jobs. I, I don't think that that's ever going to change. But um, in that aspect, I, I, I do think like we can sort of manage that um, like that conversation because that that one has been part of us for for over a century. But um, but I would say in terms of creativity, like where does creativity lie in? Mm -hmm. That's so exciting. Yeah. And it would be so weird to say, no, that's that is infringement. Because this machine did it based on, you know, this algorithm that, you know, didn't change, didn't change the data so dramatically, but it needs to be like more like it needs to be, it was, it wasn't sufficiently different. I don't know. All I know is that the images that I saw of the Wyeth Batman, I've never seen in my life. I've never seen an artist do anything like that. And I don't know why credit can't be given to the person that said, oh, these two things can look cool together. Because I think that there is, like, that's a choice. That's a creative choice saying these two things are cool. I'm going to put them together. I think that's where, a, you know, a genius would lie in. Like, well, it's like when people were arguing about uh, Mauricio Catalan's banana with a tape. Because they were like, it's just a banana in, in a tape. Anyone can tape a banana to a wall. And it's like, yes, but he did. And it sold for a lot of money. Well, everyone could do that. But he was the one who did that. Yeah. So it's, of course, it's going to be controversial, but. I like it. Art without controversy is dead. You know, art has to push. Always. Always. And be annoying and be, you know, be willing to ask like tough questions. That's the job of art. Mm -hmm. If art refuses to do that because it's safe, because it, it, it says, oh, this conversation would be annoying. This is, this is too complex of a conversation. No, I'd rather be dead than, than have art like succumb to, to just wanting to be um, like careful about Wanting to be undisturbing. Oh my God, come on. Art has to be that. Mm, Robert Ortiz was asking uh, some time ago, weirdest support you ever painted on? Oh, but I think like if it's my paintings, I don't know if there's anything too strange. I did take off... Uh, I did take apart like um, uh, like a little tricycle. Wait, cause uh, Tom. Tom Tom changed uh their username again. Yeah, too. Cause it was Tom Jordan at the beginning. Now it was Tom Tom Jordan. Uh huh. And now it says resident OPL grammatician Tom Tom. I mean, I like it. No, I like yeah. it. I like it. He's getting a big head. I feel, but I'm fine. Hi, I'm fine with it. I'm no, fine. I love it. I'm fine uh, with Tom. it as long as he works for free. That's totally no. I love it. I mean, he's changing his username in YouTube. I know. Like if he comments in another channel, yeah, it's gonna be 
again, we don't need divas, so Ay, I'm sorry. Nicolás, <laughs> your jokes are not good today. Um, Forever. <clears throat> I'm joking, I'm joking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, they're good. That's why I'm with you. Not only because of your jokes. It's a lot of things, but I really My like figures. your... What? My figures. Your figures? Yeah. No, you got them figure. after after me. But they're mine too now. No. So. Uh, but you were answering about the weirdest support you've ever painted on. Oh, so I remember taking like that tricycle apart and uh, and using it. And I remember loving the wheels um, painting and, you know, attaching them to paintings. But I remember I was thinking that um, my future would be like a uh, Rauschenberg, like doing combines, like Ra a la Rauschenberg. Um, that didn't happen. So, you know, what, what did I know about my future? Um, but I would say uh, in, in our classroom, people brought um, toilets. I remember somebody painting in a toilet, on a toilet. And I remember painting it, painting on this this fiberglass thing that would separate, like um, I I would guess it was like a cab or like a like a small little bus. Um, oh, you but know, that's that you acrylic. Pay. Yeah, it, but it was fiberglass. It was mm -hmm. like a piece of acrylic and then fiberglass in the bottom. It was like very very complex shape. And I remember they were like, "I want to paint on this," and I was like, "Okay, that's." really weird and it doesn't seem easy at any level but let's do this so yeah so that that's painting ended up looking horrible so yeah but awesome. but just to clarify yeah, that was your students right 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 and so your I was would... the tricycle yeah, yeah 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 um let's see i have to say i think we're hitting the... our our uh a record also so that so here's the thing and and we'll finish um we'll finish with this so I was I wasn't sure if I wanted to paint like something that I would where I would need to um uh like finish this painting tomorrow. Like to reach a point where I was like, yeah, that doesn't look like a painting. I feel like if if I wanted to look like a painting, for sure I'm gonna have to paint tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um and I was getting that feeling for the longest time, for the longest time and I was getting a little, not frustrated, but feeling like, I don't know if I want to um, sort of re-engage with this painting tomorrow. Um, it's very hard sometimes when, when you're working on a painting to say, oh, this was like, I'm right there. Oh, fuck me. I'm right there, but, uh, oh, Jesus, fuck. I had like blue. Sorry, sorry. Nicolas. Sorry, sorry. Being Nicolas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um. Yeah, I don't want blue in there. Come on. That was a Jesus fuck worth worthy moment. Anyways, I thought, okay, I don't want to do this painting tomorrow, or I don't know if I feel comfortable just having this and then thinking like okay what what do i need to do to paint this now or to like quote unquote finish this um and uh, you know after i i added the blue it it just it felt like it gelled the painting a little bit more and it showed me some some little things that i should work on um uh in the uh portrait and the features and now i'm like okay that looks like a painting like that that could go you know, that could go out into the wild and say, hey, I'm a painting and it would be OK. I'm just so happy that so you decided to leave it like. Yeah. So right now I'm I'm fine. Right now I'm happy with with where we got. And and I feel it's like, yes, that's um, it's a good painting in the sense that it's um, it was a tough exercise for me to do. It was a really tough. I, I don't know if people believe me or trust me when I say that. But um, it's one of those things that you try to paint something and you, you know it's going to be tough and it's going to be annoying. And, and you try to like grasp it at the beginning stages and you can't. And you try to grasp it in the underpainting stages and you can't. And you try to redraw it and then it's not there. And you try to and, and then you, you're hopeful about 
the um, decisions you've made in the drawing because suddenly you go like, okay, I think I got it now. I think, I think this is where this painting sort of lies in, uh, resides in. And that's where I started working um, this afternoon. And I think it's, I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but I think it's a testament of, of that exercise, of that, of going through those. Um, and I have to stop because if I don't stop, I'm going to see a thousand areas that I can paint a little bit better. And I think that that's, um, that's not the point of painting. So there's always going to be something that you can paint a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. So I don't want to. I don't want to be that person, but I'm becoming that person for some reason. So, um, Camila, Camille Ogorman. Ogorman. Oui, oui. Me encanta. Merci eh, beaucoup. Merci Camille. beaucoup. Camille. Camille. Ulala. Carla Anglada. <laughs> Carla Anglada was saying... You made it look easy. It is a striking, beautiful portrait. Uh, resident OPL grammatician Tom Thumb, Tom Thumb was saying, this is unrelated. Okay. But does liking this stream help you guys out with the algorithm? Nothing. Because No, it does, but wait. No, nothing. Because I don't normally like any videos on YouTube, but I can on my al alternate account if it helps you out. So, I mean, actually... Actually, like help uh, the algorithm. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that because yes. you were saying no, not at all. But No, because we're too small for no, us, but for help, them to... Uh, no, because, I mean, the like helps the... Like, it informs the algorithm that people are enjoying your content. Yes. So they would try to show it to more people because they realize, oh, there's a big number of people that are watching this and are enjoying this. So we might as well recommend these to people that might like this type of content. Yeah. So short answer, it does help. Um, and resident OPL grammatician Tom Thumb said, or comments, do you want us to spam comments? <laughs> so we don't want you to be a bot, uh, Thumb. You're so nice. Thank you. But... I think that what Nicolas was trying to say is that as we are a small channel, he thinks it, well, no, not he thinks, but he was trying to say that it helps, but I don't know. No, go ahead. You say what you want to say. Cause I don't, I don't, think, it, I don't think it helps. I don't think it matters, but. Well, actually it does. But, but the fact that it doesn't matter doesn't mean anything like to us, honestly. Yeah. But at the end for us, it means more that. You uh, guys are here with yeah. us, like chatting with us, uh, interacting with us. And not because of the algorithm, but because that's what we like. Like the idea of this space to be a place where we can talk while Nicolas is painting. And while maybe you two are working in something, maybe art related, maybe not art related, but that we can be here to accompany each other. So, and I yes. love that you said that you were going to close with that and you have another brush. I know, I know. This is, this is insane. Like I have to, I have to stop. No, but really, do you feel like you need to work more or are you just like going I don't there know now. By I default? think I'm crazy now. I think I'm, I'm uh, out of body experience. I think I'm just working. You're experiencing the self. Jesus. That uh, other people perceive of you, not yourself self. Yes, yes, doctor. Not your inhabiting self. Okay, you're loving that inhabiting thing. Because I think it's accurate. I think it was a good description of that. Okay, doctor. I, okay, person who is uh, a little bit jealous that he didn't came up with the idea of... Of uh, your PhD? Inhabiting self, but... Of inhabitation? I acknowledge you. Oh Jesus. <laughs> um So Nicolas. Yeah, I'm almost almost there. Okay. So should I go for another question? Yeah, to wrap things up. Yes. Mm, let's see. Mm. 
Esta fue una pregunta hace muchísimo tiempo, no la había visto. Pero no sé si de pronto Pedro Vicente sigue acá. O eh, ve de pronto el video en algún otro momento. Uh -huh. Estaba diciendo, pregunta larga, perdón. Uy, oh, Dios mío, linda, pero era Hice un, un par de retratos en óleo con sí. un solo color, sí. sin blanco. Mi blanco fue quitar pintura con un trapo y me gustaron mucho. Mm, Luego chévere. intenté hacer uno con Zorn y me quedó horrible. ¿Qué mm. hago? Escala de grises, seguir intentando Zorn, volver al viejo y querido lápiz, jeje. Gracias por existir. Volver al trapito. Ay, muchas gracias, Pedro, eh, por lo de gracias por existir. Gracias por la compañía, Pedro. Eh... Pedro, volver al trapito. Sí, en el trapito están pasando cosas muy chéveres. Entonces, no las subestime, no, 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 no estoy diciendo que lo está haciendo, pero no crea que tiene que hacer cosas mucho más complejas como para que... Eh, como que el próximo paso es como... Ay, hice una pintura chévere con trapito y entonces ya, check. Como que eh, chuleado pintura con trapito, ahora vayamos a hacer pinturas como más complejas. Eh, no, no, no. Usted se puede quedar un año en pintura con trapito. O sea, Mark Tansy, que es como de los mejores pintores contemporáneos que existen. Sí, si quiero de las decir mejores más... pintores con trapito. Con trapito que este existen. Mark Tansy solo pinta eh, poniendo una base, un tono para la pintura y después con, un, con varias herramientas levanta la pintura y ya. Así son todas las pinturas de él. Y son de las cosas más geniales que existen en este planeta. Son perfectas esas pinturas. Él es un genio absoluto. Entonces, no tenemos que graduarnos de trapito. Ok, I think I'm good. I think I, I should stop. Yeah. I think I should stop. Brushes, brushes down. Yeah, finally. Yeah, I think so. So, um... I mean, maybe they, like... That Jesus! Time, they, I, saw it. I, I freaking saw it. I'm so sorry. This and I'm, this and I swear to God. It's like, 8 p.m. Is it 8? No, oh. it's 7. Is it 7? It is 7. We've oh, been here so, like, five, five hours. hours. Oh my God. I mean, this is painting. So. I don't have a bot right now. But no, I mean, I, I've been enjoying it. And I'm joking with you. I mean, I could be here. I, we've, we've been here for 24 hours straight. Yeah. So. Mm. So, let's see. Mm. D was saying, wow, well, just as I show up, you all are about to, about done. The detail is so different, but I love it. So, I think the detail is the thumbnail. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, the way the orange pops through the background, lick worthy. Oh, oof. Lick worthy. <laughs> mm, that's what I wanted to hear. That's that's what I was ho waiting for, Danny. To close the live stream. Yeah. I, Lick I was, worthy painting. It's I was like hoping if somebody was like, one person at least has to see it as lick worthy. I mean, it's a painting of my daughter, so let's tone it down a little bit. Nicolas, it's a painting. They're talking about the painting. Tone it down. No, I mean. So. No. Okay, let's. So I'm gonna do very quickly the Jesus. Uh, the Come on. thumbnail. Uh huh. So While you do that, I'm gonna very quickly. Oh, I'm gonna do it because I know that you're gonna take a little bit longer. So just like a little plain. It's like a little too, too much. The thing is that with you, I never know, because I could just like step out. And then I come, and it's a painting of Samu. Because <laughs> you poured so much in it, so. Uh, that was a good joke, no? It's pretty good. I mean, see, if we had stopped, you wouldn't have had the one good joke. Oh, yeah. One, one good joke. Well, yeah. Um, Save. Elaine was saying, absolutely stunning, Nicolás, as always. And Danny, you're just such a fantastic host of the stream. 
Thank you, Elaine. Thank you so much. And Elaine was saying, gotta run. We'll tune in tomorrow again. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, thank Or you. XXX. So see you, uh, Elaine. So tomorrow I have a medical appointment. Yes. In the afternoon. So we have to figure it out. Nicola Chin. Yeah, we'll see if we do a, a morning one. Um, we'll see. We'll see what do we do. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And again, I always find a way to plug it. But the best way to know if we're going to be live, what would be, Nicolas, the best way to know if we're going to be live? Can you uh, help me out with that one? Um, we have a donation tab in our um, <laughs> in our storefront page which, slash web web page, which is not gonna help you know yeah. that we're live, but so it's gonna help us donate, know. <laughs> the people that donate, they get a personal message of Danny. No, Nicolas, don't them say that. Every that's time, not true. every no. time that we go live, that's you'll get a phone true. call. You know, you no, that's not call. true. But we would be like very a si grateful. A singing telegram of Danny. <laughs> no. We would be very grateful. Yeah. But no. So We're only able to do this because very few people donate. <laughs> so um, we thought that this was like a good idea. Mm -mm. And we're hoping it blows up. So Danny is ready. Danny's on the phones. No. She's ready to call. No. So uh, you can, if you want to, if you've liked our company, if you've liked also being our company, it would be amazing if you could donate. subscribe. Or donate. That helps us a lot too, of course, because that's this is what we do for a living. So, Nineteen ninety nine. You'll get that phone call. No. It, First minute. So, uh, this is our web page, <laughs> and what you could do is uh, subscribe if you want it. Um, how is it that everyone says like subscribe the bell? Yeah, that's exactly Comment. how they say it. <laughs> and uh, we'll be super happy to have you here. And uh, we would be happy if you were part of our conversations. If you're an active part because you want to comment. And if you don't, if you just want to listen to what we're talking about, it also makes us oh, Danny, very happy I, I, to have I you. I know you're sounding like it's a closing statement. But I'm not there yet. I'm not there. Ay, Nicolás. I know, I know. It, it was sounding like, okay, guys, like, thank you. And it was I like was... a goodbye speech, like yeah. good night. Well, it was. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm not hitting it. I'm just, I'm not there. Marcus Barrat was yeah. saying Liverpool at the weekend. Happy yes. days. Go Reds. Yeah, with pizza. Or a burger. No, we had burger. Today. Homemade. Go burger, Reds. Pizza. Berica would say was saying it's three in the morning here now. I was checking the process every now and then. Really interesting to see all the stages. This one went through. Have to watch the whole replay tomorrow. Oh thank you. Thank you for being here, Berica. Um so resident OPL grammatician Tom Thumb. Who is saying, that? Who is this? Marcus Barat. Score prediction for the mighty red men. Ooh, what is what is okay. Is Tom Thumb a Reds fan? That's all I need to know. To know if you're gonna block Tom Thumb from the live stream? If he's not. Kevin AK said, Wow, just tuned in. Wow, Fer is jumping out of the paper. So good. Uh, so thank you, uh, Kevin, for tuning in. Rebecca Caridad was saying, almost as long as your podcast with the Irish gentleman, which I listened to during the entire day, day while I was planner painting here in Colorado. That's amazing. Rebecca, so you've heard six hours of Nicolás talking with John Dalton and five hours Jesus Christ. Almost 10 minutes of Nicolás talking with me. So 11 hours of Nicolás. Yeah, they, I don't think anything good can come out of that, really. <laughs> That's so nice, Rebecca. Resident OPL grammatician Tom Thumb was saying, God, yes, I found out you were 
You were a few weeks ago and died. What? Don't worry. I will shorten the username tomorrow so you don't have to read so much. No, I enjoy reading it. Um, Tom Thumb, I'm I'm a scouser. Tom Thumb. I Tom. am. I'm an adopted scouser. Uh, the city uh, determined it. So I am. Uh, I'm very happy to know that you have good taste. Nicolas, I see that you are looking and moving the reference. I'm looking everywhere. <laughs> Jeez, I should. Yeah, it should stop. No, I, if you want to, I mean, we. No, could... I did nothing to that mouth. That's that's when you have to stop. Like when you said, like I said, I have to paint. Jesus fuck! Like I have to do this. I have to. It's that little plane on the shadow. I had it, and because I started fudging around so much with it, um, it's like gone now. So now I have to try and desperately get it back. Like, good job, Nicolasito. Does that jump out too much? No. Yeah, just say no. Yeah, just for my sake, just say no. <laughs> I'm just reading. I'm just laughing. I'm sorry. Uh, because I was... I don't realize how... Like the faces I do. Yeah. When I look at the screen. But I was just like looking at your painting. Yeah. And I just glanced to my camera. Funny. Yeah. Funny. W what looking. type of face? How would you describe it? Uh confused, concentrated stare. I I can't do this. <laughs> I really can't. This is ridiculous. Rebecca Caridad said LOL, OPL badge of honor. Oh, okay, yeah, no. you got it. I'm you done, got I'm it. done. No, I'm done. Rebecca, Look. wait, wait, what? let me talk. Rebecca got it because Rebecca has been listening to your voice for 11 hours today. So, yeah. Camila Ogorman said, it's perfect. <sighs> Fuck me. No, it's, I, yeah, there's so many things. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I think now you're just like fixating. I think it's good. And as you've said to other people, that yeah. have asked for uh, advice. Yeah. I think that you should take a, like a, like breathe in, breathe out. Yeah. Take a little walk and yeah. go back. Yeah. Or we could stop. Like I'll do this less painful for people. We should stop and then I'll keep working because I think that that's, that's a good thing. So that I can be like more comfortable working. <laughs> Nicolas, you're I know, I know, I know, today. but I can't, I can't, I just can't. I, there's so many things that I see there that can be done so much simpler that I started like, just doing like stupid little brush strokes that I'm like, oh, duh, come on. So uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, <laughs> that we'll voice, you, you are can, in distress. If, yeah. if, if we can, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see if it works out. But uh, if not, we love you guys. And we'll see you on Thursday. And we're so Friday. happy to have you here always. Yeah. So. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.